feeling Tuning in. Check this vibe. If I jump in the band, I feel it all right. If I'm waving up my head, I feel it all right. When the pressure bubbling over, I gotta tell you guys. This song, I needed this song today. Everything gonna be all right. That's that's our motto. The sun shines after night. And let me tell you, I'm going to tell you the backstory. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the, the lowdown on everything that's going on. It has been chaos this morning. Chaos, I tell you. But uh, we, we made it. We're here. I've worn my, my cheesiest piano tie and gold jacket for everybody here. And, uh, and we're going to be hanging out. We're going to be doing a live stream. Let me tell you something. I don't know what's going to happen on this live stream. This live stream, the, the playbook has been thrown out the window. I'm going to catch everyone up on that. But until then, I'm going to listen to this song and I'm going to take the advice. At the end of the day, I know everything's going to be all right, all right, all right, yeah. If I jump in, then you Everything, everything going to be all right. Guys, this song is not just a uh, a nice little ditty here that I'm starting the stream with. This is one of the songs that you guys sent in. You guys, let me tell you, we're going to talk about... Let me, we're going to talk about the number of songs that you guys have sent in because it's a lot. It's more than I'm ever going to be able to get to on this stream. Or maybe if I if I only played your songs in every stream I ever did going forward, I don't think I would get through every song that people sent in. Um, let me just check in with the chat here and see uh, if everybody's doing doing fine. Um, let's see here. Uh, so, well, folks like the jacket, no doubt. I mean, who doesn't like that jacket? I'm going to bump our comments up a little bit i'll put it over there um francis says let's go i agree uh very uplifting i mean the song right it's good i should be careful i should i don't i don't know if i should ever do the numa numa dance i don't know if that's ever a good look uh bomb toy says give me your jacket you know what uh you're welcome to it because let me tell you this jacket not exactly a comfortable jacket uh, it is it is sequence in fact let me see if i can can i demonstrate over here watch this i can do this look at that it's convertible it goes it goes black or i guess i could draw shapes in it it's a weird it's a weird jacket uh and not one that uh i may ever wear again in my life but folks listen um oh wait i'm just keeping in my comics chris ray where's the yellow mug chris did you think i wouldn't bring yellow mug to an end of stream party, end of year stream party with you guys. Come on. Song is dope. I agree. Let's let's give attribution on that here because that song, like I said, that song was sent in by you guys. I put out to anyone watching that doesn't know, I sent out a uh, request for you guys to send us songs and we'd listen to them on the stream because I'm, I've planned, I'm going to get to the full story in a second. I planned uh, multiple guests to come on and, and I thought, oh, well, whoever's on the stream at any given time, we'll listen to a song and we'll just kind of, you know, give some feedback, reaction, encouragement, whatever. And so I put out the call. I said, here's a link to Dropbox where you can drop your songs and um, send them in and let's see what happens. Guys, you sent in over 500 songs, like 500 songs. And I will tell you, because I put out the request. I listened to all 500 of those songs. Okay, maybe not front to back, but I listened to all 500 of those songs. And from those 500 songs, I, I created a, a little, a, like a shorter list of stuff that I thought I'd play. Stuff that was like, you know, seemed to have a nice range of diversity of musical styles or um, had some cool production going on or maybe stuff that add some stuff that I thought the, the community would like to hear and comment on or whatever. I kind of put together a short list. Partially, I had to, to curate the list because 
There's a couple of you guys yeah, you gotta, uh, I might have to have a talking to with. If you send me a song and it's got James Brown samples in it, you're just going to like crater the whole stream with a copyright strike. If you send me a song and it's an Alanis Morissette remix that I'm guessing Alanis didn't reach out to you to do, I, I can't play it on the stream. So I, I heard that stuff. Both of those were songs people sent in. I heard them. The great tunes. Congratulations. I won't be able to play them on the stream. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, I just want to kind of keep my eyes here on the track. Oh, White Wolf Music. I uploaded a track a few minutes ago, not realizing the date. What do you think, guys? Should we just should we just go listen to White Wolf's right now? He's gonna get moved to the front of the line because he because I brought his comment up on stream. So let's go let's go see what he what he put in there. Hang on a second. I'm gonna go to the. Uh, does does he name it? Let's see. Are there more? Oh my god, guys! There's another hundred and eleven songs. Since I last was in this folder, that means you uploaded over 600 songs. Oh my God. That was just from this morning that you've added these. Oh my gosh. Uh, White Wolf, I don't, let me know your, um, I'll keep an eye out for it on the stream uh, in the comments, but I, let me know what the name of your song is and I'll, I'll just play it now for people. And um, everybody else, okay, th this is, if you think that I am moving from topic to topic in a haphazard way, you're not wrong. <laughs> let me catch you up a little bit. Let me take a breath. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to the song again and remind myself that everything's going to be all right. Hang on. Okay, I've recentered myself. I've grounded. Everything's going to be all right. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, let me catch you guys up here on a, a little bit of the backstory here. Uh, we had guest book. We only announced one of our guests. We, you know why we didn't announce all our guests? Because sometimes things change and we just thought, you know, rather than have to keep updating uh, if, if people had to cancel on us for one reason or another, um, we thought, well, we'll just, we'll announce our one guest. Um, well, did I learn a lesson there? <laughs> we had Ian. We announced that Ian Kirkpatrick was going to be joining us. And then yesterday, Ian, very much to his regret, got uh, a, a full on like maximum strength flu. And um, he sent me a picture of him in bed. And he, I got to tell you guys, I would, I would share the picture on the stream, except that, you know, he looks a mess. He, he really looks like he's got a real bad cold. So, um, so he, he sent me that and he, um, he said he, he probably wasn't going to be able to make it. He was going to really try to, to rally. But uh, if the cold is as bad as it was, or if it got worse, uh, that he wouldn't be able to make the stream. And so, we are without an Ian Kirkpatrick. And uh, I know, uh, I know, I feel, I feel the collective, no, in the, in the crowd. I, I'm there too. But listen, here's the number one thing. Here's a couple of things about that. Number one, we wish Ian a speedy recovery and we are glad that he's resting up and taking care of himself. And so him missing the stream today is not the end of the world because number two, we will, Ian and I will schedule the stream together. So you're not missing an Ian stream. We're just going to take Ian's appearance on this stream and move it to its own stream. And we'll schedule that and we'll do it. So, so we'll, you know, in, in fact, in, in a lot of ways, you're going to have uh, more Ian time than you would have had on the stream anyway. So we're not, we're not losing out there, but now listen, that's only the start of the story. That's, that, that's where when that happened yesterday, I thought like, oh my gosh. But then they started dropping like flies, people. We, we got one of our other guests writes in, COVID. Another, uh, we, were, we were thinking of, we were going to try and get Matthias uh, to get on the stream. And then Matthias, he, he might have had a, a scheduling conflict. But regardless, even if he didn't, Matthias got COVID. So now Matthias is in the comments watching with it, nursing his COVID. And... Uh, so, okay, no problem. We don't have Ian. We don't have this other guest. Uh, Matias can't make it, but we have got Gentlemen's Club. They are, they're my, I moved them up to the pole position. I thought, okay, we'll put Gentlemen's Club where uh, Ian was going to go in the leadoff spot in the stream. Oh, here, wait, I got to just throw some of these up for Ian. Get well soon, Ian. Sad to miss you, but I agree. We all agree. Key, key message, get well soon. David Stevens, get well soon, Ian. Absolutely. Take care, Ian. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad everybody is on the same page here that uh, our number one uh, thought is for Ian's uh, recovery and well-being. So hopefully he just needs to sleep it off and, um, and, and get back on his feet. But um, anyway, so Gentleman's Club. So they're going to 
they're going to be in the top spot. They would be happening right now. Now, listen, now Gentleman's Club will be on the stream, but check this out. So I wake up this morning to a message. I guess people, anyone watching from the UK knows this. The UK is in the middle of a rail strike. So I wake up this morning to an um, email from Gentleman's Club that they are, uh, their train that was going to get them to the studio where they're going to be streaming with me was canceled. And so now they're getting in a taxi and it's a long distance. So they're on this long distance taxi ride. And are they going to make it in time? They might squeak it in just in time to get on the stream at, at, you know, when we go live and then the emails come in. Oh, traffic's backed up. Oh, there's a fire on the motorway. Okay. Okay. Now we're moving again, you know, so they're coming in, but they're going to be coming in, um, a little, well, a little bit later. They are, uh, their Uber is officially scheduled to arrive at the, uh, studio in five minutes and, but they're going to have to kind of get in and settle in and stuff. So what does that mean? Where does that put us? Well, it, it means that we're going to be flying by the seat of our pants here, but I want to orient us to a couple of the people we've already got kind of waiting in the wings. And I thought maybe we would even go through some of these other, uh, reason song files and listen to some of the music you guys submitted. So let me, I'm going to bring on, uh, well, actually, you know what? Let me do this. This is, we're, we're improving this whole agenda now, guys, because it's all, the, the playbook has just been rewritten. Uh, all sound says, UK rail strike indeed, plus roads are iced over, snow and so on. Yeah, uh, I, I had heard about that too. There was a little bit of snow on their journey as well. Um, Andre McCarroll, this is anything can happen day, Ryan. I agree, Andre. And let me tell you, I still, I still have it on my agenda to open up a public Zoom for you guys to jump on here too. God knows what happens when I do that. So, uh, Andrew, Ryan's jacket is lit. Thank you. Um, I, I, I will happily, I should just like, not, not auction it off, raffle it off or something to, uh, anybody that wants it after the show. It's, it's not a comfortable jacket to wear, but it, it does look good on a stream. So these are the things I do for you guys. Um, hollow sounds, David Henerato. Hey brother, how you doing? Hollow sounds. We're going to have, uh, David joining us on the stream uh, today. So that's actually part of my agenda. He's one of our guests. So, um, okay, now let me orient you here. So I'm your host. You guys know that much, but we've got a couple other things going on. We actually have some of the folks from Reason Studios having their own little soiree here at uh, the uh, the home of, of one of our team members. And so I'm going to jump over to these guys uh, and we're just going to say, a quick hello to those guys. Let's see. Uh, let me bring them in. Hang a second. I'm going to assign them. Oh, wait. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put them here. Okay. Are you ready, guys? I'm going to turn on their mic, and I'm going to bring them on, and we're just going to say hello to the Reason crew. Oh, are we? Wait a second. Let's try this. Do we have audio? No, we don't. Oh, there we do. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> guys, how are you doing? <laughs> Welcome Good. to welcome Good. to the the reason end of year party, man. Thank I gotta you. say, you all have brought it with your you have brought it with your uh, your adornments. I thought I was the only one getting uh, getting weird, but we've got uh, moose a fitting Michael mm -hmm. for the moose. Oh yeah. What else do we have? Ta streamers. Michael. Well, we have we have uh, Rudolph, but she she left. Uh, Rudolph is okay. in the back there. Cool. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, I wonder, did, does anybody, I guess, well, I'll give people a, a quick intro to anyone, or maybe, Rebecca, we could uh, do it together, since you've got the, the designated headphones on. So, yeah. we've got uh, Wendy there in the Stussy shirt. Uh, yes, Wendy's part of our Wendy. creative team. We're giving a little introduction to everyone. <laughs> uh, in the Moose Antlers, we've got Michael. Michael's also a part of our uh, creative team. Michael, you might, you might know away. Michael from social media if you've tweeted at us. Hello. Michael's the guy that's tweeting us back. Uh, Alec back there with Hello. the... Santa Reason hat on. <laughs> Alec. Hello. There's nice Alec. Nice to meet you. Alex, one of uh, uh does produces content with us and stuff as well. And uh, <laughs> we also have uh, Henry. Henrik. Henrik's in our R and D team. Hey, Henrik. Henrik is uh, yeah one of our one of our engineers here. So anyway, uh, these guys are going to be hanging out with us. Uh, to everyone in the. Uh, audience watching these guys are gonna be hanging out they're kind of my remote party it's like the uh the Times square rocking new year's eve you know i'm just gonna to throw to these guys now and again and rebecca who is wearing the headphones here with us rebecca and i are going to be chatting uh a little bit later as well so rebecca i look forward to uh hanging with you in a bit and uh same 
cool. I'm going to jump over now to uh, another reason guest is waiting in the wings here. Um, and that guest, let's see. Let me jump over. You know who is here? Who um, he, You guys are going to be watching us say hello to each other for the first time because he's one of our ambassadors. But he and I haven't actually uh, spoken before. It's, uh, it's a, n a new thing for us to be talking. I'm going to jump over here and put... That is Oscar from Underdog. Hang on a second. Maybe it's, I'll jump, I'll bring him on. Oscar, hang on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. How you doing, man? Good. I'm good. Uh, good to see you, Ryan. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. I can see you. Okay. We awesome. are. Uh, we Excellent. now. I know. Excellent. I know the comment section. The comment section is going to mention that there's a delay between your mouth and the sound. I don't care about that, but uh, I'm just going to mention it before the <laughs> comment section because they're going to light up with like, there's a delay, there's a delay. But, uh, you know. That's fine. It's not like there's a lot of sense coming out of my mouth anyway. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People just have to get used to it. So like I said, we are uh, we're, good saying, to see you, man. we're saying hello for the first time, which is, which is crazy because you've been um, an ambassador with Reason Studios now for uh, the whole year, really, right? Yes, one yeah. year. It's almost the anniversary, I guess. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's been Quite a wild year as well, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Oscar from the Underdog Electronic Music School YouTube channel. Um, in the um, in the past year, that channel has has been quite active. I've been putting a lot of energy into it. Um, all together with uh, with Reason, uh, been the ambassador for the last year. Went to visit um, the Sweden uh, the Reason headquarters in Stockholm as well in February and March. Uh, met the whole team there, which was super 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 nice. Um, and yeah, yeah, uh, just been having a lot of fun all year with um, with Reason, and um, happy to meet you now finally as well because I do feel like it's long overdue. Yeah, it, I know, right? It really is long overdue. I, I've I've really been enjoying the stuff you've been doing. I mean, I, I was a fan of your channel before you were um, covering some some Reason topics as well, but um, right. I, I've really been enjoying the stuff you've been doing with Reason. How was it for you? Can I ask as someone uh, when you visited the Stockholm office? What was that a uh, you have a fun visit, yeah. Yeah, everyone is saying that I should come back in the summertime because uh, Stockholm has a really nice <laughs> few days in the summer. There's uh, one of my <laughs> one of my favorite Swedish expressions is "summer is the best day of the year." Exactly, exactly. <laughs> which uh, <laughs> that really is that really is how it is over there. But you uh, you absolutely should come back in the summer uh, for sure. Yeah. You're getting some love in the uh, comments here. I'm just going to throw some up on screen. Underdog and uh, excellent, Os excellent. Uh, Hawken Erickson that. says Oscar rules. Um, yeah, we're all we're all big. Oh, here Hollow sounds. Oscar <laughs> makes some banging techno beats. Want banging kicks? Listen to him. LOL. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is definitely true. Well, so um, just to uh, to orient ourselves, like I guess a little bit, um, were you, you obviously are like all of us who produce music. You're sort of, uh, you wear all the hats, you know, you, you, mm. you, you're both musician and engineer and a producer and, and all these things. Um, uh, what was your exposure to reason prior to, I guess, connecting with us? We're, because you're, you're a, a DAW I, user, so you I can imagine that yeah. it was outside your orbit for a little while. Well, for a little while. I mean, I started with Reason back when I was like 16 years old. Uh, at uh, 2.5, 2. Uh, my, my father gave me a secondhand copy of it in a box back when software was in boxes, you know? The, right. And, and uh, he just gave that to me and he said, go on, make some, make some noise with that. And I was listening to Aphex Twin at the time, so I did make some noise with that. Not, yeah, absolutely. Nothing that, <laughs> nothing that made any sense, but it was, it was noisy and it was fun. And Reason was perfect for it because you just you, you hook up cables until something makes weird sound and you're like, okay, now I've got some weird sound. And then right. after a while, I got, it, I got it into my head that if I wanted more consistent results, sort of the... The, the general ad advice at the time was to move to Ableton Live. That was, I don't know, maybe 15, 10, 15 years ago or something like that. Gotcha. So I did get into Ableton Live and I kind of, I saw that as like um, um, sort of my new way that I was, that I was doing. And so after, um, after so many years, then it was a real pleasure once I had started the YouTube channel to hear from Reason Studios again, because they reached out and they said, hey, we really like your, what you're doing. Would you like to uh, check out what we've been doing in the last 15 years? And I was like, heh, heck yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that sounds great. So I immediately uh, jumped in and did some like 
acid techno in reason or something that was the first video that i did where i i just opened it up with like no prior knowledge filming my reaction and immediately tried to do the exact same things that i did 15 years ago you know right and, uh, one of the first things that I had to inspect was when I looked on the back of the redrum machine, there's still like a virtual fan going there. Like yeah. there's a little, like a little <laughs> illustrated fan in the interface, which now as a 35 year old adult, I find hilariously ridiculous in a good way, in the best right, possible right, way. <laughs> right. Well, so there's a, um, that, that fan, let me tell you something, Oscar, that fan is a little bit controversial because, oh, yeah. um, yeah, because in prior to reason 12, that fan didn't spin. It was just, there was a fan, but it wasn't actually animated to spin. Ah, no way. And then when they did the high res conversion, while they were doing that, someone on the team thought, oh, it'd be funny to actually, let's like actually animate it. So they did. Now I'm going to guess that the animation of the fan took all of maybe a half an hour to implement. But yeah, yeah. when people saw that spinning fan, there was a certain contingent of people that whatever feature request they want in reason that isn't in reason yet, they I held up that. that fan. They were like, you put a fan in, but you didn't give us, you know, whatever, you know, insert, insert yeah, they feature bumped request. Yeah, the fan to the, to the top of yeah, the feature. Yeah, list, exactly. Course, as, clearly, clearly. As if, as if folks in Stockholm were like, should we do, uh, should we support the VST3 VST plugins? VST3, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's do the fan, you know. So, um, so. As yeah. A, as a, like, and I think I, I think I wanna I wanna resonate for a moment with that part of the of the fan base because I recognized that like when I started with Reason Now uh, again a year and a half ago or so, um, I did get frustrated by certain things in the interface and I did and I came and I and I got a little bit excited about it and I went to to Stockholm and I was like I need to tell some people about right. why this is annoying and this is annoying <laughs> right. you know. And uh, and they said, okay, well, we'll schedule a meeting with Matthias, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a little bit of a privileged position, you know. But then I, I sit down with Matthias and, and I'm like, this is a problem. And he's like, yeah, well, that has to be like that because of this and this and this and this and this. And I was like... You know yeah, what? That makes sense. Let me that tell you, sense. you. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I I have such solidarity with you because I'm, you know, I, everybody else is in Stockholm. I'm the I'm the like the lone like you know mm. outer orbit guy that's like in deep space here over in the U.S. And because of that, I sort of retain, I guess, a certain independent mentality when it comes to you know things and mm. reason. So I have my own ideas of how it should work or features we should yeah, have yeah. or ways that certain features are implemented. And when you, when you have that feeling, you are 100% convinced that your rationale is the most logical and it's, of course, of course, of course this is how it should be. And I yeah. have, I have to say, I am so impressed with Matthias and, and people like Ludwig as well. Um, and all those guys over there, when you talk to them about the feature and you hear about their rationale for why it's implemented in the way that it is, I, I'll tell you nine times out of 10, I go, huh? Oh, yeah, I guess that does make sense. Uh, <laughs> all right, I can't, I can't argue with your logic. You're, it's more logical than me. So, you know. I mean, one thing that I that I just learned, I guess, visiting them is just that what I saw was uh, a really wholesome team of people genuinely caring about a, a really interesting product and trying to make it better. Right. Obviously, also dealing with a software that dates back oh, somewhat twenty years or something sure. of technical debt and decisions and evolutions and changes. And so they're really navigating it as best they can. And I think they're doing a great job. Um, yeah. But I understand that some people are kind of left um, with that frustration. But honestly, I, I can only assure you that the, they're, they're, they're doing their absolute best but from I, what I can tell anyway. <laughs> I have to say, you know, what I, what I really like about um, your content, and again, maybe, maybe I'm alone in this uh, within the company. I don't think I am because we, we obviously uh, we continue our relationship with you. I think you're really, your content is really even-handed because you are an external. Uh, you know, you're not, you're sort of not part of the, the, the hive mind inside the Stockholm office where you're like in on every thought process that goes along. Uh, your content, you'll, you'll mention something if it, if you think it should be a different way, or if you think, a, you know, something frustrates you. Like, I actually really like that you, even within your sort of ambassador role, if you want to think about it in that official way, that you haven't lost your own voice and your, your sort of independent thought, which is yeah. great. Great. I've got know. this. I've got an enormous video coming up that's like one of the biggest videos I've ever done, which is basically a really big feature request for a UI redesign. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, let me let me tell it like this. So when you open up Reason as a VST, right? Which I like to use it like a VST in, in Ableton. Right. Um, 
uh, what you get is like nine nine random devices, the images of them, and then yep. you either have to go into the browser where you have to find everything vertically, or into a text menu to know what the name is of the thing that you're looking for, and. That would be fine if you knew exactly what was inside of Reason. Right. But after one year of ambassadorship, I don't even know everything that's inside of Reason. There's so much. Yeah. Like I had to spend I had to spend an enormous amount of time like going through every single device, familiarizing myself with it to the point where I actually know what it is. Yeah. And then I realized that the browser in 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 Reason does not make it does not encourage me to discover that stuff, you know. Correct, correct. So basically, I, you know, it's a little column A, a little column B. Like I, I love. It's an amazing thing to have so many features and be so rich. Right. And then, and then, my objective external critique is that they should showcase it better. <laughs> so I, I, and I think everyone <laughs> agrees with you over there as well. Um, yeah. And so I'll be, it'll be really interesting to see your take on that in your video. I look forward to that. Um, yeah, cool. And and it is, you know. Um, Again, I guess we'll we'll use the privilege of our sort of outer orbit independence here to uh, to mention on the stream and that I think that's those discussions happen all the time as well internally, but also I give that feedback as well that um, I'll I'll just I'll share the most recent one I talked to Matthias about. Um, I was looking for um, I wanted to find a delay that I wanted to use, and so I I typed delay in the search bar, and the echo didn't show up. It's our, our main, <laughs> our flagship delay. And yeah. it didn't show up because the search currently in the browser is um, using basically, it, it's like if it said, if the name was the echo delay unit, it would have shown up because it's not, it doesn't show up. And so I just wrote to Matthias, I was like, it just feels like weird, right? And he's like, no, no, I know, I know. It's it's absolutely on our list. So so those discussions I know are going on internally and they're coming from me, they're coming from you. I almost, I, I sometimes... Well, I would say I feel bad for those guys because they just get the feature requests from every sure. human being on Earth. Um, and I would say I feel bad for them, except for two reasons that make me not feel bad. One, I know that they love getting that feedback. So um, it's not it's not something that uh, is a burden to them. It's like they want to, to understand from the users, you know, the best way to help everyone make music. I mean, that's the goal, right? So, so they love the feedback. The other reason I don't feel bad for them is because... The only other person that gets every feedback uh, and feature request known to man is me. And it's because I make videos. <laughs> and so because I make videos on the channel, people sort of think, oh, he's the guy to go to. And let me tell you, I've gotten, and I don't even know how they get this, I've gotten phone calls at weird times of the night. And it'll be, you know, like some <laughs> producer in Wisconsin. And he wants to tell me how much he really wants us to add oversampling to Thor synthesizer, stuff like that, where it's like, Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go back to bed now. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like I said, I think getting that feedback is always a good thing. I'm gonna check in on the uh, comments here. Oh, well, of course. Now that we're talking about feedback. The the comments have uh, become a, a feedback a feature request place. Um, uh, but yes, oh, here's here's a question from um, Namajira. I hope I'm I haven't butchered that too much. Can you explain, Oscar, why reason isn't your priority dog i'm gonna assume that means priority dog not prior yeah i mean like i think i mean the reason i switched in the first place which was a decision i made maybe 15 years ago um i'm 35 now i started when i was like i don't know 16 or something so that's i mean that's a, i can't even do the math never tried to do math on stream mm -mm. um absolutely <laughs> Uh, but uh, basically, the decision I made back then was because my perception was that the 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 quirkiness of reason, like there was so much more content available on online on on like serious mixing education and stuff mm -hmm. like that, using mm -hmm. something like Ableton and Pro Tools and stuff like that. Right. And my experience with reason didn't map to that uh, back then because also maybe there were some features missing. I don't quite remember. I got. I you. think a lot of those things have been addressed now, and I think that if you come in and you don't have any other DAW and you and your reason is the first point of contact with music making. Yeah. I think it's I think you can legitimately do in, incredible things. I like I, I I made I have one song that's coming out uh relatively soon that was made fully, fully, fully in, in reason as a full as a full DAW from start to finish, including the the self mastering and the and referencing and things like this. So it has everything that you need to actually to to do what you need. I think one good question to ask yourself is what's your learning journey going to be and where like how much 
support do you need? Like, for example, if you, like, if you, there are quite a few content creators like myself using Ableton as maybe the primary DAW. And if you want to be able to follow along with us, I can see the temptation why you might want to switch to Ableton because a lot of our tricks will be like, you know, yeah, it's a hybrid. Applicable you, yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, right. And then we use Reason as the for its VST capacities, and it has so much to offer in that context as well. It's not a, it's not an either or story. I think it's both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have, um, I've really been pleasantly surprised when we, um, when we opened up to the Reason Rack plugin version and the idea that you could run Reason as a DAW or as a plugin in your own DAW. I really did wonder what would happen. You know, our what happens to the Reason community when the Reason community includes people that are actually Ableton Live users and part of their bag of tricks are Ableton Live tricks or Logic tricks. Mm -hmm. What happens to this sort of Reason community as we've known it? And what I've seen is that the answer is it just kind of gets better and bigger and more diverse. And and so we a lot of the, the the commonality of things you can do within the Reason Rack translates between everybody in the Reason community. And then there's this kind of just diversity of thought of people kind of trading things. And there's certain things you that someone in live might do a certain workflow that you can also do in Reason, but you might not have thought of it because it's 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 not the maybe the most common way of doing that workflow. And so I've yeah. seen that stuff too, where people are starting to kind of like, you'll see people doing a live tip and trick in the reason method in the reason DAW. And I, I just love that cross pollination. Yeah, of, yeah. You know. I think, I think when I try to teach, I try to also teach concepts, not DAWs. So that right. if I explain to you why you might want to make a plucky sound into a delay, into a compressor. Absolutely. In any DAW, all the DAWs can do the basics, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, yeah. I've got, uh, I'm seeing another guest jump in here. So I'm just going to um, mention to that guest, if they can hear me uh, to just uh, hang tight there in the green room. I've let, uh, I've let her in. I think she's just, I don't see the camera, but we'll get to her. I've got, I, just so everyone knows, and Oscar, you as well, uh, you know, I, I've got people sitting over in this waiting room. I've got comments flying at me. I'm keeping my eye out to see. Um, actually, let's check in and see how it's going. You're, with, doing, uh, you're doing such a good job. Ryan. I know how hard <laughs> it is when there's so much input and, you're, and you just have to keep it all it's together wild. by talking. Uh, and if you don't talk, then there's just silence. It's I know, terrible. Right? It's, it's a terrible a... burden to bear. But you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Oscar. Hey, listen, so I want to be jumping into uh, these user songs people submitted. Do you want to check out some of the stuff cool. that people submitted? And we'll yeah. just kind of... Uh, We'll get a feel for them. Let's see. Yeah. Let me jump into user song reviews. Here we go. Um, okay, so I'm going to play these really at, at random. Before I do that, I just want to make sure that I'm actually giving uh, correct attribution here to the first song, the song that I opened with. Let me see. Let me find it here. Um, that song was called all right naturally enough um i think it's the it's white wine productions i think is the producer and the artist is daniel burgess so um that one I'm just, i'll play a little bit more of that for everybody the rain comes the light. it's like i live in comedy but don't get me joke okay now while i do that i'm going to get the next so one up much, here to play we're still feeling broke i know it feels like all the way Can't let's try this one way. so when i feel these stresses my side come to play Okay, I'm going to switch over here. Oscar, we're about to listen to Phil's premiere, Nay Watermarked by Darius. I'm, that's a an interpretation of uh, the way they named the file. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe they'll, if they're watching in the comments and I got your song title or artist name wrong, let me know. Let's check this out. I'll point out this is a nine-minute song. We will not be listening to the full nine minutes. Uh, for anyone watching, I'm going to be skipping through these uh, songs to kind of, you know, get the get the vibe a little quicker. It's a good vibe, though. That's a deep kick, wouldn't you say? That's really deep. That's nice. It's great atmosphere. It is, right? Yeah. It immediately puts me... Like, I love, I'm going to keep kind of ducking this. I love songs where as soon as I hear it, I am in the mindset of the person who made it. I know I know the vibe they were feeling in the studio yeah. when they made this song. Kind of dark and smooth. Yeah. I don't know what language that is, but it's nice. Kill Hamsters is very atmospheric. Nice vibe. Um... 
All right, let's jump ahead a little bit here and see. Oh, there you go. Oscar, what kind of music, when you're just making music and you, I mean, you know, as a, as a content creator, maybe this is, you know, this doesn't happen anymore these days because like, why make music if I'm not also like making content? But, but if you were <laughs> to make music where you're not if thinking about for your, just for your own sake, what is yeah, your, yeah. what is your style that you are drawn to making? I'd say I have two styles. I have one, I have two, two concepts. One is my, uh, an act where I'm in a partnership with someone called Face the Sun, which is very kind of accessible, dance floor friendly, uplifting house music. And then the other stuff is my very private stuff, which for me never has to become like uh, commercially successful, which I call Torque, which is very techno and experimental. And it's just weird. And it's, it's only for people who like that kind of stuff. Is that, is that stuff and on so, Spotify? If people want to check it out? Sure, yeah. T-O-R-C is Torque and Face the Sun in three words. But we're kind of new and we need to still put some stuff into the public space. Okay, cool. But, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I uh, see what you're saying about like the problem when you're, you're a content creator as well. Yesterday I was here in the studio trying to collaborate with someone with a harp. Yeah. And my brain was going in a thousand directions because I had to <laughs> film it. Yeah. I had to record us talking about the, the music that we were going to make, not knowing what we were going to make yet. Right. It was a... So this is the the uh, the the blessing and the curse of content production is that I when I started producing video content I made more music than I had in the previous few years because you have to you just need to make yeah. I was making you know uh, if I did a, if I recorded like a an artist feature I was making the music bed underneath it or and then I was doing tutorials and I was making music for that and I made all this music so it's it's a uh, the that's the blessing part the curse is that you almost never at least for me i find that i almost never did it um for just its own sake like it, it almost felt like mm. if i'm not if this isn't being you know used in some content way what's the point and i sort of had to like divorce myself from that weird mindset of like you know, no actually the reason i got into this in the first place was because i like making music so uh, you know I, yeah. I shouldn't let the content overtake my joy of just making music for its own sake, you, you know? Get, you gotta do that research and development where you just go into explore software where you don't know what the outcome is gonna be. So then absolutely. finally you can discover new stuff that you can then share with the world, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You know, I'm gonna throw out just, uh, 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 this is a comment to the audience here. Um, I have toyed with, anyone who watches our stuff, I make music all the time for Reason videos and tutorials and stuff. And I've toyed with like Twitch streaming that process. Like, you know, those people who just go up on Twitch and like, it's not a big interactive thing. It's not like a big hosting kind of thing. It's more just like watching someone else work. And I've toyed with opening up the window to that process. So you guys can sort of watch as I'm building these things. There's some pluses and minuses to that. Like if it's with a, uh, an instrument or a device we haven't announced yet, then I, like, I can't really show it. But let me know in the comments if anyone would have any interest in watching a more just raw, music creation process over on a, a separate like a twitch feed or something so um all right oscar let's um let's listen to a little more here is this still from the nine minute track is it yeah <laughs> It's great. It's really nice. It's really nice. It's quite a journey. Really great. I will say, um, you know, for, for it being a nine minute track, if you're going to make a nine minute track, this is just my opinion, you better, you better make a nine minute track. You better not make a one minute track that's nine minutes long, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and this one has got that. It's, I mean, even though we've been listening kind of underneath our dialogue, you know, it's developing steadily and in an interesting way throughout this whole thing, yeah. you know. It takes a lot of confidence to say, this is gonna be interesting for nine minutes. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, and I will say that, that they have they have brought it here with this one, so. Um, looks like uh, the quick uh, vote here, people about Twitch say, Twitch please, yes, uh, would 100% watch you on Twitch. Okay, well, you know, that might be something I do. I've been, I've been toying with it. Um, Adam Fielding used to do Twitch. His streams were great. Yeah, Adam did. He did. He, his streams were really great. I'm not quite sure how much. The, the problem with me doing a Twitch stream where I'm making that music is I would, the instinct would be to hang out with you guys and like, 
kind of do more of this and it, I actually it's more like I got I got shit to get done I got to get music done so I, I'd have to figure <laughs> yeah. out how to how to like tune you out and work without even though everyone's watching so um, all right well listen we're gonna turn this one down for a second I'm gonna Oscar I may come back to you but I'm gonna spin around because uh, I just want to make sure that everyone else in our green room is uh, not feeling entirely left out and I'm I'm gonna kind of like it's like a party I'll Bring kind of in. like I'll pop into these various uh, little rooms as we go here. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll talk to you soon and um, yep. we will go with, let's see here. I got to, I might, I might bring in uh, Olivia. I think I'm going to bring in Olivia. Olivia, is she ready to go? I hope so. We're going to throw her into the uh, mix here. Coming in, coming in strong, Olivia. My God. Okay, now already the, the world is going to be complaining. You're come, only coming into the left channel. Now, there's no fixing it now. We, you, we just are going to have to deal with it. But I'm just letting you know, you are you are already going to be the enemy of the comments. For the, I heard you laugh, and I already... You've ruined it. You've, you've already ruined it. <laughs> You're fine. How are you doing? Why can't I, why can't I mend it? Uh, why wait, can't I mend it? Oh, uh, you might need to mend it because actually it's kind of quiet too. All right, you want to mend it? Yeah, I, I mend, mend is such a that's such a British word. <laughs> <laughs> it just instantly you you couldn't it you all of a minute before it, I had to not you were your fourth I, word. Yes, I don't understand this software. Am I, I am I even coming through this? Am I coming? Through you that? are coming through that. Yeah, that's nice when you're when you're real close like that. What do you are you coming through okay, your just, like your preamp? Yeah, just bear with me. Well, just crank up your preamp. That'll fix the volume. Yeah. Now the left right thing I don't think yeah it's better I don't think the left right thing is gonna okay. um is gonna fix it someone says just hit the mono switch they're saying that as if they know all the hardware that we're using <laughs> exactly <laughs> I don't think there is such a switch <laughs> <laughs> I look I'm looking for it there I'm like Ooh, the I know mono switch. I know Prime uh, Audio Studios yeah, I, I, I I don't see any parameters in this software. We are going to live in the we're going to live in the left. But look at this. Already Patty Freethinker, she is on the left. The comments are coming in. Guys, only left speaker. I know Patty. I know. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it, Olivia. <laughs> I had an option and it told me it told me that I was doing both. Do you want me to come back in? I feel like I'm going to let everybody down. No, no, no. But but if you're if you come back in, it's still going to be left speaker only uh Anyway, just uh, because you're going to be coming in on the same mic. So don't worry. You haven't let you have. Le First of all, let me disabuse you of the notion that you've let people down because I need to actually sing your praises. Olivia is a hero. She is not uh, letting anyone down because originally Olivia was not scheduled to be on this live stream. Uh, <clears throat> not because we don't love you and not because uh, we not because we forgot you. Um Spin, spin the last minute stand in to make me feel wanted. Come on. <laughs> no, I mean to be honest, it was like you know. So I, I, I I'll, I'll just uh, for for people that don't know uh, that Olivia on our channel and and in our reason world, I think most people will know you. But um, Olivia and I are, have, aside from just working together, so we become you know just dear friends and so just you know actual. In our IRL friends that talk on the phone now and again and, and you know, see how we're doing and check in and, uh, you know. The fact all those... that we're real friends, I, I mean, I'm sure there's already been comments on what you're wearing, but <laughs> if you didn't buy, if you didn't buy that piano tie specially. I did, I did buy the piano to... tie specially. But I'm surprised that you went with the piano tie as your first thing other than this monstrosity that's. I don't like to be obvious. <laughs> This but, is this is of this is obviously a joke. This could be serious. <laughs> That's true. That's true. No, they were they were. I can show you the uh, Amazon receipt. They're both on the same uh, purchase. So uh, just for the stream. But um. But anyway, my my point was that um because of our just you know friendship, I have a tendency to over over ask you. You know when we're doing things, I'll just come to you all the time. And so I thought with this live stream, I was like, I'm gonna. I'm going to give her the night off and uh, and not... And then ask her <laughs> 24 hours notice. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Once everybody else started dropping from various colds <laughs> and rail strikes, uh, I, I instantly uh, gave up on that principle that I had to uh, let you have an evening off. <laughs> I sent you a message desperately, Olivia, can you join the stream? I don't know if we have enough people. Oh, man. Um, Benjamin, you, you want to hear? I'm going to share some uh, comments you're going to enjoy. Benjamin Vanyan says, Olivia on the left. So, uh, just, And just, Ryan on the right. That's political. Now, is this 
<laughs> that's what it is. That's right. He is. Uh, he's caught on to the fact that I am a staunch, staunch conservative. I am not. <laughs> um, but um, let's see. Let me. Uh, I'm going to check in on things. So listen, Olivia. I have no agenda because um, I I wasn't actually going to have you on the stream. But I. It is nice to see you. And I got to say, I, I'm almost. I, I say this almost with a level of concern. Your studio is getting a little bit. It's like closing in on you. It's it's. <laughs> I know the size I'm, of that room, and it's it's getting smaller. This is what's what's happened is um, we all know there was an incident last year when I started to just buy a lot of pianos. Yes. We well, you and I know this. I know that. Yes, you you went on a piano buying spree, which is not. There's also sp- there, I've accidentally also got another one in the house. I am um, I don't know if I'm <laughs> peaking, so I'm going to turn that down a bit. Yeah, I've 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 now got a baby grand in my living room, which is. I made a joke to my publisher. It's the closest that a baby grand has ever been to a bread bin because it's basically <laughs> just, you know, my house. In fact, you don't know the new house, but it's kind of shoved in the corner, kind of in the kitchen. It sounds amazing. I had it tuned yesterday. So anyway, I digress. The reason the room feels like it's getting smaller is because I was I, I do a lot of singing and playing at the same time. And this beautiful piano here is really, really resonant. And I, miking it on the strings and then my voice, it was just spilling and it was a nightmare. So I slightly have pulled the piano out. And Well, Francois Bonan says it's, it's like the trash compactor scene in Star Wars where the, the walls are closing in. I agree. I almost made that reference to Francois, but I, I thought I would get scorned from Olivia. So I'm going to let you make that. Well, it's you. You can always make Star Wars references to someone that's never seen any exactly. Star Wars. Exactly. So then we get to talk about I've never seen any Star Wars. Oh man, um, but yeah. So it's you. But those two pianos are the same type of piano. Am I correct in saying that the two behind you? <laughs> what? Don't make it like I've just bought two of the same thing. They are different. <laughs> the, the risk that you take when you buy pianos just like a ridiculous person off ebay is that i didn't play any of these pianos before i bought them right so i hedged my bets i get it so i thought if i buy two i buy one get one free it kind of turned out like that i had a piano guy going up and down the country i said hey how expensive is it to pick another piano up on the way down and it was like a hundred pounds now me and ryan have this thing that everything just costs a couple of bucks a couple bucks two bucks as good as a couple of three bucks now maybe with inflation yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, hundred pounds is what I can't. Even, I, can't, I can never do the reverse inflation. Three thousand, um, uh, two thousand percent? No, twenty thousand percent. I don't know. You're the math know, person. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. So, so I, I, it was kind of like that. I thought if I get two, one will be fine, mm-hmm. and it a hundred percent worked. Never seen Star Wars. You know what I mean? That's what I, mean. I, know. I know. I know. So this one here, which you can't really see because this thing's in the way, it's all like beautiful and Art Deco and stepped. It is really nice. Yeah. And yeah, no such thing, same piano. But <laughs> this one sounds like a piece. This one, it's not It's not holding its tune. It needs to have the felts redone. This one's just there looking pretty. I love and, the people are now making piano and Star Wars hybrid comments here. You won't get this reference. These are the pianos we're looking for. They they didn't, uh, they're, it's beautiful. Chef's kiss, Briggs. That's, uh, that's wonderful. And then, and then this one sounds beautiful. So, but it's really resonant and it just means that I've had to pull it out away from the wall and mic it from behind. So yes, the room is now essentially one foot wide. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, but, but one foot wide with some great stuff. I'm, I'm going to throw a, a question out to the audience because I, I want to know from people. I have never in my life, I think it's true that never, no, correction, one time have I bought an instrument sight unseen via, you know, I saw an ad and I bought it. Only one time was that instrument something that I was like, oh, this one's great. Most of the time you get it and you, you know, like it'll be a guitar or a banjo or something for me, but you know, pretty quickly, like, oh, mm, this isn't, it's all right, but it's not great. So I totally understand your mindset of just like hedging your bets. That makes total sense. And and I've not, I've now gone three deep and two are fine. So I'm hitting a good 66. I mean, I have to say my piano tuner, who is a, a cautious man his name's alan and we when i told my friend oh alan the piano tuner's coming he said but my piano tuner is called alan now i don't know if people have piano tuners out there but if yours is also called alan do write in because we have a theory that every piano tuner is just called alan and <laughs> and he said olivia you can't he was like oh it's a bit a bit risky olivia and i said it's fine it's fine 
So I paid to have this now baby grand piano bought up from a house down south. And God love them. These people wanted it to find a good home. Is that right? They didn't want anything for it. So uh, I said I would be a good home. And they believed me. And they let me have the piano. So I paid to get it up here. And it was uh, 400 British pounds to get a baby grand piano into my house. Wow. It's a 19, 1952 Challen. And I love her. And yesterday the piano tuner came and I, I was ready for him to just be full of mocking and like, what is this piece of crap? And by the time he tuned it, he said, this has had an awful lot of money spent on it. It's had all new hammers. It's got all new felts. Wow. This has been really loved. And by the time he tuned it, I can't tell you how good it sounds. But even he who tuned Steinways and whatever kind of went. Sounds really good, doesn't it? I, I got to so say, he was I, really happy. I love this comment um, from Vili, I guess. He's using the um, the inverse principle to say, I'm not a piano tuner and I'm not called Alan, so it all checks out. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. This is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> um, and uh, Boom Baby says, my mate's name is Alan. So uh, listen, Boom Baby. Wait, wait, don't leave us in suspense. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's true. Now we don't know. We got to wait. There's a 40 second latency. Boom, baby. Let us know. Is he a piano tuner or is he currently in trade school to become a piano tuner? Because And I had to ask, I had to express concern for Alan, my piano tuner, who is in his 60s, yeah. which is young, obviously, but also people in their 60s might think about, I don't want to be a piano tuner forever. Yeah. Um, and I had to say to Alan, I'm concerned that you will die. And who will tune now what is becoming a ridiculous that's a, that's amount a really of piano? That's a tactful conversation to have with your piano tuner. You, darling, you know me. It's, 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 it was pretty tactful to you. That actually is. And, um, and he, he did say there was a course you could do. And I'm thinking, do I just need to go and do this course? Oh, to tune your own piano? Tune my, yeah. It's like toot your own because horn, tune your own piano. Alan is like the only person around here. That's um, I wouldn't put it past you to learn it and to be quite good at it. I think it's because people have stopped calling their children Alan and thus the other children. Well, we we still, you know what though? What if we now we have a third question for Boom Baby? Is your friend a piano tuner, and does he happen to live sort of within a certain radius, <laughs> you know, in, in Middle England that uh, might be, you know, might yeah. suffice for you? So, um, well, listen. I want to, can I ask, would it be annoying? I know, I know that it's only coming in on the left side and I know that it's far away, but could I, could, could we maybe hear the two pianos? Just a quick well, plinky is, plonky. I'm going to have to bring this with me in some sort of light. Uh, these are mic'd up. So, well, one's mic'd up. So if I play this one. Oh, I've got to oh. oh, I see. Hey, everyone's like, hey, she's doing this at 24 hours notice. She's doing really I mean, well. I, I'm, I'm, absolutely. Can you, is, can you hear this coming through the mics? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Hang on one second, Olivia. I got to just, I'm going to make a couple of, uh, 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 sort of, I got to call a couple of audible things here on the, based on the waiting room. Guys, I maxed out on the number of waiting room people. So that means, Oscar, even though you're in the waiting room, I'm going to, I'm going to disconnect you. Um, but I may throw back to you at some point. So if I do that, just keep your eye on the actual live stream and reconnect if I, if I tell you to do that. So I'm going to disconnect you. Um, likewise, let me think, uh, maybe I got to, no, I think I'm okay there. Um, okay, cool. Hang on one second, Olivia. I'm going to just jump over for one second. I'm going to bring in another. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to tell someone you said, are you online now? Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. I, I posted just before I came on. So We've got... Be really unsocial. You, you do your thing. I'm going to jump to my own camera here for a second. Just let people know. Breaking news, Gentlemen's Club joined the green room. So they are... Um, they've arrived. They made it. There was a motorway fire. There was a rail strike. But they have made it to their studio where they will be joining us. There's probably a little bit of setup for us to do with them. Um, so I'm just letting them know if they're seeing this right now um, that I've put them in the waiting room. I'm going to be chatting with Olivia for a little bit. I'm sure that they're still getting settled. So, um, so Gentlemen's Club, you guys are, nobody else is hearing or seeing you yet, but I can see you, not hear you. But just thumbs up me if you've heard, hey, 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 okay, that's good. Uh, they're waving at us. Um, did you hear what I said about uh, I'm going to be coming to you in a little bit? Okay, perfect. Love it. 
you guys, uh, you, you don't look at all ragged. You look like you had a totally easy day. So uh, I think that's great. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm getting head shakes. Okay, I'm going to jump back over to Olivia, but I'll be uh, joining in with you guys in a second here. Um, all right, Olivia, I'm back with you. Hi. I'm here still. Okay. Hi, hi there. Hi. I'm so confused about. I, I thought this was like a Zoom with lots of people. Why? Do, well, the, are you uh, seeing people and I'm not. No, I. I've, it's a whole thing. I've got. I've got people over. I'm exposed. I'm no. Just no. exposed that this is not going well. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a whole. There's a whole other Zoom thing that um could be happening. God, do, dare I? No, I can't bring them in yet. It's because my whole agenda's uh, gone cattywampus. There is a public Zoom that I'm going to be opening up. Uh, at some point, but I have to do that after Gentlemen's Club, so it's, it's a lot of moving parts. It's chaos. It's chaos, Olivia. This whole stream has, like, all of my plans for the stream have how been... Many, how many people are watching? I don't even know that. Is it? Is it? Uh, uh, we got 325 currently watching. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, listen. Um, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit of this uh, challenge piano. And um, I, I, you're, you're, is this still, all com still coming in the? Maybe this will be stereo because I've got two mics, or is it just no? It's all left. Uh, does it Pretty. sound nice? Sounds nice. Someone earlier was asking for uh, you to make a, a refill, an Olivia's piano refill. Oh, here, Hikey Roots. Yeah, we should do that. This one though, if I spin round, I mean, I had this whole thing about becoming Alicia Keys on my two pianos. And yeah, Tori Amos does that too. Oh. There you go. Rick Wakeman does it, which is such a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Can you wear a sequence cape like Rick Wakeman? I shouldn't say that while wearing sequence, but... Oh, my goodness. I'll this send you my jacket. Is, ...is in a world of horrible, out of mm, Beautiful. I feel, so, like, I feel like some people would enjoy that in a weird way, you know? Yeah, it's charm but it, uh, this one needs more love and this one i'm already devoted to so <laughs> a comment um natural sign comments after you played the first one nice work alan <laughs> so <laughs> i guess quality quality tuning alan i really feel like i should have got alan to yeah he he did actually just tune this up yesterday could so we um, could you text him see if we can get him on the stream as a guest i think we need <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, was, don't. I, I, can I just let you know? I mean, I'm, I'm wearing them in a hilarious way. And, oh, look, I'll just do this to get it over. Oh, you can't even see them. I've worn some festive socks. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Which have got like baubles on. That's good. You know what I realized? I got to fix my. So in in this shot that I have, I'm representing Santa, but my my Hanukkah menorah is out of the shot. I got to like move it over here to kind of try and get it. I gotta I gotta represent. Uh, Two main, the two main holidays this time of year. Yes, um, the danger when Ryan and I get on a stream together is we forget that other people are watching and we just kind of completely <laughs> kind of go down a rabbit hole of just catching up. Sorry all right. if still for you. But all you know, right, it's yeah. a stream. Um, yeah, but okay, let me just check in here with a little bit of the um, with the thing. P play a little piano while I read uh, the, uh, the read oh, through some what, comments. What mood are we going for? We uh, going major comment, major? comment reading music. Okay. <laughs> I'll make I'll make gestures like I'm reading. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. Navi Relev says, "Tip: If you hate the piano, detune it more." Yeah, I guess that's where you could do. You could really just make it some weird lo-fi thing. Huh. That's true. Don't say hate. <laughs> Don't say hate. <laughs> well, maybe he's talking more in general. If 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 one hates their piano, detune it more. That could be that could be the case. Um. But oh, was I still meant to be doing it? Oh, you're okay. You're okay. You you don't you don't have to. You know what we should do because I'm I'm never gonna get through all these songs. Why don't we listen to uh, one of the song submissions um, and give people some feedback? Let's see what. Uh, let's listen to. I've, I've still got some trauma from that reason competition I did that had 800 entries. But sure, let's listen. <laughs> this is yeah. So this that's going way back. But Olivia and I, I think we actually first met um, working together on a remix competition that you did. You gracefully uh that's gracefully graciously met, but that that it's not when we first met oh right no that's right it was a live stream actually yeah that's right but anyway you, we did this remix and we had people remix one of your songs we got 800 submissions and um and you and i took it upon ourselves to review all 800 of those and um well listen 
I've got 600 here. If you want, I can send you the Dropbox link, and you can go through the 600 that came in for this stream. But instead, why don't we listen to Green Tea by Tenzo? Oh. Tenzo. I love that everybody's so interested in Alan. They want to know, does Alan offer a detune service as well? I love that we've introduced Alan to the Reason community. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, oh, Ron says I should share that Dropbox folder. That's not a bad idea. I mean, I, I, maybe I will. I don't know. I'll have to think about that, Ron. I didn't get people's permission to share all that stuff, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But Matias coming in with COVID loves those wonky bells. Now, Olivia, as a songwriter, if someone came to you with this sort of underlying beat, do you get ideas for what you would do with it as a, a top line writer? I'm not asking you to write us a top line on the spot, but I'm just saying, do, would you be able to sort of like, does it suggest a certain rhythm or a certain style to you? I mean, could you pick a song that's further away from what it is that I do? Probably. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Olivia is now going to write a song on the spot to uh, this. No. <laughs> I mean, I actually, P.S., think this is a great backing track. Whoever it's great. It, oh, it's great, right? Oh, no, Kenzo. Tenzo. Tenzo, Ten Tenzo right. Tenzo. Yep. There is space in it. I think I, I think you, on a track like this, I would look for where that space is. I feel like now you're going to make me just do some sort of horrible, spontaneous British I'm not track. making you do nothing, <laughs> I, but I will, just to further put you on the spot, I just saw that DJ Tenzo, he is in the in the audience, he's thanking us for playing it, oh, so, you know. We're into it. But I would, so you can hear where that space is, and it would be a very kind of staccato, choppy kind of... Yeah, that yeah. That kind of top line. Cool. Does it do any, if, I, if I say, does it do anything different? That sounds like the most <laughs> thing one can say. No, no, no. Does it but do that, no, no. Different? No, there's 20 seconds, uh, 10 seconds left. So it's, it's just, it just runs this vibe. Yeah. This uh, is a good vibe, but it, um, it I'm is a, a traditionalist. Vibe. I would like it to hit. A, I would like a chorus. Right now, I, I'm going to guess DJ Tenso. You can chime in in the comments if you uh, if you made that with an instrumental in mind. If you made it maybe with a like a, a rap a feature on top or something, or, or what your thoughts were with that one. Let us know in the comments. Another question that came in, I'm just going to answer. Bomb Toy asks, "Who sang the BBX theme song?" Um, it was not Olivia, uh, although I can guarantee you that I probably considered asking her, and I, it was one of those moments when I didn't. I thought I won't bug you, um, but um, that was a, a woman by the name of Sarah Spencer who's been a guest on our live stream. And who may jo be joining us on this live stream as well? Who, if the live who stream is this, who is this other singular woman? Who <laughs> that I've never... Sarah, the, the, you're you're not the, you're not my only go-to when it comes to uh, you know talented. <laughs> I feel, like on my, I feel like she's on my territory. I know. Not, I've been here eleven. I've worked eleven years to be the only woman that uses reason software. <laughs> well, you know, no, you've got there's a there's a new a new uh, a new Sarah in town, so. She's probably younger than me, in fairness. So I she, she is younger than you. That is true. So. How much younger is she? I don't. I don't. I don't know her age. If she joins, we'll we'll ask. I, I like the idea of starting some kind of just totally pointless yeah. rivalry. It's like yeah, East Coast West Coast feud. Bitty, bitter kind of forty-one-year-old and some fresh young thing. Oh, this thing is so good. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that Sarah's probably in her twenties, um, but I don't. I don't know for sure. Um, Okay. I had, I had to, um, not had to, I was. Had to sounds like I wasn't enjoying it and I really was enjoying it. I was doing um, a meet and greet Zoom slash will it be a co-write type session the other day with a 19-year-old. Oh, right. Did you, was your, all of your conversation, was it just desperately trying to figure out how to relate? Was it like, no, what do you, what? really. No, was it all right? It, it was all right. It was just that I was old enough to be her mother and I had to keep my time. That out of my thought <laughs> did you write a song called like, like pick up your room don't talk to me like that <laughs> yeah 
pick up your room? What is that? Some American thing? You know what? No, that was. You know what's funny? <laughs> I don't know. Let me, guys. Let me know in the comments if I just totally butchered my own language, or if I think what happened was I actually tried to predict the change. Clean up your room is what I would say. And then I was like, I think my brain just sort of was like, oh, I bet you, I bet you in England they say something weirder like pick up your room or tend to your room, tend to your dwelling. I don't know what you say. <laughs> tend to your chamber, darling. Yeah, yeah tend to your chamber. I got, I got jealous that you had a mug, so I've got my mug. Oh, you know what I have? I also have, I've got my yellow mug and then I've got this here, my auxiliary mug in case the stream keeps going longer and I need to keep drinking. <laughs> now, listen, uh, Olivia. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I, I would I would be happy to um, chat with you forever, but I'm seeing some comments, and there's some people that got got word that Gentlemen's Club is uh, sitting in the green room, and they're starting to uh, they're starting to grow restless that uh, I have not brought them on yet. So, in the interest of um, moving this along, I'm going to jump over to them. I uh, I'm going to give you the option. I'll stay here. You want you okay. gonna stay? You want to stay in the green room? You can come back to me. Okay, I might come back to you. Now, listen, if I if I have to at some point disconnect you, it's because I've hit a limit, and and it's if that happens, it's don't it's not because Sarah Spencer joined and I just was you know kicking you off. It's because I hit a limit on the number of people and uh, and and it did nothing personal. So, uh, but I'm gonna put you back in the waiting room for now, and uh, thank you so much though for hanging out with us here. I'm sure everyone has as much fun as I do with you every time you're on. So, okay. Now listen, guys, I'm going to bring on gentlemen's club and we're going to cry on each other's shoulders together because we have had one hell of a morning together via email. So let me join them. Uh, let me get them on here. Let, hang on a second. Oh, I got to click a couple of buttons to make this work. Go here, put them here. All right, gentlemen. Hello. How are you? <laughs> It's been a long day, brother. How it are has, you? It's been good. It's been good. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, you know, fill us all in here. You guys went, you got on one of your trains on your way to the studio, right? Yeah, we so we, um, we, we, we started our journey, jumped on the train. And then in the UK currently, there's uh, rail strikes in the UK. So um, we've had some issues there. And then I had to drop an email to say... We might not make it onto the stream today, and then we um, chose to take a taxi then from where we were to the studio, which was um, it was about a hundred miles away, and um, <laughs> it's then taken three hours and forty minutes in the taxi uh... due to being stuck on the motorway because of <laughs> oh a truck fire. A truck fire. So yeah. you guys, so you're you're sitting in the you're sitting in the motorway. You don't know what's causing it, and then as you get close, you actually can see. Like, did you get to see a truck on fire? It was it was not on fire by the time we passed it. It was uh, it was definitely put out. Hopefully, everyone's all right. Yeah, um, it was involved, but um, but yeah, we're here. Finally, you made it. it's you cold. Ma Listen, I, like I, I got to give you guys. If there's a gold star to be given for like <laughs> a for effort of like it snow unions uh, you know calamity nothing <laughs> nothing was stopping you from making it a journey of a i mean 100 miles in a taxi yeah and that's the that's just the latter part of your journey that wasn't the start of your journey so that is just just crazy we're here though it's i'm gonna just uh bear with me here because i'm going to um take care of a couple of lingering uh, overlap uh, comments here. Tim Orr asks, please let us know Olivia's last name so we can find her music. Tim, that's Olivia Broadfield. Um, Olivia Broadfield. And she's on Twitter at, at shut up Olivia. That's her Twitter handle. And I think her Instagram is uh, just search her name and you'll, you'll find her. So um, another thing I'm seeing here, I just want to maybe um, hopefully uh, quash people talking about VST3. Um, I, people know that VST3 uh, reasons support for VST3 plugins is currently in beta, um, and I can let people know. Um, I'm I, I'm going to break some news here, uh, guys. Uh, that on uh, Monday that is scheduled to release, uh, come out of beta and go public release. So people who are uh, chatting about VST3 in the comment section, uh, just know that. Uh, uh, you know, set your alarm on Monday, wake up and inst install your VST3 plugins. So with that stuff out of the way, guys, it's nice to meet you. I haven't, um, it, I was saying to Oscar as well, I haven't talked to you guys. I haven't met you, but no, I, it's first time. I'm a, I'm a fan. 
I know you guys. Uh, I'm a fan of your music. I'm a fan of what you've done on the channel with us. And uh, thank you. Yeah, it's fun to you, it's fun to actually get to like. You know, it's strange for us. It's, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm talking to the YouTube videos usually. Well. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know. I this is what happens every time I get on a uh, usually. So like um, normally on a live stream guest situation, you and I would have gotten on a, a stream like yesterday, and we would have kind of dialed in settings and done all that. Um, but because of the nature of the other studio, and this is before rail strikes and all that, we didn't do that. But that's the most common thing that happens is I get on a. a a zoom call to just like do a tech test with someone and they all say the same thing it's like it's like a youtube video is talking back to me it's a really weird interactive <laughs> sort of thing so yeah <laughs> um but you know i i have a little of that too because i've been watching your guys stuff as well so it's um really fun to to see you've been reason ambassadors for it's just this the whole year basically really yeah yeah yeah, yeah how has that been being uh you know we we haven't this isn't a thing we did until the starting this year that we had this like capital A ambassador sort of official uh, kind of title. Um, how has been, it been for you guys? It's, it's been fantastic. Yeah. It's been, it's been something. It's um, it's been yeah. It, as a, as a the child version of me would be very jealous and yeah. be very proud at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It's because uh, obviously Absolutely. reason is something we started with. We've never used anything else, and to be then a reason ambassador amazing and yeah it's been a lot of fun working with uh, the reason team and staying doing in contact with doing well. tutorials yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, so you guys it's... um I, I guess for people that don't know your music I, I could attempt to describe it but maybe you could describe it uh, better than I could um but it's certainly are we are we on the same page that we're going to categorize it in the house broad genre uh, um, Bass house, bass house, just bass, mu bass music in bass. general. Okay, because uh, we do, we make drum and bass, bass line, bass house, dubstep, anything that's bass heavy that works on a dance floor. We give it a go. Yeah, gotcha. And you, um, your reason, your DAW reason users, right? You're not reason rack plugin. Yep, yep. Yeah. We solely use reason. Solely. Reason. And what? Uh, so, what is your go-to in the reason rack for those? big all that stuff yeah. <laughs> and, and we're big fans of Maelstrom and Subtractor yeah right. the original the really the original Dons yeah, yeah. and that you Maelstrom you, you, yeah. yeah you can't you just can't rep, you can't replicate the sounds and, and these other new VSTs man they're just, just raw gritty noises man that's it it's raw main word it is raw. that that Maelstrom is one that uh, you know people who there's a certain type of user who came up at a certain time in Reason I guess it was it was the perfect confluence of um, Maelstrom was relatively a new kid on the block. Bass music was on its ascendancy, and and they just fit together so well and and did these sounds that were so good. And I know, um, do you guys know uh, Jack Wob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back so, in the day. Yeah, so he was. I mean. Maelstrom, his whole. Yeah, I, I visited him in the studio, and he had this folder of Maelstrom presets. And um, it was like his, it was like the the nuclear codes. Like he just was his secret little stash of like these totally raw and aggressive, but really deep with awesome high end basses. And he was doing it all with Maelstrom. It was uh, really something interesting to to watch. It's actually, so. news to me there. Oh, is that, that right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Nice to hear. yeah, we've got a. Um, I mean, it, this is it's probably ten years old now. But if you uh, look back on our channel, if you search our channel, there's a Jack Wob artist feature where he. He's uh, yeah, talking yeah. about it, yeah, and he shows so. one of his uh, tunes. So, well, um, should we? I know you guys have some stuff actually that we could maybe even look at. Maybe that's the best way to to get people uh, up to speed on the on your style and your methodologies and all that stuff. And so I thought maybe we could take a look at um, one one of your sessions. Is that uh, is that something we actually can do on the agenda? We most certainly can do that. I love it. Well, listen, so now we got to, because you guys um, made it heroically, made it uh, after the stream started, I'm going to just, for the audience's sake, we're going to do a little bit of this kind of the setup we normally would do uh, before we're on the stream. We're going to do it live. So you guys are going to kind of watch the sausage as it gets made here. <laughs> so um, let me do this. I'm going to start 
a Zoom call, which is the thing that we'll be using for your screen share. So um, I'm going to hide the video. I'm going to mute my sound. And you guys, did I send you a link to the Zoom call? You, you did indeed. <clears throat> Perfect. Go ahead and join that Zoom call. Okay. And when you do, you're going to mute the microphone and the video uh, in that Zoom call. Okay. Uh, While you do that. Microphone, mute video. Yep, done that. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then you're going to, are you guys here? Participants. Three. Oh, true, true story. Yep. Um, you're going to share your screen. Okay. Right in the middle. And once I see that pop up, we are going to. Okay. Um, I'm just going to click on reason now. So just share the uh, the reason tab. Uh, you can share just reason if yeah if we're we're just looking at one song file, right? Yeah. 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 So that'll work. I think we'll find out. <laughs> A um, couple of comments I'm going to throw up on the screen while we're doing this here. Um, Maelstrom still is killer. Absolutely agree. Subtractor is great. Been using it in my tracks a lot lately. Ben Bowman says, yeah, you know, a lot of people should, you know, it's easy to go for the shiny object. The, you know, Europa comes out and you want to just use Europa on everything. And then algorithm comes out and suddenly you put algorithm on everything. But, you know, not, not a bad thing to uh, keep in mind those what what we might call classic devices they're still very valid in the same way that like a a moog you know a mini moog model d is still a classic nobody would be like oh but that's from the 70s who wants to use that who wants to use a 303 that's old nobody you know with hardware you don't uh rule it out by age and i think we shouldn't do that with uh, reason devices either hopefully so okay so i see you guys have your uh, your stuff opening oh you know what um, could you make your uh, window yeah a little less wide? Yeah. Oh, what you what you got going on right there? If you can live with that dimension, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I, I just pulled it down just so we could see you because at the moment I can't see you. So um, gotcha. But yeah, that's fine. But yeah, I can I can hear yeah, the project is open. Okay. We we're, we're good to go, mate. I somehow something just happened. I just lost your. Uh, did you stop sharing your screen? Um, I no. Can see that it's gone. It's, yeah, I can see it's gone as well. Just one moment. Okay, sure. One moment. Um, yeah, the. Chris Reed asking in the comments Can Thor get some love? Absolutely, Chris. Absolutely. And hey, by the way, Chris, Chris Reed, anyone watching who knows our channel, Chris Reed's going to be on this uh, stream as well. And Chris, just so you know, you're in the um, the waiting room. I, don't th I haven't admitted you yet because I hit <coughs> my. Uh, I hit my maximum limit of guests, so um, I will be. I'll just call an audible on the stream uh, when we're going to bring you on. Okay, I'm seeing it. It looks like things are working. Oh, you know what? Um, I just saw you do a thing there. You don't need to change your driver to that loopback in uh, Reason. You can use whatever you normally monitor out of. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah no worries. But theoretically, um, theoretically, I should be able to hear it. Let's. Uh, Let's do a quick audio test. We'll just play something and we'll see if we're getting. Yep, perfect. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Cool. Ooh. Oh man, we made it. Look, see guys, we didn't need all this uh, setup time. We just uh, <laughs> we can just wing it. We uh, just do it. We just do it. <laughs> cool. Well, here we are. We're looking at a, a reason uh, song file. Should we? How do you? What do you want to do? You want to play a little bit of it, and we'll just kind of check it out, and then we'll maybe poke around and dive in and look at kind of. Yeah, what? we can do that. Yeah, a little precursor we, yeah. as well. It's heavy. Uh, it's, heavy it, drum so this bass. is um this is something we've been working on. It's not finished yet. Um it's a drum and bass song and it's with uh, an MC called Haribo. Um and yeah man, take a listen and see if you enjoy it. Cool. Let's go. While uh, while you're listening, I'm, I may uh, check in with our uh with our party crew over in Stockholm uh see how they're how they're enjoying the music as well, so Okay, sounds um, good. Nice. Take a little listen Let's here. Go.
These dark days have a harsh effect I sense signs that you can't detect Tired eyes cause I've hardly slept Need to make a the architect These dark days have a harsh effect You just have to play your part correct Part ways if we can't connect I'll just take them to the darker depths This uh, there so you go. comments flying in. Um, master, I like this comment. Alfred English says, "Masterful heaviness." That is such a perfect description for uh, for that. I would call that masterful, masterful heaviness. Absolutely. I like that. I'm gonna <laughs> widen yes. your. Uh, I'm gonna widen your sh- shot a little bit so I get you both in here. Um, that really, I mean, when you hear that, what what I, when I hear that, what I hear are a couple of guys that have left no knob unturned on an instrument to find out what does it do how is it supposed to be used how is it not supposed to be used and yeah, yeah. let's go in that direction and, and make some new sounds it is uh, really really cool I, I gotta say as someone who doesn't you know I've, I've made tutorials where I've done like Hoover basses and stuff like that um, and or not what not Hoover basses what's the um, Reese Reese bass thank you thank you um but it's not a style that I, I spend a lot of time uh, working in. And one of the things that for anyone who's watching that would like to dabble into this, one of the things I struggle with is how do you know the difference between cool noise and noise? Like when do you, particularly when you're learning, I mean, and now with the expertise that you have, you know what you're doing. But in your learning curve, there must have been this moment where you're like, is this... Is this awesome, or do I just not know what I'm doing? <laughs> I think that's usually down to the feedback of the people listening, usually. When you're starting out, you kind of just put things out there and see what the reaction is. Right. If it's a good reaction, then you're like, okay, I'm going to keep on doing that sound or something in that kind of similar sound like that. Right, right. Now, you guys, so you guys DJ, you've always, have you always DJed as well as done your production? Yeah. yeah, and so you are basically it's like focus group testing your yes. your music. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. fantastic, yeah, though. Uh, which one came first, the production or the the DJing? It's different for each of us. He was DJ first, I was okay. producer first, and then right. going to DJ. He was DJing, and then going to production. You sort of brought e- each other into the middle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well, that's interesting because I know who was it? Um, shoot, I can't remember who it is now, but I know that. Um, one of their oh it was um oh it's on the tip of my tongue and I should just give up and, and not worry about it but yeah <laughs> I can't remember one of the artists that uh, that I interviewed years ago um, was that way he was a, a producer who started DJing and uh, he talked about that he said it was you're as a producer you're making a lot of sort of theoretical choices of what you think will work well on the dance floor and you're doing I mean it's not you're not guessing you you go to dance clubs you you know what you respond to you know but um he said that when he started djing it suddenly it was a very quick learning curve of like oh now i now i really get it like it's there's a different thing between making music that you that you think will be the way you would respond to it if you were in a club versus making yeah. music and watching people respond to it so yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah i could imagine that yeah, you, you probably had a similar experience. I'm just yeah. like, oh, I get it now. 
going to house parties. <laughs> right. <laughs> was, uh, right. Because I started off quite young. I think I was like 14, 15 when I got into the reason. Um, so I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to clubs per se. I was just going to like house parties and sneaking into student house parties as well. <laughs> and then I heard like some underground drum bass and just underground music in general that some of the DJs were playing there. And I was like, all right, I can see how my music that I'm making can correlate to this, I suppose. Right. Well, should we, uh, should we poke around a little bit in this uh, and see what makes this uh, song tick? Yeah. Most, most certainly. Um, what would you like to know? We've got, we've got the bass sounds, we've got the drum sounds. Obviously, it's, this tune's far from done yet. So sure, you, sure. You get, you're, getting, um, you're getting a glimpse of an early project. I but, love it. Um, I suppose maybe the, uh, the first bass that comes in. The first the yeah, I think there's that first bass, and then there's that, I mean, I, won't, I don't know how to describe them. I'm going to use bad names, but like the, the squelch, that like kind of around where you've got the loop markers, there's that like whole squelch breakdown thing that's happening. Yeah. So this is a... What's, oh, that's just a noise layer. Yeah. One thing that Sol does is he creates many layers for the same sounds yeah. that can kind of perfect the sound right so this is just a this is just a noise layer just to give um just to break it up into layers the bass so you've got your mid-range bass and then i tend to roll off the high end off there and then have an extra layer of noise on top and especially with something like drum and bass or bass music in general um, i tend to do a lot of working with, a lot with noise okay because um, it's just it just helps just to fill out the song and it's just it's nice to work with. Um, you'll, you, when we go uh, further into, into the project, you'll see what I mean by working with noise, because even down to the drums, a lot of the drums are just noise. That's um, great. I, I'll, and that's the I'll, other, create, I, I'll create hi-hats and like serum using just noise. Right. That's, a, that's one of those, you know, I, I always think about it for some reason, when, whenever we're looking at things like this, where you guys are at a, this expert level and you're creating, and I know the people watching are kind of just getting started on their journey, um, I, I always think of things like that, this noise thing that like noise is counterintuitive as a sound design tool. If you're just starting out, it's like literally white noise static. It's, it's not, yeah. it's not something that we, it's um, not pretty. No. <laughs> yeah. no, it's not pretty, but like if, if you can harness the power of noise and use it in your sound design, Oh my God, is it a, a powerful tool to, yeah shape your sounds and, and give them you know all the things that people say about where it's like oh that hits so hard oh that's so raw oh that's in your face like a lot of times what they're referencing is the noise element that they don't even know they're hearing it's just that's yeah. that's how you're achieving that sound if it was if bass music was literally made from bass frequencies it would not work no 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 no, no. <laughs> no definitely it, was, not. it would not be good yeah so it, so cool you'll see uh this is uh, so we've got this bass. And basically, as you can see, there's a lot of automation going on. And right. for any producer, my biggest um, bit of advice is automate, automate, and automate. Automate yes. everything. It's Absolutely. It's what keeps your song interesting. You can't just have one just one bass sound here and one bass sound over there. Go wild. There's right. so many options, especially in Reason as well. I, like, Reason is so easy for automation. So just go for it, go wild. So here's some some of the other automations. So we got... Wow. And that's all within the same bass patch. Now, when um, you are... Just when you're automating that stuff, are you doing that by hand, or do you assign controller knobs and and kind of do it on the fly, or just simply just um, right click on the knob that I'd like to automate, and then just are you, draw it are in. You're drawing it in on, on, with, on with there, the mouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I'd like to have the human control sometimes, but you need to be quite precise as well, um, right? Because like with some bass sounds. Um, are quite hard to tame that if you play mm. the automations it turn takes a tiny bit of a change in a knob where it can completely change the sound and ruin the sound so sometimes you have to be quite precise with it so we we tend to just draw the lines in ourselves just yeah. so we've got the maximum um so we can be as precise as possible with this i gotcha i gotcha um there is a question i'm gonna i'm gonna put the question up uh i don't know if andrew rothman meant for i it can't to... i can't see 
No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oh. say it too. Don't worry. Um, but Andrew Rothman says, yes, uh, this is in regards to automation. You said automate, automate, automate. He says, yeah, but what if I'm lazy as fuck? Which is, I actually, <laughs> I actually think it's a valid question because like automation sounds awesome. It's not particularly fun to do, you know, like, I, I don't, maybe you guys feel differently about I mean, it. I think for us, we actually love it because you? we know kind of the power of the automation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, ah. for us, it's kind of enjoyable. But if you if you can't be asked to do it, um, you can assign an LFO to the automation and I suppose put it on a, a very long LFO and it'll change <laughs> the sound. Put it on that it's uh, a bit techy though. Like, <laughs> just stop right. being lazy. Yeah, yeah. I think that... <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, I guess that's right. I mean, I, I think uh, Andrew in his question at least was self-aware that it's like that there is that lazy element but i i i mention it and i i bring his comment up because i think there is a certain mentality with people that have the like you can hear you can hear the advice of like you guys saying automate 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 and you'll go like yeah no that's true but then when you're in the moment when you're actually making music and it's like you've made a bass line that you you like or a, or a melody or something and it's like oh but now i gotta go and spend 45 minutes just trying things you know it's like it's a lot of trial and error especially in the beginning when you're finding out what to automate right because yeah saying yeah. automate is one thing but what do you automate and i guess in that regard yeah. what what are your what like what are your sort of go-to automation controls that you like to octaves octave is a massive one and the actual octave of the oscillator yeah so if it's a or b usually you want to just do one but you can do both if you want but i just use one of the automations on that um filter frequency as well yeah, it's massive yeah. huge that one and i guess it does somewhat depend on what kind of combination of um automations you've got going on because they kind of all play off each other um so I mean, if you scroll down a little bit, you can probably see that you've yeah. got a few different yeah. things going on. And then you've got stuff like, um, oh yeah, reverb, like your reverb yeah. automations. So you you got automating up at the end of bars, um, more reverb automation. Here's, oh, so here's a, these are pulverizer automations here. So the rate of the tremolo of the of the. Um, so you can listen if you listen to the bass now when I press play, you, you can hear it changing. Speed so up. basically the serum has got an lfo on there yep. and then we put an lfo on the pulverizer on top of the synth with the lfo so there's two lfos going on at the same time which uh -huh. gives it two rhythms so if you listen now you'll hear oh interesting yeah and, and i see if you've done you've used a curved automation curve on that as well to kind of yeah, make it a little of more of a i don't know if that's exponential or log yeah, like so one of those it's a bit more natural, isn't it? I think yeah. With the curve as well. But yeah, you can just see just automations everywhere. Um, it really with that is. That specific bass, I think, um, with the pulverizer, the sync isn't on, and that just means that it kind of, obviously, it kind of naturally slows down without kind of going from one A or one. Oh right, to 1A it's not like moving that. in so musical steps, right? Exactly, exactly that. Yeah. And that's you know, and to to my ear when I'm listening to that, the fact that it's it's actually more interesting to the ear to make it less like i guess musically relatable it's just kind of it really does feel like a like a slow motion effect or, of some kind where it's yeah, grinding yeah. to a halt rather than yeah. kind of happening in a way that you might you know um compose or quantize it um yeah andrew rothman he came back in he's redeeming himself with another comment he says <laughs> the producers are the ones who put in the work I sometimes can't be arsed, <laughs> but uh, the best the best producers are the ones who put in the work. So, uh, Andrew, sure. uh, we we all agree on that one, and I think that is you know I mean all you have to do really is look at your sequencer before you even hear the song. You just look at that sequencer and all that automation, and you go, okay, <laughs> yeah. these guys put in the work and are still putting it because this is in development. So, I imagine more yeah. is yet to come. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I, I wonder if you mentioned there was a like a reverb automation. Um, is there an example of that we could take a look at? What you're doing? You said you put it at the yeah. end of phrases. So, so basically, this is on the intro part of the tune, and basically, if you listen now, it, and it's rising towards the end. Oh, I see. Yeah.
Wow. And then wow. that kind of preempts the bass that comes in anyway on the drop. It kind of gives you a bit of familiarity with that bass before it's actually dropped properly. And what does that if we were if we were to unsolo that and listen to it in the context of the track, what does that little passage sound like? Okay, that's no problem. These dark days of a harsh effect. Oh I see. I sense signs that they can't detect. Tired eyes, cause the part they slept. Meet the maker of the architect. These dark days of That's cool. That is really cool. It's got a, a nice call response with the vocal um, going on there. That's really neat. Yeah, it's just a tease you in, just so the bass isn't just out of nowhere. Like when it drops, it isn't just like a, whoa, where's this just come from? Yeah, it's yeah. teasing it in, you're, you're easing the listener into it, even though they might not hear it per se, um, they might not pay attention to it, but it's. It's well, it's really got, is. you know, it's, it, when I heard it on its own, I was going to say it sort of sounds like the, the conch shell, you know, like the, or like the, like the horns that are blown by armies, like, you know, the sort of medieval <laughs> yeah, armies yeah, as they're yeah, yeah. getting ready to attack. <laughs> and, and when you hear it um, in the context of the song, that's even stronger. It's like, you know, shit's about to happen. It's like, oh man, yeah, here yeah. we go. And that, yeah, it, yeah. it really does kind of, the army of bass that's about to attack my ears yeah, yeah. is uh, <laughs> you hear it approaching with that sound. I think it's a really kind of yeah, cool definitely. look. There is a, a, a couple other comments going on here. Um, one of these, I'm going to bring it up because you guys are fellow Reason users and nerds and, um, and have reasons for doing certain things. Mimi says, Brown is such an ugly track color and I would love to know because we all, I have my own what I consider an ugly track color that I actually use, which actually you guys have it on bus one. I think that's called plum or no, lavender I can't remember, or it's like that hot pink color though, whatever they call that color in reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. use that as my like I need to get my attention so I'm going to make it a color that I don't love yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you have a similar thing, is brown your go to like, I don't know No, no basically, just, just random ba 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 basically when making music uh, at this stage when we just setting the track out it's just it's a big mess and then what i'll do is once i get to a stage where i'm happy with the song i'll bounce this whole song out of stems and then put them back into reason and then i'll group everything up into groups of like all all bass sounds all drums yeah. all blah 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 and i'll color code everything to specific um colors yep. so then when i'm looking around i know exactly like oh if it's a green that's a drum if it's a if it's a blue that's a bass but at the moment it's a big mess. Gotcha. Um, you could, and you could just say it's brown because it. That's know. how it was written in, probably. It, was, Simple as that. Yeah, yeah, it's probably it, what it, yeah, the, the, just the automatic color that it got. Yeah. The brown, yeah, the yeah, brown yeah. notes. I'm gonna bring up. Uh, I'm gonna bring up a comment. Uh, keeping me honest here, game physics in with a criticism. I'm gonna bring it up here for you, game physics. Quote: Send us a track and we'll listen together. Live, 95 minute stream, only four songs have been played from the Dropbox. Thought we'd be listening to the community's music way more. <laughs> Game physics, with that criticism in mind, I'm gonna, let's take a quick diversion here, guys. Let's take a listen to- okay. uh, Wap something on. Yeah, yeah let's, let's get a couple it. of these songs up here. Um, if, if Game Music's, uh, I wonder if Game Music's, one of these um, was a, like, mm. a, oh, I can't remember what it's called now, but it was like a, a what do you call that? Um, chip tune track that I thought was pretty cool. Um, if I knew if it said game music, I would play it. Um, but let's go ahead. I'll just bring up a couple of here. Uh, King of the Afro. We're going to oh, play like your that. track. I like that. I love that name. All right. Let's check this one out. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here, though. <laughs> This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do, do we? Do you guys recognize the language? I'm not. 
grabbing French, the language? I think. Is it French? Yeah, my guess is French. I think so. Can I, I, my I my French is, in the chat. is my maybe my worst language of all the languages <laughs> I don't speak. <laughs> oh no, it might be Arabic. Oh, yeah. Right, might be right. Oh, English now. It's great. Yeah, I mean, that's great. So this is, obviously, this is a, a world away from the kind of stuff you guys do, but if you yeah. were to, um, if you were to get approached by an artist like this and they wanted to get a sort of bass music remix of a track like this, would you guys, how, how might you approach something that has such a different vibe from what you do? I'd always... Um definitely focus on the vocals because that's like the lead thing in that um, track I suppose I um, find some elements of the track that I liked in the background um, and then obviously I wouldn't be able to keep the kind of core afro beat right but I definitely could use a bit of that as well just so there's a bit of familiarity gotcha. to the original beat gotcha um, so I and I, I realize I the artist this might the tune might be called King of the Afro or the artist um, or Real Junior. That might be the artist as well. So I want to yeah. make sure I, I mention I like the uh, the yeah. the artists uh, and so people can look them up and um, check that stuff out. Really great. Let's take a listen to another one, at least another one. We gotta we gotta keep uh, game physics happy here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everybody, I mean, it's true though. I I you know I'm I'm juggling um, all these. Uh, balls in the air at the same time and, and I do want to play these guys' music so uh, I'm glad he did remind me to, to jump back on this and listen uh, I'll just say to the audience I, I don't know I, maybe I dare not promise this because this, we've already been on for an hour and 45 minutes but I might just stay on and play more tracks until we feel we've gotten our, our fill after I've finished up with guests as well so uh, you know don't rule it out uh, we might we'll go through more of these but here let's check out this one this is called Only You Carly Productions uh, Mar Marthy or Marty Stanislav Ferko. Uh seems like the artist name might be Carly. So I'm gonna jump into about the one minute mark and let's just take a listen to what we got going. Oops. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is one we should check in with the uh, with the party crew over in Stockholm because I I bet they're uh, I bet they're dancing. Yeah. Let's see how they're going. <laughs> I like There's that. There's one word for that. It's happy. Happy. That EDM. I mean, right? So happy. Wait, is this the same track? Yeah. Oh, okay. It like switched over into like this. I bet you it's gonna, maybe it's gonna go back into a like big EDM drop. Of course, yeah. here we go. Yeah, there we go. You don't need to check in with the party crew. I'm here. I'm I know you guys. Yeah, you guys. We're all the party crew. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, that's great. That is great. I'm gonna say hi to a familiar face, DJ Afro, my uh, my favorite Moroccan producer. Uh, oh, Moroccan. Coming in. Ah. So it was a bit of French, and I suppose. Maybe oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing wonder, maybe a bit of both. I'm not sure. I don't think uh, DJ Afro. Let us know if you're the same one that did that. That track uh we played earlier i don't think but well guys so now i i'm curious the same question with this one so like this comes to you and someone says okay we've got this track it's like a pop edm uh super happy crossover is there a point uh, if they if they come to you and say we want a, a bass you know music remix of this do you guys go like um it, it would be our expert opinion that you should keep this happy because there's or can you make raw aggressive in your face but really yeah. happy yeah we've had a remix i think with a marshmallow that was pretty happy right yeah that was like a it was a pretty happy track and you work with it because we usually work in minor 
I'll, I'd say right. like 95 percent if not every track we've ever made is a minor yeah. minor key so we'd probably um i don't know if that one was though maybe in the remix that we actually we had to um do that i, I can't remember but we work we work with it we we do what we can and yeah usually we just kind of still implement the bass where we can and still make the drop kind of heavy as well right um, you kind of got to do your yeah you got to do what you got your sound yeah. is your sound you know um yeah, would you absolutely. ever take a song like this would you ever almost convert it to minor or is that kind of <laughs> I, would, I, is, I would like to do that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah 100 yeah, um, chris reed says how can you not smile at this track i agree it was a really really uplifting track someone else um earlier in the comments mentioned it had sort of avici vibes i think that's probably absolutely. true you avici, know martin garrix yeah yeah sure. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, almost got who was um oh David Guetta. He had that what was that album he put out? It's a number of years ago now. It's got the red cover. Um, I can't remember, no. but it's like the one where he did duets with everybody. See, it was on it, and um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. and all the uh, who else? Um, Nicki Minaj had a track on it. They, yeah. they were, that was at a certain time when this was very much like a trending kind of thing to to make this like very yeah. happy kind of pop influenced stuff. So, um, cool. Let's listen to one more and then we're going to jump back into your track for a second here. Um, let's take a look at, uh, I'm doing this kind of random cause I want to just, uh, move around in the list here alphabetically. So let's take a look to digital crates home. Seth Barmash. <laughs> Really nice vocalist on this. Really, yeah. You know. say somebody else uh pointed out in the comment section they said uh they haven't you know i'm pulling up these songs uh on, on the random and they said i haven't heard a bad one yet and i gotta say the same thing i mean like i i love when we do these on the streams where we we have people send in their songs because uh, i really get like this moment of like i get this moment where i'm proud to be a member of the reason community because we're all doing cool shit and it's all different but it's all yeah. you know if I if All I'm in a spectrum of music here, yeah, so, and just to give props to everybody, stuff, underground, yeah, you know, we got everything. But all really talented, yeah. really, you know, Absolutely. like here, Patty, Patty Free Thinker, really great track. I agree. Um, Joe Sweeney says this is top shelf mixing production. I'm in awe. I mean, it's all it's really polished, really, really, really great. Um, so yeah, uh, well done, Digital Crates. The song is called Home. I don't know if it's on uh, the Spotify's or not, but I'm sure if people want to. Uh, look up digital crates on Spotify or SoundCloud. Um, if you like this, check out more of this for sure. Um, let's see. I don't know what this means. Beatrix, I don't even mean this is possible to send a track. Oh, um, I, you know what, Beatrix, by this point, no. I, I got 600 song submissions um, and there's no possible <laughs> really? way. Yeah, there is no possible way that I'm going to be able to... Uh, to run all 600 um i've run how many i've done now one two three four five hey, look, you can get through you can get through a bit more if you want i'm gonna like, get through one or two uh, more i don't, uh, I don't yeah mind. we're in there Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um <laughs> i will uh, I, I will be <laughs> no no i will be playing them uh, throughout the stream though um but uh you know it's interesting so 
Six hundred. I know. Six hundred. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, and this is uh, some advice for the the people that did submit them. Let me. I'm going to give you a um, song submission piece of advice. If you submitted twelve songs to that folder, it did not work <laughs> in your favor. <laughs> There weren't there weren't many right. of you. A lot of people a lot of people submitted <laughs> their song. Like here is my song, that, you know. But there was a couple people that um, they they were. I want to say they were. I'm gonna give them the best intention. They were so proud of their music. They wanted me yep. to hear all of it. They wanted 100%. all of us to hear all of it. Um, and they would send me. I got stuff in that folder that was like YouTube videos showing how people made their track. I got uh, you know electronic press kits with bios and. <laughs> you know photos headshots. yeah headshots yeah I, all that stuff showed up in that folder and um i applaud i applaud you for your uh yeah. your effort the hustle <laughs> but yeah um i just as a a word of advice to people on these things when there are submissions and this is not i'm not talking about my live stream i'm talking about just things in general in life whether that's a a remix contest or a a radio you're submitting songs to the radio or whatever uh less is more on your you know like choose your song that you think is your best song and that's going to always uh, work better in your favor than you know sending someone 12 or 10 or 9 or 20 songs or whatever um but yeah really great stuff that's popped in you know what let's listen to one more guys and then we'll jump yeah, back yeah, into your song um let's listen to lift your feet off the ground by paul crispin and let's see here i'll drop that in here here it is. Lift your feet off the ground. Oh, this is an eight-minute track. So I'm going to jump. Uh, I'll go two minutes in. We'll just see what's eight happening minutes. by two minutes. Mm. It's a whole different vibe. Yeah. Oh. A bit like Dub House, I guess. Yeah. I got thrown at first because of the acoustic guitar, and I thought it was going in one a different direction. And now that the synths have come in, I'm it's going somewhere else. Give me those Ibiza after party vibes. Yes. Killer. Have you guys ever done sets down in at a, Ibiza? Not yet. Hopefully now. next year. Next year. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, fingers crossed. I used to live in the UK. Um, this is 20 years ago now, but um, as a kid from the u.s that moved over to the uk uh, abitha wasn't yet really a thing in the u.s edm was still yet to really hit in a big way in the u.s uh, back then and um there used to be a tv show on whatever it was sky probably um and it was after what do you guys call it, the watershed like is it like 9 p.m or something like when you can do more risque television oh yeah, stuff. yeah 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 it's quite wild back then so well. there was some yeah there was a show back then and it was like yeah, all about the the summer abitha scene like reality tv <laughs> and it looked it looked crazy it definitely looked like yeah. a crazy that's what i don't know if i assume they still do it but that's what just, was back when the, just so you know they um the tv's got a little bit more pc now oh have time. they really uh, yeah in the oh. 2000s the noughties was a very naughty age for yeah the, it really uh, it really, it really we, was <laughs> i mean they had yeah, I, I think it was when they were just starting out this trend of doing these um it was like a soap party thing they would do down in a, in Ibiza. I don't know if they oh, still do those. Phone party. Phone, yeah, yeah, phone yeah, party. Yeah. yeah, the phone parties. So, and oh, uh, soap eyes. party. <laughs> yeah. That hurt your eyes, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I'm going to pull up this track again. But you're right. This does have nice, like, chill, down tempo. Yeah, absolutely. Can't knock it. And I can also see how it's eight, um, eight minutes long. I know how these, these kind of tracks transcend. I yeah, exactly you kind of just you just get in the flow, you know. Um, oh, hey, Paul's in the Paul is in the uh, comment section here. Says thanks for playing my track. Yes. You got it, Paul. We're enjoying it very much. Even yeah, though we're yeah. talking over it, we're still taking it in. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's great. Ask Paul what genre he thinks this is. I, I'm, yeah, I'm that's a, on Dub House, but oh, that's a great question. Know. Yeah, Paul, what what do you classify the genre as um, that you've got going on here? Chilled House. Uh, Paul Paul Ortiz says I've only just started doing chill stuff in Reason. Um, nice to see you in the comments there, Paul. Um, we know Paul. Um, Mimi, I had some fun in Ibiza. Uh, there you go. 
<laughs> so, um, <laughs> I, went, I went for the first time last year not to play, but just uh, to go there. And let me tell you, it's a fun place. Does it live up to the <laughs> reputation? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, DJ Tenzo coming in uh, with Paul's track with a bunch of fire emojis. I agree, DJ Tenzo. It is a, it's a nice one for sure. Nice job, Paul from Benjamin. Lots of love yeah. coming in, in the chat. Cool. Um, well, listen, let's, okay, now I'm going to jump back now. I'm going to fade this one down. Let's just poke around your track a little bit more. And then, and then guys, I can't believe the time. I've been on for two hours and I've still got people waiting in the wings to talk. <laughs> God. Oh my yeah, God. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we did make it. It's such, it is such a triumph that you guys made it on the stream uh, because it, there was a, I won't lie, there was a period of time where it was looking uh, like it might not happen and we, we pulled me. it. So. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was I was nervous so myself. <laughs> we got it though. We did it. Um, let's take a look. I'm going to pop up uh, back to reason here. And um, what else? Uh, is there anything else we uh, fun that we could poke around and look we, at? Um, definitely do like, I suppose, the difference between the first drop and the second drop yeah. just in, in the oh, right. one. Yeah. Um, well, well, there isn't really that much of a difference at the uh, moment. Is I haven't got all the portal and stuff on. I'm trying oh, to think true. of something interesting. Um, so, um, what can we look at what's interesting? Um, here we go, something that's interesting. So, when we were talking about noise earlier on. Yeah. And this is what I mean about noise. So, what I've created in Serum is hi-hats using noise so i've got as you can see here now on hats and hats copy 2 they're two separate serum patches and one's hard pan left one's hard pan right and so you can hear now what i've done so that's one rhythm and i've got this rhythm for the right side Oh, okay. But together, you've got a really wide stereo hi hat made purely out of noise. And as you can see, you know what I love about this. There is a compressor. Yeah, what well, on what's that? Sorry. I said what I love about this is that um, okay. So there's, I have a personal crusade against. Are you familiar with this thing called the Haas effect? Yeah. Okay. I have a personal crusade. If I could, if I could achieve one thing in this world, it would make people work on alternatives to the Haas effect because because it doesn't work. It <laughs> creates phase problems. It, yeah, it doesn't yeah, sum yeah. to mono. It's it's a it's yes. It makes something sound wide until you're in any other listening environment other than your studio, and then it sounds like shit or Awful. or you know yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so what yeah. I love, you guys are, are right, what you're doing here is a perfect example creating of creating your own, yeah. Creating your own wideness, but not through just a little delay, it but by actually creating a different pattern so you still get the stereo field, but you could sum that to mono and it would totally work and it you could you could play it on an Amazon Echo and it would totally work, you know. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. That's literally why why I did it. That's why I did it. Yeah. <laughs> literally um, spot on. And what, well, what else you can do, um, if you want to recreate, if you want to get a wider signal, what I tend to do is, um, if you hard pan, so here's an example now, if you want to make something wide, these are some rides, uh, that have, and this is a great tip for really wide uh, rides. So this is two different ride symbols, one hard pan left, one pan, uh, hard pan right. And you got really wide rides, yeah. and that's just this this ride and this one, right? And they're two different rides, and then I've just put them through a bus, processed them together, so they sound a bit more together. Right. But they're two different sounds, so they won't. There's no phasing, and you still got a really wide signal for the rides. That's a it's a great tip for me. I uh, yeah, that's great. I use that often. I'm going to bring up a um, a comment. Sometimes the, I, these there's comments that are dropped in that I don't know if they mean for them to be thrown up on screen, but but I'm going to bring it up because I fear no comment. Uh, Vishesh says this is a reason stream. Why are we playing serum? 
<laughs> and <laughs> I I understand people who think that way, but I also you know why why we're playing Serum because Reason Studios allowed for Serum to be loaded into Reason. It's a <laughs> it's a part yeah. of the music making process, and so you know if. I, I have always been of the belief, and I inherited this, I learned this from the Reason Studios. I mean, when I, going back to when Reason Studios was called Propellerhead, when I first joined and started working with yeah. the company, there is this very, like, ingrained in our DNA mindset of, like, whatever helps you make the best music do that and we have always I'm going to speak a, a sort of for the company in the sense we have always been based around helping people do that you know we had technologies like rewire that was the early ways where you could connect reason to cubase and other uh, other sequencers now we have the reason rack plugin that lets you put reason into whatever daw you use and we've got vst plugins that you can load into reason and in fact just if anyone's tuning in late monday vst3 public release is dropping so that's when you'll be able to load your vst3 plugins we've always it's not a walled garden it's not we're not territorial about that stuff so when i see um, a Reason DAW user like you guys, and I see you've got Fab Filter there, and you've got Serum and stuff. It's like, yeah, cool, great, and I, I hope it's working great for you. <laughs> like, I don't, yeah, 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 you know, uh, there are there are certain people that are very uh, loyal to Reason devices. That's great, um, but you know, I, I I've never felt the need to be territorial about uh, the tools we all use to make music. In the same way that you know, I've got a, a Fender guitar and a Gibson guitar and. And some days I'm one's yeah, working for absolutely. me, and you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah, I think I mean we did use obviously we use pulverizing the main bass as well. Like it's that's I think I can speak for many producers who use Reason with other VSTs as well. Is that pulverizer still kind of stands um, as a, a a really good rack extension to use with other other VSTs really because of the sync because of the LFO elements. Right. In there. Actually, the distortion in there is really good as well. I just, yeah, I'm a big fan of um, using both in sync, really. I mean, absolutely. And that's stuff that we hear from people. When the uh, Certainly when the Reason Rack plugin came out, there was a lot of guys who uh, had used Reason for whatever reason they, you know, their work took them into Pro Tools more often or live or, or whatever. And so when the Reason Rack plugin came out, all of a sudden we started getting these messages where they were, they were like, oh my God, I've got Scream 4 back. I'm putting it on everything <laughs> yeah. now, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and Scream as well, yeah. Yeah. Great, great distortion. Yeah. So uh, so that makes sense. And, and Pulverizer, absolutely, oh. you know, you get, uh, you get a, its own unique flavored distortion, but you also get, like you say, all of the tremor i think they call it tremor settings on there the yeah, lfo tremor, yeah. stuff um yeah so well guys um listen should we we're gonna listen let's listen to another track here and then i'm gonna jump over to to my green room where i've got some other people uh, to to give some love to as well so let me um let's throw up another track we'll listen to it and then i'm gonna um say some, some goodbyes and some thank yous with you guys for joining us here i Sounds good. No problem. I, I'll, let's I'll get pre a bang on. <laughs> let's, let's get, get a, a bang on. Yeah. Get a bang on. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up a couple here, and we'll find. Hopefully, we can find a banger. I, I wish, I wish they were categorized as like, genre oh, or one, banger. Yeah. Or, <laughs> it would be good on a bass line. Banger. Let's see. You know, well, here's what we'll do. We'll play a game. I'm gonna read you titles. Let's see if oh, you yes. can predict a banger. Based on the I title alone, can you predict oh, that the banger? Oh, this is so scary as well. Because <laughs> yeah, they're, they're watching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that none of these are bangers, by the way. I mean, like, no, I no, no, no. heavy, right? We yeah, mean you heavy. mean you want something heavy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here, so I'm going to read titles. I'll, here's what I'll do. I'm just going to read down a list of titles and which stop me when you think we're on a banger, okay? Okay. So, okay. love it, kill it. Oh, Mach- I mean. <laughs> it's already tough, right? Machine God. Uh, Manya. Melanome Freestyle. Namajira. Probably not. <laughs> Only You. Perfect Imperfection. Mm. Running Out of Time. Silly Who Man. <laughs> uh, Stalker, Stalker Adriana. Uh, mm, Pterodactyl Lead. Uh, time Traveler. <laughs> Vitamin dust. I don't know, guys. God, Let's get I, time traveler on. Yeah, time, time traveler. traveler. Time we'll traveler. Okay, Let's, time traveler. Let's do time traveler. Who's that by? Uh, let me <laughs> take a look here. Hang on. 
Uh, I gotta first get the. Where's my app? Where the hell did my app go? <laughs> Some of the names are insane. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> who, silly who man? That's written the way. You, <laughs> have you seen the way people? Can we talk? listen to that one anyway? We, we, we got. You're right. After. Yeah, that's true. We got to put on silly who man as well. Um, okay, let me <laughs> drag that one down here. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with silly who man. Uh, this is by an artist. Only goes by the name Josh. So, you know, you got <laughs> Cher, Madonna, and Josh. Um, all one name artists. All right, let's take a listen. This is Silly Who Man. <laughs> so far, it's living up to it. Yeah, yeah. Silly Who Man. Silly Who Man. All right, we're gonna give this one more four bar, and we might jump ahead if it if it's a slow build. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 I love I love that scene. Nah, this is I like this actually. It's good little. Yeah, I like this. I wasn't sure at the beginning, but I really actually rate. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of pulled into a little like. Yeah, it's yeah, saying yeah. It's something. It's taking me somewhere. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Kind of like a Fatima Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, I was wondering about that yeah. train. I've been trying to remember that for ages. Oh, there you go. It is like Fatima it really Yamaha. Is, it is yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, all right. Let's jump over. Let's take a listen to the one that you selected. You predicted this might be a banger based on the title of Time Traveler. Uh, dream <laughs> radio version. Radio version already. I'm worried that it oh, might not be a banger. Radio, radio version. version. Does, does, probably, does that, yeah. that might suggest pop? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I think it does. But Here we'll is, see. Maybe it's a banger pop. Could be banger pop. Let's check it out. Time let's Traveler. See. It's a banger! You did it! It's a banger! <laughs> <laughs> well chosen! <laughs> trancy, very trancy. Oh man, we should see. It. I'm gonna I'm gonna check in with the uh, the party crew over in Stockholm too. I bet they're just, <laughs> they're lifting, it, raising hey, the hey. roof. Over. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, whoa! I wish I could see what y'all see. Man. I can't see the party crew in Stockholm. It is, it is a party. I love it. All right, coming back to you guys. Well, guys, listen, I'm going to leave this one playing for a little bit here while I, while I say some thank yous and stuff. I, I am so, I, I, I'm so grateful to you for fighting through rail <laughs> strikes and, and snow and ice and fire i mean it's like the whole <laughs> all the four horsemen of the apocalypse you know you you fought through Absolutely. it all to make That's what it what we do for you ryan <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i so appreciate it and it's been so fun having you on here and listen we what we really should do is we should um do a, a, a live stream just a dedicated us you know gentlemen's club live stream yeah absolutely. Um, in yeah. the new year so let's like yeah. let's both let's put that on our our agenda with a, a tbd date for that yeah 100 yes. yes, that yes. would be super fun and um i hope you guys are you uh you got some more time in that studio are you gonna do a little bit of work and uh get down to yeah we could probably do a follow-up of where the tune is now to where it goes in about a month and a half oh right probably on yeah released by then maybe Oh, that'd be I interesting. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got that another three hours in the studio, so make the most of it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, cool. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna play out a little more of this song, but I'm going to say goodbye to you guys, and then I'm going to be jumping over. We've got Carl Carlson here, guys. You've seen him on our channel. I'm going to bring him on. We're going to talk for a little bit, too. 
So, Gentlemen's Club, a pleasure to hang Thank with you. Thank you for us. Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank you. I will see you again soon, I'm sure. Yes. Have a good night, Ryan. See you soon. I'm going to listen to a little bit more of this. I love that they they picked a banger. They, these guys know what they're doing. They I, I gave them titles only, and they you know they took they didn't jump on an early one. They waited. I read off whatever twenty or twenty five of them, and they went for it. Time traveler, look at this. <laughs> you know. You know what you guys can't see here? It's the Gentlemen's Club are still hanging in the in the waiting room. They're still dancing. I mean, heck, I'm bringing them back. Look, they're still there. They're still going. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, well, um, now I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, behind the scenes stuff here, and I see if uh, Carl. Hopefully, Carl's still around. Let's see how Carl's doing. Carl is still there. Um, so that's good. And I'm seeing some other people. Let me just manage, see if I can manage my green room a little bit here. Bear with me, guys. Okay, I think that's all okay. Carl, I'm gonna try and bring you in here. Let's see how this goes. Carl, you've made it. You're on the stream, how you doing? I'm doing good, I'm a bit warm. How You're are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. What do you think of this one here? Is this your is this your vibe here? Oh wait, it just ended. It is. I was gonna say that's a perfect uh, lead in to talking to me because <laughs> trans music. That was my. That was the thing that got me into reason in the first place. Is that right? Is that right? That well, is right. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't fault people if they thought that the Beastie Boys got you into reason because uh, you've got <laughs> some, you've got this awesome fisheye lens. I love it. Um, <laughs> and uh, oh, look, you're getting some love here from the official Reason Studios uh, channel, Carl. Yes. Um, oh, and, and not even the official. Uh, Stephen up here is saying Carl with a with an O. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, I, I promised Stephen to give him a shout out. Oh, shout away then. With a, with, with a good proper oh. <laughs> it's my it's my friends from other countries that are so jealous about the letter O that we have in Sweden. Oh, you know the letter O is a good one. And if people don't yeah. know, um, yeah, Sweden has three letters that we don't have in the English alphabet. Two of them I would call letter A's, but they're obviously not. They're different letters. But it's an A with a circle on it yeah. and an A with two dots on it. And they, uh, yeah. the, the A with a circle makes the O sound, which is yeah, not to be confused o. with the O sound. O and O and O are three different sounds in the Swedish language. So, Yeah. Uh, and that, Carl. We are I'm, very complex people. Yeah. I was going to say, this is why I will never be perfect in Swedish because I can't hear the difference between... O, O, and O very well in spoken language, nor can I hear the hardest one to me is uh, E, E, and E. Like, I think I'm, you did it pretty good. I, yeah, yeah but, but hearing them in life. So if people don't realize, that's uh, three different letters. That's I, E, and Y are E, E, and E. And uh, it, it just reminds you know, me... You, yeah, go ahead. If if you want to be up for a challenge, I, I'm doing a Japanese Duolingo now. Oh, okay. That that is some. I to me, imagine. at least, that is some some serious headaches. Sometimes I could I could imagine. I could absolutely imagine. Well, listen, Carl. I am. I'm so glad you're here. I'm two hours and 15 minutes into a stream that I didn't know if it was going to go over an hour and I didn't know what was going to happen <laughs> when I started the stream because I was losing guests left and right to COVID and flu and rail strikes and fires. And, uh, and now here we are, we're deep into the stream and you've hung on so valiantly in the green room. So I thank yeah. you for, for sticking around. Um, yeah, my mullet wine is, is uh, finished by now, but <laughs> oh, have I caught you on the on the drunk end of the evening now? <laughs> no, it was it was uh, non-alcoholic because it's a weekday. Of course, gotta be. Yeah, gotta be yeah. Uh, professional. Well, so people, uh, people, I, I, you know, 
I don't have to give you quite as much of an introduction as I would have in any other, um, you know, a year ago or something, because uh, I think some people watching are, are recognizing you now as Carl, who is now on our channel and making videos on our are channel. You? So, um, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, some people want to mm -hmm. know, Carl, why the fish eye they're asking? Because it's cool, man. That's why. DJ yeah. Mark. Because it's cool. <laughs> Dan, and also because okay. uh, I want to, I want to keep this retro profile. Ab absolutely. If I had the ability, actually I do. If I, Fucked uh, with the uh, with the menu settings. I could go to a fisheye on my camera, but I I won't I won't mess with it. Um, but you make me want to. You make when I see it, it makes me want to jump into that cool little retro vibe. Yeah. Um, but um, let's see. Oh, people are talking about languages. Cantonese. If you really want to stretch your linguistic brain, absolutely. David Henerato is in the uh, chat. We're going to be bringing him on as well. He's uh, he says he's your teammate in support. So maybe that's he a is. good a good segue into us this kind of introducing people to who you are within reason historically your role and kind of this new thing that you're you're doing as well on the channel so you're yeah just like yeah, just like oscar uh, that we were on earlier uh, i started off with reason 2.5 back back when it came in a box and look at that <laughs> what do we got here there you go Whoa! Uh, that's so, the two two point five box. That's the two point five box that on the I, side, that's my first version of Reason. Is there stuff on the side that says like new, brand new in Reason? Does it like is it like NMXT? yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, there you go. I think I think Malmstrom and RV seven thousand was the new big things. I believe that is anyway. True. Um, this was about in two thousand four, I think. And uh, I got it because this trans producer that I listened to at the time, he had he did a demo song for it. Yeah. So that was my way in, speaking of trans. Anyway, and then in like 2013, I started to work at the supports department. Right. Um, and this recent year, I started to make uh, some, some YouTube tutorials as well. Now, I've known you, um, you know, when I'm over there, I, I now in this post pandemic world i haven't been there in literally years which is crazy i haven't been to stockholm in uh three years i think um, which we're going to we're going to fix that in the new year but um but prior to that you know i'd pop over to the office and i see everyone and, and get to know all you guys over in the stockholm office and the chatter that i heard about <laughs> carl carson in our support department i learned two things about you before i met you in person thing number one was you're a really talented producer who uh you're you're very much a student of production you 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 were building your skill by way of studying and and learning and and emulating and, and doing that kind of thing and that was something people told me that you were really you huh. de developed a quite a good style by sort of being a a student of max martin you know as it were um not not literally a student but you know what i mean like not literally i yeah. wish <laughs> right, i wish right, right. but but the, when max you if you're in the chat hold yeah, at me yeah max if you're in the chat let us know what song you submitted and we'll play it on the stream <laughs> yeah but um that was thing number one thing number two was carl carson loves the retro loves sort of 90s retro yes. vibes and um I, so and now as someone who got started with reason in 2004 you're not um so separate from the 90s that it's a total throwback it's not like somebody who has an interest in the like the jazz swing in jazz 20s or something it's it's a an era you grew up in i guess well i think that's the thing um the this the exact period that i'm you know very interesting uh, interested in is the period when i started to dive into pop culture for the first time like when i got aware of what was going on in pop music at the time and that is about 1998 gotcha um yeah when i was nine years old that is the that is the formative i mean at least for my sake and and maybe you know guys chime in in the chat here and let us know what was the age when you sort of transitioned from being like I, I, you you weren't it's not the transition from kid to adulthood but it's like the transition from like just like i'm a kid and i play with toys and i watch cartoons to 
oh, I'm starting to develop interests in things that are more, I don't know what you call it, but it's where my love of music came from. Current. Right? No, current or, or like, yeah, more highbrow. I don't, I don't have the right word, but I know that that exact era then for me when I was around nine years old was when I literally was like transitioning away from like the kid that played with Star Wars toys to being the kid that was like skateboarding and playing guitar and getting into music and all that kind of stuff. Mm. It's a really mm. formative era. Um, so it makes sense that it would be the same for you as, as well. Um, the Vapors, they say, yeah, sixth grade. So yeah, I think that's around, uh, assuming you mean in the U.S., I think that's 10, maybe, about that. Um, maybe as late as 11, depending upon the year. Kill Hamster says 11. Yeah, so I, I think that's mm. not an uncommon thing. So when you were... When you got into music there in 98, so you're six years away from your introduction to reason um, at that at that point. Oh, yeah. Right? That's right. 98 yeah. to 2004. What was the thing, what was the moment that made you go from being someone who was, you know, at nine years old developing an interest in listening to this music, and then you become someone who's like, no, I want to make this music. What was that? What tipped you over that? No, I, I always knew. Like, even when I was six years old in kindergarten, I was starting bands. Like, we had these wooden sticks and would drum and stuff, like, stuff like <laughs> that. So I, I, I was at the radio show, like a local radio show when I was six years old. And they asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a rock star. So, right. so like, I, for some reason, I, I just always knew that music is what I want to do. And I can't really explain why and when it happened. Yeah. Well, that, that, I think that makes sense. I think, I think anyone, there was a study done where they actually showed that music, um, is a, it's not something you, you know, this whole nature nurture debate of like, are you born with a certain DNA, uh, like instinct that you love music or are you taught it? And they, they did a study where they showed, no, it's a taught thing. If you have someone in your life, could be a parent, a brother, sister, a neighbor, whatever, but someone early on in your life, if they share their love of music with you, then you develop a love for music of like a real oh. visceral, passionate love for music that is different than if you aren't. And I, and when I look at that, there's certain art forms. Painting is the one for me. I don't have a, passion for painting i can go to a museum i like it it's nice but it's different than when i listen to music and i'm just feeling that that art on a whole different level you know so um mm. yeah i but, but so I, I don't think i had like uh, like a mentor like my, no. my parents don't use music no i don't i until this day i don't really think i had a like a real mentor interesting interesting what um so you just sort of found it on your own via radio or what yeah, I listen to radio. I watch like MTV and stuff like that. Right. And right. of course, the, the the Max Martin music of the era was like the, my first really like when I started to decide what CDs I wanted to buy myself. That right. was like the early Backstreet Boy stuff. And stuff. Right. Show me love, so, Robin, and whatever. Yeah. Right. I think um, I think that was a bit too early. Like to, two to, yeah, yeah, it's ninety six or maybe or something. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody up in the comments said that early nineties music, they consider to be the best, uh, electronic dance music ever made. Um, I often wonder about that. I wonder if uh, like people have that opinion and, and I, uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. They may be right and you know, it's subjective, but I would, I would love to know how, if you literally put out an early nineties EDM track today, would it resonate with people? Would it work? Would people regard it as, or would it? My hunch is that it would sound a little thin and dated because we've come so far in our production mm. te techniques and trends and stuff, well, you know? I try to do that every day. That doesn't it. work. <laughs> yeah. When I, when, so, so I've started to work with this guy that mixes my, when, when I have like a more serious songs that I consider singles, I send off to this mixer. Uh, and I always reference like nighty stuff. Like I want it to sound exactly like this. I want this, this, this. And he's like, yeah, but today that sounds weak. If you compare it to like, you, you need to, to be able to put it on a playlist next to, and he uses like Drake as a reference. And if right. you do that with the mix you want, it's going to sound weak because nowadays we have much more bass. Yes. Uh, yes. So he, he, he constantly tries to explain this to me. Yeah. Um, 
it's a it's a tricky one and and I think that's true people probably can relate anyone who who does um you know hip hop production and there's a certain reverence people like oh I love like the early bomb squad type of you know public enemy hip hop or or maybe going even earlier back to you know uh to to cool herc or something you know oh I love that stuff oh you you can't get better than just an 808 and it's like yeah but like it you you can't if you were to do it in a modern context and you just did that, you would it would just be an homage. It would it would sound like a like an imitation of that era, but it, it wouldn't. You, you kind of have to incorporate the modern yeah. to some degree. Um, mm. Speaking of, yeah. should we um, should we check out? You've got I think you've got some stuff that you've done. Um, yeah, some fresh sh- from the oven. I need I need to take off this uh, sweater. It's too please hot. do and Listen. look at that. Oh. 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 <laughs> The old recent T-shirt that totally stole the show in my first video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the old school logo. Oh man. Yeah. Um. And 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 the, is it? Am I correctly seeing a necklace that is glowing, or is that just on the camera? It looks like it's glowing. Uh, it, it's not glowing right now. Oh, it okay. is glowing in the dark. That that is still also a relic from from my old trans days. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um. Yeah. Cool. So now okay. let's see. Let's so, uh. We're gonna figure out. We got to get you up on the uh, the screen share, right? Yeah, on, in Zoom. I am in Zoom. Yes. So you want to? Sh- are you? You're not sharing your screen yet. No. Should I? Yes. Okay. Share so screen. Share screen, and then you're gonna share reason. I can't do desktop. Right? Yeah, you can do desktop. That's fine. Yep. Huh? Share. Perfect. Coming in. Uh, and jump over to reason. And once I see it over there, I'm going to swap us over to the reason. Let's see if I do this. No, I'm going to do this. There we go. Titting. Cool. Um, now I got to, I just got to throw a couple of uh, comments up on the screen here. Uh, people Splanka, I need this shirt. Yeah. You know, people really do. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know where the whole community comes down on the logo switch. I love the new logo. I think a lot of people really like the new logo. Then there's other people that are staunch um, old school logo, uh, so like team team old logo. But what I love about the bo- having both of them now is like there's this cool like. I mean, I, it's like the same with sports teams where it's like it's always cool when they you've got the mm. new logo and then you can represent the old logo. And it's like it's yeah. your little, a little nod to like, uh, I'm, you know, like I've, I've been in the game Adidas for a while. Adidas Originals. Yes. Right. Right. I'm OG. You know, like a few years back, Instagram did like they had a secret option. You could change the Instagram icon on your phone. To really? The old logo. Yeah. We should do that in recent. Ooh. You should be able to have like secretly changed. There should Ooh. be like an option in here to change it to the old logo. I know Matthias is watching. Matthias, get yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. Matthias, fix it. Top, top when priority. You do, I can finally <laughs> start making music again. That's right. That's right. Scrap all other That's feature all requests. That's I need now. <laughs> this is an important one. It's an important one. And you now, spent cool. all that time making that fan. Yes, right. I know. Now that we got the fan out of the way, we can move on to the icon switching. It's yeah. uh, <laughs> perfect. All See, right. now, Carl, that's why so, you and I are not part of the uh, product decision making team <laughs> because we are. We would we yeah. would do all that fun stuff. Um, yeah. Let's. Uh, so I'm looking at your screen now, and what I'm immediately struck by is a whole lot of audio. Yes. So I tend to work a lot in audio because uh, I feel like I can be more creative with editing when I work in audio. I've started to work a bit more in MIDI lately because I've discovered this, um, uh, the one we call Mimic. Yes. I usually use a lot of grain as a sampler. Oh, right. But I've started right. to use Mimic instead. Who uh, else? Th- so throw it up in the I comments. Dive- other people, there's a, I know there's other people out there that like to use grain as a sampler. And there's other people that yeah. are right now going, Wait, well, I'm sorry, grain is a sampler? Grain's a synth. But oh, uh No, but let's if if we watch this, if 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 we can, if we have time, I can show you how I use grain to make like risers. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do Because that that's a thing I've been doing a lot lately. Sure, I'm sure people would love it. Okay, but let's check uh, out what you right. here. Okay, so this is a song not released. It's gonna be released sometimes in 2023, uh, for one of my projects. And 
it's not a single, it's more of an experimental album track. So, But I, I thought it would be funny to show because I think it um, illustrates some fun sound design. And uh, yeah, so the origin was that there's a song on a Radiohead album. The album is called OK Computer. The song I think is called Fit or Happier. And I really, really like the idea of that track. So I wanted to do something similar. The, the thing with that track is that they use uh, the Macintosh text to speech feature as their vocal for the okay. track. And I heard 1975 doing the same thing. So I wanted to reference that song. Gotcha. Uh, so I had this, uh, I wrote this lyric and I put it into text-to-speech and I sampled the entire one and I chopped it up a little bit. And at first I had this, let's let's listen to the vocals of people if, if people aren't really familiar with what that sounds like. It sounds like this. State of the time. I'm gonna live my best life. Do you hear that? Yeah. Cool. So uh, at first I tried to make it with like a, you know, standard, <laughs> some kind of beat like that, bass yep. and, and chords, but it really didn't work. So I decided to just make something super free form and just like glitchy sound designy. And we, and when I say we, I mean recent studio had just put out the Bvox um, vocoder. Yeah. So what I did was I just played some chords, looped that, as you can see here, and I ran a double of the vocal through the vocoder. That is, that and is as you can dark see, and mysterious. It, yeah, but as you can see, I also did some random format shift. Like, I just played it live, manually. Oh, I see. So together with the original vocal, sounds like this. Yeah? Yeah. Uh... But that doesn't really sound very interesting. So I also had just acquired this. This is a really, really great plugin that I encourage everyone to get because it's great. I've, uh, seen, I've seen this, yeah. Yeah. Every every uh, preset sounds amazing. Like it instantly creates magic when you put it on anything. Hmm. So I these are I didn't run this in change. These are like four different settings that I pass the vocoder vocal through and I printed it to a new track, bypassed this one, created a new one, and I ran the vocals for that one. So these four tracks, you can't see me pointing at the screen, but these four tracks are prints of these each. Gotcha. Okay. So and that created a lot of noise. Let's see if, if I just run it with this one on one time. State of the time. I'm gonna live my best life. I'm gonna do me. You hear what that does? Yeah, yeah. It glitch, glitches it out. Glitches it in a nice way, yeah. Yeah, so what I then needed to do was to chop out the parts I wanted to use from each take. Okay. Uh, and I also wanted it to progress, like it getting more and more intense throughout the song. Okay. So if we listen to it all together, it starts off fairly um, non-hysterical. Oh, sorry. I'm I mean, I can see, no, yeah, um, for people that are watching and want to kind of see what to look out for and what to listen to... Um, there's a lot of muted audio in the beginning, and then as we go, there's less and there's more and more audio getting unmuted here. So yeah, yeah. So this is me just chopping out and muting the parts I didn't want to use, and keeping the ones I wanted to use. And maybe at some point I did transfer up twelve or down twelve or so. But basically, at the beginning, it sounds like this. Take the time. 
I'm gonna live my best life. I'm gonna do me. I don't care at who's expense. Birds is a lifeline. Fish is in the ocean. Panthers, tigers. And you know, it progresses and progresses. So by the end, we are more in like this territory. I added this sub bass as well to make some even further impact to to the end of it. <laughs> This is not the mixed version, but I imagine, so once I was happy with it, I bounced these stems out into a new session and um, mixed it. And I think in that session I also uh, cut up the sub bass and faded it to be more like, just sounding like, because now you can hear it all the time. And I wanted it to just go with the vocals as if it was just like an, a lower octave to it. Yeah. So uh, if we only listen to the glitch tracks here, each they sound. And this one I didn't use very much, just here. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted just, that. Yeah. So, and when we put it together... And then we ended off with the nice... Good old error sound. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. Uh, I mean, this is, you know, a, mil a million things people could take from this for inspiration of things they could try. But maybe the, the headline thing for people that um, haven't messed around with BVX because they don't have a vocal they can use and stuff mm. is, is to not let your lack of uh, either confidence in your own singing or access to vocals um, or even microphone or sound card or any of those things, don't let that stop you from. Um, I mean, simple things like that text to speech can be the source for what you have now is this, you know, whatever there is 60 bar long exploration of, of mangling and chopping and stuff. So yeah, I think it's a fantastic people are, are wanting to hear, um, the, I, I, they're saying play the whole song. I don't know if they really mean the whole song, but maybe the whole song kind of with the full blend of all tracks. Is it, is this is still a, a track in progress or is this? Um, uh, this this particular session is not the fa finished one, but gotcha. the song is mixed and ready to be. Uh, I have a deadline on this album tomorrow, oh, but man. it's uh, you know since vinyl manufacturing times are like six months, it's yeah. not going to be released until the summer. So we're sending it off to be uh, printed to vinyl in a few weeks, gotcha. and then we're going to have to wait for the vinyls to come back. Is there, um, how easy would it be to, um, even if you just dropped it onto a, an audio track and solo that audio track here to just drop the, the full mix on for people to hear how the song turns out in the final form? Or is that, am I putting you on the spot to, to pre leak no, something I could, you don't want to release? But I, I, I think we could just open the, uh, we could just open the mix version oh, as yeah, well sure, because sure, sure. it's such a light track. One reason I chose this track to show it, show, uh, show is that it's also so few layers. My my computer can handle it oh, cool. while on a live stream. Let me tell you, breaking news here, Carl. You've made one sale already on that vinyl. Hook and Erickson, I'm buying that vinyl. So there you go. You yeah, just have to... cool. Thank you, Hawken. <laughs> just take some uh, pre-orders. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be out sometimes in July. Let's see. Where is it? It's called "Doing Me." It's a song about. 
how I think the self-love movement is moving towards a toxic place where you just uh, indulge without a guilty conscience. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Let's see what we got here. Um, I'm going to take a look at some... Uh... Please uh, do. While, while that opens, I'm take a look at a couple of comments here. And then after we listen to this, Carl, we're going to check out some more user submitted songs together. And then because we're, I'm, I'm rounding the corner on the three hour mark here and I'm not even close to the, we've got more people waiting in the wings and I've got more songs to play. And I promise yeah. people, uh, let me, I'm going to just throw this out to the uh, audience here. I promised them that I would also try and open up a public zoom call and just let anyone join that thing. And uh, right. I, you guys let me know if, if you guys watching are still wanting to try and do that. Um, I will do that. We'll call that the final act of this live stream. I'll just do that. I'll let ever, all the other guests uh, head off into their world and I'll hang out with you guys and, and chat. So you let me know in the comments if um, if that's a thing we want to do or if but after three and a half or four hours of live stream, you're all going to be like, no, no. You don't need to do that Zoom call, Ryan. We we've gotten our fill. <laughs> so yeah. you let us know. Okay, cool. I'm seeing your uh, song is open here. Um, yeah, way more, way more color coded and structured. I can tell this is the mix version. This is this is a uh, as good as I could do it replica of Jason Joshua's template because he he it showed his. Uh, for those who don't know, Jason Joshua is uh, one of the world's top mixing engineer, and he did. Um, like a video series on a service called Mix with the Masters, where he showed his tutorial uh, template. Okay. And I did my best to recreate that template in recent. So that's you no know, the color choices is based on that one and, okay. and all the stuff. So um, let's see how this sounds here. State of the time. I'm gonna live my best life. You can see I've chopped up the bass even more here. I don't care at whose expense. Birds of the rainforest, fishes in the ocean, panties, tigers. I don't care. I'm doing me. I'm happy. Successful. I'm skinny. Here's what I eat today. I get up early. Here's my morning routine. You could be as happy and successful as me If you make sure to follow the link below And hit that subscribe button Reality I have seen it draw my window Laughter I have heard tales of it You be The only thing that matters Luxury I deserve it. My work requires me to travel a lot. I'm not adjusting. I'm not cutting back. Someone needs to save the planet. But not me. I deserve this. I'm doing me. The criminal sins is a thing of the past. Yes, I do me, indulging in luxury. That's all that matters. Knowledge, community, compassion, experience. These are all things of the past. I subscribe to nearly updates on phones, laptops, cars, partners. I'll take a weekend in Paris if I'm feeling bored. I deserve this. I'm doing me. I don't care at what or who's expense. I'm doing me. Profit above anything. Win the race of life. Don't care about expenses. Someone else can pick up the tab. I deserve this. I'm doing me. I'm doing me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That is, I mean, that is an experience. That is, uh, that's more than a song. That is just like taking you 
It's like, I mean, that's the thing. It's it's like a, it's more of a statement than a song. Right, right, right. But it's um, uh, there's something I I I really like about this. And Carl, I say this as a, the utmost compliment. It is almost fatiguing to listen to because there's so much coming at you <laughs> that yeah. it's like that i i actually like on a but on like that's on a, also that that was that was a conscious choice because with yes. like social media and stuff yes. you are being fatigued by all the content yes. that is thrown at you and that's why we wanted to use the arrow shop at the end because yes. at some point we're just spiraling until the bubble needs to burst exactly Bam. and that's why that's why i say i mean it as an utmost compliment because i as a listener, I get that artistic intent of yours that 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 you're giving us almost this oral experience of the the fatigue of that sort of you know influencer mentality and that sort of yeah it just channel. like goes like because you always need to top what you did last time and that just raises the bar constantly until you hit the point where it's just no longer. Uh, sustainable doesn't even begin to describe it but you know what i mean i know what you mean yeah it's fantastic yeah. it's fantastic um okay listen carl let's take a listen to uh, a couple of these user songs and up on yeah should i stop sharing my screen oh, uh you can do that yeah you can stop sharing um okay, cool. i'm gonna throw up a comment here we've i've seen it a few times and i want to um i want to address it for you calvin calvin is saying ryan listen to calvin black Decide. I guess the song is called Decide. I don't think we've heard any hip hop yet. Um, you are correct. So far, we haven't really heard any hip hop, Calvin. Um, it's, these are coming up as luck of the draw uh, because they the song files don't mention their um, the genre. Wasn't so that I, song we played uh, to Olivia a hip hop song? Uh, hip hop is not my genre, so yeah, it's it, it was. I you could you could debate it, but um, but yeah, I think so. I think it would. It, you could have you could have put a a rap vocal on it for sure. Uh, but Calvin, I wanted to just say, I'm looking in the, I, I would be happy to play your song called Decide, but I'm not seeing it in the folders here. So I, I don't know um, if you could let me know in the comments exactly how you named it, because I'm searching these folders for Calvin and Decide, and I'm looking alphabetically for both in the C's and the D's, uh, and I'm not seeing it. And some people, when they dropped in their files, you know, they start with like track seven period, and then it'll have the title. So if you dropped your song in, um, and you you named it something other than Calvin or Decide in the title, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to play it. So, um, but in the meantime, let's jump into our um, let's jump into our folder here, and I'm gonna play. Ha have these people agreed to be given feedback? Or am, uh, am I going to step on someone's toes if I give them feedback? I don't know if they've agreed to be given feedback. If you mean, <laughs> if, like, are, I would say if you're unsure, uh, be kind. <laughs> don't. don't uh, uh, oh, I'm always kind. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think people sharing it just, I think primarily they want us to hear what they're doing. They're proud of it. Um, yep. And although I will, you know what? I do have one. I started when I was going through these, I created a folder called advice. Let me do that right now, actually. Um, I only ended up putting one track in there. Um, <laughs> is, th is that a folder of songs that you thought that these need some advice? Yes, yes. Um, oh, okay, that was it. <laughs> I was creating a folder because I was like, oh, I got to give people some tips. Um, but I ended up not coming across that many that actually needed this. Uh, but I wanted, this oh. is literally like, I, I want to give someone some help here um because they made a track um called be better um the vocal is coming from becklin music the artist i think is raffle oh man i'm gonna butcher this raffle raffle borzikowski i think that's how it would go here's the thing raffle um or raffle raffle however you say it um I flagged this one because your track is out of phase, and I, I and people don't um, may not hear this and recognize it. And I actually wanted to demonstrate. Boy, can I? Let me see if I can launch Reason and demonstrate this one while we're at it here. Um, this is a thing. As you're pressing vinyl, Carl, you know that uh, phase can be a real uh, enemy when it comes to literally pressing vinyl. It can cause the needle to skip, but also it can cause problems just when we're listening in a non-stereo environment. So. 
um, I heard this one and I just thought rather than just uh, pass by, uh, let's let's make this a teachable moment, Ruffle. Um, okay, so here, let me show you. I've got it loaded up in Reason. Hopefully this is going to play out to you guys. Let me just play a little bit of the song. Are you hearing that, Carl? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to play a little of the song. Now, I, I, and it may be Cougar Town, it may be Raphael, I don't know. But anyway, um, now, if we're all listening in headphones, any of us listening in headphones, if you're, if you're tuned in to recognize the sound of phase problems, then you're already hearing this. But it's hard to explain. When a mix is out of phase, it feels disturbing. It's like it's coming. It's not coming from the the normal stereo field. It's coming almost more like from this weird place inside your head. It's kind of a tough uh, thing to describe. But this one has it. And so watch, watch what happens. If I take this song and I sum it to mono, listen to all that we lose. Hang on, I'm gonna turn it up. And now I'm gonna go mono. Here we lost the whole song. I'm gonna go out of mono. That pad. We just lose that pad entirely. And uh, this is, I mentioned it earlier on the stream. This is me. I think what is happening is that pad is using a Haas effect. And I am uh, on a, a personal crusade to kill the Haas effect. So um, um, I wanted to I wanted to play your song because it's a nice song. Um, but if you ever, if anyone ever tried to play the song on AM radio or over a phone with just a single speaker or an Amazon Echo or um, any any. Bluetooth speaker that's a mono speaker, they're not going to hear that. This lovely pad, this is what they're going to hear. Instead of this. So that is uh, that is just a uh, a bit of advice there for you, uh, Raffle Borzakowski, but also for all people that... Um, um, but... Can, yes. Uh, the... the, the I don't think that, I mean, you are technically right about this. You're <laughs> are you completely gonna, right. Are you about to argue in, the, in, the, uh, in defense of phase cancellation? I am about to argue that <laughs> this is happening. Like people are doing this and they don't care. Okay. Especially, well, especially like I, I'm, because I am in the vaporwave scene. Yeah. And this is heavily happening in the wave wave scene as a part of the sound of the genre and i don't think like maybe it's just some people don't know what you know you're gonna get face cancellation when you put two facers on the master bus yeah but it also sound so it, some people and i've listened to some other like one of my favorite acts right now is a british band called two shell and if you mono their tracks, you you lose half of it. Yeah, I just I just think that many times it's not about not knowing about this; it's that they don't care, which could be fine. I guess that's fine. I mean, I can't argue. I can't argue with anyone who makes a conscious choice to do anything musically that they like. So, hundred percent correct there. That is true. If this is a conscious conscious choice, good. If it was not, fix it. Yeah, right, right. Um, v uh, Vishesh um, asks, Ryan, could you do a too long didn't read of the Haas effect again? Um, basically, all it is is you're delaying the left channel from the right channel by a, a, a certain number of milliseconds. It's a relatively, it can be literally single digit milliseconds. It could be 20 or 30 milliseconds. It's a lot of times dependent on the content that you're doing. But when you delay the left and right channel from each other, it creates a psychoacoustic effect that makes it feel more wide and stereo. Great. But um, the, the trap of that happens when you, when you do summit to mono, if you do care, um, when you do summit to mono, that you can, the, the same waveform now being slightly delayed, getting re summed together in a mono can actually cancel out some of the frequencies and you can end up with things like that where you, you literally... You go from 
this big pad under drums to being a mix that is just drums and this very faint thing in the background that's like, I wonder what that is. And it's a very different listening experience. So um, Haas Effect, Carl, I like I like that you are in defense of the Haas Effect because um, I, I'm not I'm not in defense necessarily. Well, I'm or, just or in defense of like I, there's a certain I, I I agree with you that there is almost a certain mentality in, in genres like vaporwave where it's like listen to it the right yeah. way. Don't listen to it the wrong way. If that's the problem, the problems your your shitty Bluetooth mono speaker. Listen to it the right way. Exactly. And then, <laughs> you know. And maybe maybe the effect of like your head bending a bit when listening in phones, headphones. Yeah. That's what you want. Okay. Right. So I'm not. In, I, I, I'm in favor of breaking the rules. Right. Right. That's what I'm in favor of. I I I think everyone's in agreement on that one for sure. Um, but uh, let's see. I'm just looking here. Um. Oh, Robotic Bean. Uh, hey, Robotic Bean. Um, says, Peak Haas Effect was Nine Inch Nails Broken. That's actually a good point. That is a, a good, if anyone wants to jump on Spotify and listen, that's a good example for sure. Um, but, okay, let's listen to now some other tracks. Uh, now that we got that one out of the way, um, I'm going to go to this folder here. And um, let's listen to, uh, oh, let's listen to this one. The title um, intrigued me when I was reading it out to gentlemen's club, love it, kill it version 4.1. I like, <laughs> I like that the uh, song has point releases. Uh, I hope that was a free update. If they, if they charged again for their, uh, version 4.1, I don't know. Um, sped up version. <laughs> that's right. Uh, this is, uh, it says, I think the mastered version by Angelo Columbo. So let's check this one out. All right, now I'm going to be the lone old guy here, but I just got to stop this. Matthias, Matthias of all people, brings up a comment. There's honestly not many ways left to listen in mono, so I'm not very careful with Haas. Matthias, you of all people, I thought you knew better. Look, when I shake, when I pound the table, it makes my camera shake. That's how I feel. <laughs> Matthias, there's not many ways left to listen to mono. Are you crazy? Have you ever been to any party anywhere where someone pulls out a Bluetooth speaker and it's a single thing? Get out of yeah, here with your my, my, mono. Come on, mono is everywhere. My Bluetooth speaker is actually stereo, even though it's Shh, like no, this. Don't, don't ruin my rebuttal, Carl. You're, I, I, had, a, I had a solid point. <laughs> you're, you're, making me, you're making Matthias look right, and I can't Okay, wait. okay. <laughs> Matthias, right is right. <laughs> okay, yes, there are, there are stereo Bluetooth speakers, but I'm just saying there's also, we, we encounter mono more often in our lives than we think we do. So, uh, really? and I'll also just say as a video guy, I'm just going to throw this one out there too. If you're making music and you ever want it to be uh, licensed and synced and used in television and film, that's also an issue mm. because if the track, the, the, the post-production guys, they have to think about mono, uh, because there's often times where films and TV get summed into mono. So it's, Mm, Matthias, I love you, Matthias. You're wrong. Okay, well, let's go back to listen to this one. I don't want to have a whole Haas effect debate all day. Great track, Angelo, Angelo Colombo. Despite the fact that we're we're debating uh, stereo and mono while listening to your track, it's a great vibe. Nice. Carl, let me ask you some uh, as a producer. Um, do you have any good tips and advice for how to find like vocalists to to work with and get onto your tracks? I'm imagining I don't know if this is true, but let's say Angelo was doing this track, um, and he didn't have a vocal and he wanted to put someone on this. What is there a good? Where do you go? Do you, you post online? I mean, generally Facebook or what? The, okay, so so this is my current this is my current uh, take on this. I've spent a lot of time looking for collaborators like 
reaching out to people that were perhaps a bit um, beyond my like what what I could reach out to they're too too good to work to me that because because obviously you want to work with people that are better than you right but that usually never works out because they don't respond that they don't really want to work with, with you because they also know that they're better than me <laughs> so uh, so what I think is start by looking like in your f- circle of friends that's gotcha. what, that's where I would start like instead of trying to to work with this musician that you know has been working with this and this great artist work with people around you and maybe in, and then you will grow together like maybe you're not all there yet but you will be yeah. and then just so so cuz it's way I feel like working with people that you are friends with yeah. makes for better results than working with a professional that you aren't friends That's with. That's a great point. That's a great point. All right, let's check out this vocal. Oh, wait. I came in right now. I'm going to back it up. Matthias brings up a great point. Um, he's agreeing with you, Carl, that uh, check with your contacts. And he says, even if the singer is a bit worse than someone who recorded splice vocals, um, it, it'll be uniquely yours. And let me tell you, like when I'm doing tutorial stuff, I'll go on splice and grab some vocals. And like, if I, if you ever want to write a song and you want your lyrics to be, ooh, baby, 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 I love you. Ooh, baby, baby, let's party all night. It's Great. Like the sample sources are great to find those. But if you ever want like just that one millimeter more depth in your vocals, Mm -hmm. they're hard. And I get it. I'm not, this isn't a critique of Splice or any other sample library. It's hard to write a song with lyrics that is just universally generically applicable to anyone making music. Um, But, you know, and it's also not to say that those, there aren't other vocals you can find out there. And in fact, I've found a couple in, in videos that I've done where you go like, okay, there, here's someone actually saying something, but, um, it's, it's hard. So Matthias is correct. Get your, your singer friend who may not be as, as good. will at least not mm. just go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to mm. be your baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, mm. um, all right. Now, Calvin, I am looking in this folder. I don't see it. Calvin, I'm looking for your song. I would love to play it. Um, regarding the one we listen to now it's hard to say i mean it's really hard to give any feedback when you don't know what the person that produced it were aiming for yes right right well i mean so ma- that that's maybe it sounds true. exactly what they wanted it to sound like and then it's perfect yeah and that may be i mean that sounds pretty polished to me i think it's pretty safe to say that that, yeah. that they're not looking for for you or i to be like well you know what you need to do is you need to fix this i think it's it's um it's a good tune it's a good vibe the vocals great yeah. i think there's a uh, not much uh that needs to be said about that um uh, people are trying to help Calvin here. It says if you uploaded it with a .tmp extension you can't play it that is true um Calvin if the the as far as I know the um the Dropbox is still uh active so drop it again in the Dropbox and call it something obvious in fact call it obvious <laughs> dot wave or dot mp3 and um um I'll I'll find it that way so I'll look in there again uh let me play another one with you here um Carl and then I'm gonna jump over because we've got uh, Rebecca as well that I want to get to uh, chat with her a little bit. I want to see Rebecca as well. Yeah, right? 
I've been waiting for Rebecca. I know. <laughs> and here we are three hours and four minutes into the stream and uh, we are yeah. still we are still going. So I'm I'm going to uh, I am going to be jumping over to her. Uh, in fact, uh, party crew, if party crew's uh, still in the house over there in Stockholm, um, <laughs> fell this, asleep by now. This will be, I know, this will be the heads up to uh, to get Rebecca in a pair of headphones, and I'll be coming over to her momentarily. Um, okay, but here, let's last one. You and I will play here, Carl. Sexy dreams, silk satin by Flower oh. Chili or Flower Child. I'm not quite sure on the spelling and pronunciation there, but let's check it out. Sexy dreams, silk satin. Sounds great. I sounded way too much like a radio DJ. Next up, we got Sexy Dreams, Silk Satin here on WSKU. Oh, that's nice, though. I'd love to know if that's um I think that must be a real basis playing on this because they're they're moving all around those changes in a really nice way. Carl, is this a style you've ever dabbled into, the sort of I don't know what you would call this kind of R and B, but like a, a poppier R and B. I don't know what they would call it, uh, but yeah, I would say the 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 uh, subject of the lyrics isn't really my territory. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Uh, I kind of want like more of a big beat style drum part like something fat boy slimish aha uh -huh, aha uh -huh. to complement the um, the bass line because i feel like the bass line is more like funky and i wanted something more like um gotcha I mean, it's a good groove. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm so curious about that bass because, like, if they're using something like Baseline Generator and oh, Re Reason Electric cool. Bass, if they're doing that, they're using it to great effect because it's really yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really playing can, all. Can, yeah. Is the producer in the stream? Can we get like a comment in the chat from? I haven't from the producer? seen um, if uh, I haven't seen him in the stream and he hasn't piped up yet that I'm aware of. Um, in fact, actually. Oh, featuring Flower Child, so that's probably the vocalist. TG18 might be the uh, the artist, TG-18. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. Um, Ashley Prince Washington says, we need some hip-hop. We're trying, <laughs> Ashley. I'm trying to get Calvin to re-upload his track because I know then we'll have a guaranteed hip-hop. I'm just uh, dipping into the tracks here and getting luck of the draw here. So um, mm. Yuhani coming in with a, he likes the drums as they are. So uh, that's a different, different Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a matter folks. of taste. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, someone says it's like a Basha sound. Uh, I'm not familiar with a Basha sound. Um, Me neither. No. Um, Natural Science says it's a little more jazzy. Yeah, it's got a nice mm. jazz. Hollow Sounds would call this hip hop R and B. Okay, so maybe that's maybe that's what you would call it. I'm not quite sure. Um, Blaze FM says reminds me of Daft Punk's "Something About Us." I'm trying to remember what song that is. 
Um, I'm terrible with something titles. It's from Discovery album. Yeah, I would assume it's probably, or it could be maybe something off of. Um, no, Random it's Access? from Discovery album. Oh, it is. Oh, you're you're you're. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big Daft Punk fan. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, well, cool. Um, Bosh, official Basha sound. There's another mention of Basha. Uh, educate us, guys. What is Basha? Carl and I can learn something new today. Um, Tom Neo, we need some I'm, drum and bass. I'm definitely going to Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Now, listen, Carl, I am going to jump over to Rebecca, who is uh, so patiently hanging out in the reason yeah. Stockholm party zone. Um, but I, uh, I really have had a, a nice you, time hanging out with you here. You will guaranteed not come back to me right so i, I can just move over to a couch and watch you on the screen instead you are you are officially dismissed from the world's longest reason live stream in history thank you for <laughs> having me it was a blast it was a blast i i really yeah. had a good time with you as well and guys you're going to be seeing more of carl on the reason studios channel for sure um because uh he's good at what he does he's fun and you guys all enjoy him so um he, he's a hit and uh we're gonna we're gonna do more with him for sure now, um, this next uh, guest I'm bringing on is uh, is Rebecca. I'm going to let Rebecca uh, introduce herself uh, largely, but we're going to, some of you, some of you maybe have seen Rebecca on our channel, but some of you, most of you probably have not because of uh, a, little, a little secret skunk works project that went on that uh, not everybody knows about. So I'm going to... Um, Gonna get her on here momentarily. Let's see how this goes. Rebecca, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? Well, first of all, I'm going to award you uh, both a gold star, a blue ribbon, and uh, a slice of apple pie as a congratulations for being the most patient guest. <laughs> I I had no idea when we started the stream that we would be three hours and fifteen minutes into the stream and still making the rounds to all the people that we have here to chat with and talk with so yeah who knew who, um, and who i've been knew? hanging out with these guys i, I also want to start with uh, apologizing on their behalf because uh they can't hear you I oh i see yes uh, right right but when when you introduce them in the beginning uh if there are still people here uh watching that were with us then um uh, they they asked me to apologize uh, for their social awkwardness um, <laughs> when being introduced. Yes. <clears throat> they, wow, it's what? like you've got live live studio audience there. That's really awesome. Yes. Uh, I um I have to say no. It was really fun uh, checking in with you guys while we've been playing these songs and you guys have been dancing and it was uh, exactly what I hoped for a this remote party going on uh, since I couldn't be there myself, but. Um, but let's let's chat a little bit about let's introduce you a little bit to like I said the majority of the reason community. You um, some people know you because you, we did this little we'll talk about it a little bit. But but you want to introduce yourself and the the music you do and maybe even uh, let people know where where they can find out more about you in the social handles and stuff. Sure. Yeah. And as you guys can hear, maybe see we still have the party going on behind us. So if it is still going. They, yeah, if they need to be shushed, you know. Yeah, we might. I'll, I'll sh keep an eye on the them comments. Shush in the chat. Yeah, yeah. In the ch if the chat tells me to shush them, then I'll tell you to shush them, and then we'll uh, we'll get a it'll be a shush chain. Cool. <laughs> but they'll probably read the chat though. But um, yeah, no. So I I've been using Reason for I think almost ten years, and um, originally I'm a musician and an artist, and I I play the guitar and I sing, and I have a, a solo project. Um, but when I got into producing, Reason was my first DAW, and I've just stuck to it. And I've tried, you know, Pro Tools and Logic and Ableton and everything, but Reason is my my go-to. Um, yeah. And you, um, I, I, forgive me for if I'm wrong about this, but uh, are you affiliated with? I'm going to butcher the pronunciation here because I don't actually even mm -hmm. know the words I'm saying. But there's this organization in Sweden, and they're called yeah. like V. The prem Dem Kambli, yes, yes. Say mm. that again. Say it again in Swedish when I when I don't put your. Vem kan bli producent? Yes. Are you are you part of the group? 
Uh, yeah, it's like a, a program for music producers to like a like a course basically. Gotcha. So um, uh, I did the course when it started back in, or like when I did it, it was back in 2019. I think it's been going maybe it's the seventh or eighth <laughs> year now. Okay, something's going on in the party section. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, call anyone out. Yes, uh, everyone's okay. I'm guessing um, that three hours into the stream, there's been some uh, some alcohol has been uh, ingested, I, and uh, <laughs> I can't take any responsibility. Um, but we're having a good time. But so um, you, but, but yeah. so you learned through that program, and then, um, and and I think that's that's great that there is a program like that. I think so many people, I myself, came through a, a program to learn. You know, there's certain things that courses like that will shortcut the learning process quite a bit where yeah. it may take you years of your own messing around to go oh that's how that's done mm. and suddenly you can kind of you know get, find the find the tips and tricks really easily through a, a course and a mentor program like that so that's yeah, great for sure and i think it was also a lot of just um having this group where you kind of push each other and give and get feedback and right just having that kind of community because it can be such a lonely process just sitting in your room and producing and <laughs> hating everything you do and then loving it and hating it and right know, so it was it was good to get out of your own head and just uh, do it together with other people in a like really nice and supportive environment. that's a that's a cool thing I, I that thing you mentioned of loving what you do and then hating what you do and then mm. <laughs> learning to love it again what a I mean that is such a a, a process that we all go through of yeah. Having to, it's hard. It's it's a hard, especially when you're just starting out. When you know that the thing you're doing isn't as good as you want it to be yet, and yeah, like how sure. you know, trying to get over that hump of of self love and self acceptance and and self encouragement. So absolutely, I think any any time that's a great tip. Even if people aren't part of an official program, that's a great tip to tell people like community is the answer to that inner critic you know if you play it for mm -hmm. other people you'll get the support and you'll get encouragement and things that you might be yeah. lacking when you're feeling unsure of yourself you know yeah for sure and also it's something that you can kind of learn how to do because the first times that you showcase something especially when things aren't finished you're always going to feel really self-confident and really like nervous and anxious but the more you do it um the less nervous or like the less nerve-wracking it usually tends to be gotcha I think. and well, also like loving and hating uh the the stuff like while you're working on it that also kind of i don't know for me the process always looks sort of the same but the more i've been working the more um the more safe that feels or like it, it just feels natural like a natural part of the process Right, and right. It's okay. It's yeah. not. It's not like the end of the world. Right. Well, it's a. This is a, um, a, a perfect segue for us to uh, talk a little bit about something that I, I said was sort of this little secret skunk works project that happened on our YouTube channel that most people probably don't know about, but you obviously know a lot about because you were at the at the forefront of it, and and that is something that we called um, the Boost Camp, and it was mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could tell people a little bit about. The first boost camp that we did um, as a, as I guess, a trial, a little kind of private trial, and um, maybe plans for future boost camps. So, yeah. Um, so it was, um, it was an idea of getting people to, to try out reason and also to, to kind of uh, get over those uh, obstacles that you sometimes that sometimes stop you in the process when you're uh, producing, which like that can really happen to anyone, no matter what level you're at as a producer. Um, so we created this boost camp where basically uh, you get to learn reason um, as a DAW and also create a track uh, within one week. So every day you get a new lesson and then you start off by making a beat and then uh, doing a bass line and then doing some chords, etc. And then you don't obviously have to like follow them through uh, like 
religiously, but you can uh, just use them as a template to like get started and actually start and finish a track and do it in a really sort of speedy way so you don't overthink things and get too critical. Right. And then uh, you also do it together with uh, other people so you feel like, you know, you're not completely alone on the journey. Yeah. And then at the end, we did a live stream where people could talk about the process and like kind of similar to what you're doing now, like people could upload their songs and we'd listen to them and get feedback and stuff. Speaking of, should we listen to one? Let's listen to one right now. Yes. Why, why don't we? Yes. All right. Let's check one out. Um, I'm going to listen to... Oh, wait a second. Well, first, let me see Calvin. Poor Calvin has been trying to get his song on the air, and I'm trying to get it on with him. Calvin, I'm still not seeing anything showing up here in the uh, in the new uploads area. So uh, we're going to try and make it happen for you, Calvin, but I'm still not seeing it. So if you haven't uploaded it yet, do, up, do re-upload it. And literally, I mean, call it obvious, and I will look for the word obvious, and that's how we'll get your song on there. Um, but okay, let's take a look here. Um, I'm going to, Rebecca, I'm going to give you two song titles, and uh, you you tell me which one, based on the title alone, is the most mm-hmm. intriguing one to listen to. So, okay. um, we could listen to Slowly Building Back Up or Vitamin Dust. Slowly Building Back Up. All right. Slowly building back up. Let's pop this one open. Uh, this one comes to us from Brian Amarello. And Brian, let's check out your tune. Ooh, okay. wonder hearing when i hear things like this always makes me wonder if uh this is a song that came about post chord sequencer because it's got you know it's got mm-hmm. these nice chords and it makes me wonder if this is something that brian did with the help of chord sequencer or the inspiration of chord mm-hmm. sequencer but it's really nice yeah No. <laughs> Battery exhausted. <laughs> uh, I think I need some help. Does anyone have a, another battery oh, camera? Oh, no. I'm sorry, Ryan. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch over. I love that. That's awesome. I'm going to switch over to my we're, camera. We're on it. Yeah, yeah. you're on it. I, 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 can still, yeah. I can still hear and talk to you while we're, while we're uh, fixing that up. So they're going to switch uh, batteries on their camera. Uh, Rebecca, while they're doing that, uh, mm-hmm. what, what kind of music... If you were to define your own music production, what kind of music would you do you produce? Um, it's mostly like uh, indie pop, indie rock, uh, alternative rock. Mm-hmm. Um, I know most people have been asking for like hip hop and uh, was it trance? I can't remember in the comments. Oh, drum and bass. Uh, I think we were getting drum and bass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, we're back on. Oh, back on. Yes. Okay, we're coming back. Beautiful. Thank you, Henrik. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, so, yeah, I, I think maybe it's a bit uh, unusual Whoop. for, uh, <laughs> sorry, well, all the a... technical issues here. Oh my gosh, it's just if... part of what we're doing today, right? I know. It, the, the, this is, if this is the worst technical issue we have, then I'm going to count ourselves lucky. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Henrik. <laughs> <laughs> What with the fire, fire on the on the motorway and everything? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Experience. Is it stable? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the tripod. Anyway. I yes. love it. I, these guys, <laughs> you're speaking hybrid Swedish and English to each other. It's uh, it's really adorable. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> um, okay. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but okay, so no, I was going to ask. So is um is guitar your first and primary instrument or? Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I started playing when I was uh, fourteen, but now um, it's falling again. Henry. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to stay with us. Anyway, um, I'm actually starting to learn how to play the banjo, and I heard that you're pretty great at I got, that. I got a whole... I got a whole... Wait, where are they? You can't see them. Wait, I got I to gotta tilt my camera. Oh, you can't see them because they're blocked. I have a whole collection of banjos, Rebecca. No way! I love... Yeah, I'm a... I'm a I, I'm a big fan of the banjo. It's become mm -hmm. uh, it's become something of an inside joke on the live streams. Some people uh, like to mock me about it on the live stream in the chat. Other people, Why? I think they genuinely enjoy the banjo. I can't tell. I can't tell who's who's laughing at me and with me uh, with the banjo. Well, I can tell who's laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> the, <laughs> oh, we lost connection. Oh my gosh. No, no. Wait. It's uh. Oh, I don't know what they're whispering. Anyone who speaks Swedish can hear their, their scheming and they're uh, talking. whispering. Yeah, yeah we're, exactly. We're, ske we're scheming in the dark. I didn't. I didn't catch that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, well, listen, banjo. I I fully applaud your move over to banjo, um, because it's a. I yeah, I, th I thought it would be an advan um, like it would be an advantage to know how to play the guitar, but um. Apparently not so much. It's very different. You know what? Actually, I of the banjo players. I'm gonna see if are we back. Oh no, we're not back. Um, of the banjo players that I know um, who have transitioned from other instruments, the, it's the drummers who say that they've taken to the banjo most easily. Um, that and, makes sense. Yeah, it's something to do with the multi coordination, and it's a yeah. you know, and it is it is kind of a percussive, even though there's strings on it. It's a percussive mm. style of of playing so yeah the yeah. drummers drummers sure. take to it well guitarists i mean i i'm a guitarist and i i took to it okay but um it was still there's definitely a learning curve it's not like something where you can just pick up and go oh i kind of get it you know so no at least not if you want to learn it properly and do like right you know all the finger picking styles and claw hammer and stuff like right, that's right. it's intense totally so i'm i'm a claw mm. hammer player i started doing uh, the three finger style but i i moved over to claw hammer i love that mm -hmm. rebecca look we've just turned this into a wonderful banjo only live stream and i'm sure everyone in the chat i'd be down for that <laughs> I, I don't know if everyone else would but you know i'm <laughs> no. here for it maybe we need to schedule another <laughs> totally. another live stream can we do a that. banjo banjo boost camp uh, uh with yes uh, please but so oh so Actually, while we're uh, while we're still working, and let me know when they have the camera set back up, and I'll switch back over to it. But I mean, they've stopped working on it. I think oh, they, they just gave too up. Much to drink here at the. They um, gave up. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, but you know, I'm 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 here for, I'm here for for a few more minutes until the until yeah. the mic gives up too. Exactly. But exactly. <laughs> oh, well, listen. Let's um. Well, I'll. I'll I'll wrap up with you here. We'll jump over. I've got mm -hmm. um, a couple more folks in the in the green room that I want to get to. Um, but sure. um, this, just to round out this concept of the boost camp. So you did this trial run yeah. of boost camps, and you're going to be doing one. I, I guess the plan is to do another one in a more um, uh, bro in a broader audience, a more open public way, and yeah. just get people for to sure. Join. That's definitely yeah. That's definitely the plan. And uh, I mean, I think most people that are uh, on the live stream now. They're probably already really um, well versed in reason as a DAW, um, but it's a really good way to get started for for uh, newbies. So like, once we do it again and you see it out, um, like once we do advertisement for the next run, yeah. If you know people um, that would want to do it and that have like wanting to get into music production or want to try out reason but feel like it's a bit too daunting maybe to try on a new doll it's uh it's a really good um good way to do it love it love it so that's uh that is a something for people to stay tuned for we'll be announcing it i'm sure um but anyone here who got to know rebecca via this stream and wasn't part of the first boost camp um if you're new to reason or if you just want to kind of like experience a little of the community music making where you're all working on something together and in the same sort of curriculum uh, keep your eyes out because we'll be doing a boost camp and and rebecca did a fantastic you did a fantastic job with the first one oh, and so you. i'm i'm thrilled to know that uh, another one's in the works and then we're gonna go even bigger with it so that's awesome 
So yeah. listen, thanks so much. I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch to your, your freeze frame camera so I can wave goodbye to at least a rather... <laughs> I, I got to say, as far as still frames go, it's a rather flattering. <laughs> the, the, those can go really badly when they just freeze on you. So, uh, uh, I feel like it's a bit of a, it's a bit too much of a psycho killer vibe there. <laughs> but, um, but thank you, Ryan. <laughs> just a little. I mean, it's 10% psycho killer, but, but 90% just sweetness. So... <laughs> I'd flip those fi- figures around, but, but thank you. Listen, um, but I'm going to I'm going to wave to the the psycho killer freeze frame, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to thank you for joining. And I'm listen. I'm going to thank tell, you, Ryan. Uh, and you can pass this message along to the Stockholm crew. I I realize mm-hmm. what is it? Is it 10:30 over there now? Yeah, it's 10:30. Uh, uh, yeah. I, listen, no need to stick around for my sake. You guys have uh, <laughs> been been champions. But uh, if everybody over there is wanting to go home and get some sleep, do that. And I'm going to round out and finish up the rest of this live stream uh, on my own uh, here. You're, with you're the champion, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> All you're right. The well, champ. <laughs> thanks so much, uh, Rebecca. Good to chat with you. And, um, Same. And we'll, we'll talk soon, I'm sure. So, Will cool. do. Bye. See ya. All right, guys. We're making it. We're making it through the list. We're getting there. I'm going to see. I'm, I'm eyeballing uh, the possibility of, of Chris Reed, if he's there. I think Chris is there, and I think we're going we're gonna to try and bring Chris on. I had, I don't know if, um, I don't know if David, David Henerano was going to be joining us too, but it's, he's in the Philippines, and let's see, it's, I don't even know what time it is. It's like four in the morning over there or something. So if he's falling asleep, I wouldn't blame him. Um, but let's bring in let's bring in Chris and um let's see what happens here. Chris? Hey, what's up? Chris, what is up? It's the longest live stream I've ever done. It's beautiful, man. I've been enjoying the time and you know watching and in the chat and everything. Man, you're doing oh, a great my job. God, my god, it's uh I'm I'm practicing um concentration focus and bladder control the three very important uh elements <laughs> of a long-term live stream um, but how you doing man hey i'm doing great i'm doing great thanks for having me on the live stream the music has been awesome i saw a lot of people say stuff like reason radio we need like a 24-hour live stream reason radio i right? think that would be awesome you know well listen I, speaking of music i i'm seeing a comment pop up already here Calvin Black says, if my song plays with Chris on stream, I'm going to lose it. And <laughs> anyone who has been tuning in watching this entire live stream and following the drama, I mean, I don't know what else to call it, Chris. Uh, it has been drama with Calvin not being, I can't find a song. Where is it? I'm looking. Reupload it, yada, yada, yada. I can report some good news. I see it now in the folder. Hey! Calvin. Calvin, this is your moment. With Calvin Chris. is happening. It was meant to be this way, Calvin, so that we could play this with Chris on the stream. So um, now the funny thing is, I think the song's called Decide because I had him rename it to Obvious so I could find it. But um, I'm pretty sure the name of this tune is Decide, and it's by Calvin Black. Calvin, this is your moment. Let's check this out together here with Chris Reed. Let's do it. Let's do it. If I were more of anything, I'd be a better everything. Shaking up the bag, ain't no settling. My dream is having better dreams. Thoughts to occupy with manifesting what I've never seen. Follow my direction, cause my script's been writing better scenes. Homegirl asking me when we gon' flourish. I smiled and told the baby there ain't no way like the current. I could never try and fight it when it's pushing me the furthest. So when I get to where I'm in, I know that I deserve it. I've been yearning for a moment for a long time. Diamond brain gold mine. Magic like showtime, spreading towards the goal line. Giant size plans, feed five till my foes cry. Lion size hands, swing on you for the whole pride and do them all a favor. Creating something greater when I'm through with all the labor. And everybody wanna eat, but who gon' fill your plate up? They asking okay. me to wait up and I'm laughing. Over here feasting while y'all snacking. Who's film rolling on the west side? Shy. Busy like I never learned to rest right. right. Trying to get the order of my steps right. Tell me how you make it to the best side. You want to see the reason file? Yeah, if he made it in reason, I need to see it. Like, 
He has, he's doing some interesting things in this song, but I'm loving the lyrics. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Calvin, this was thank you Calvin for for pushing this and and making sure I saw your comments. This was worth the wait. Uh yes. this is a, a beautiful beautiful track. Oh, if you don't choose it can get chose for you. If you don't choose it can still get chose. Now nah, you decide. I did my in- I mean, is everyone catching like the 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 pitch shifting that's going on just in that little moment there you've got the the high vocal that's been in from the beginning but then there's this mm-hmm. other low vocal that sounds like it's like format shifted but pitch shifted down so it's got this like real kind of rezzed track listen to it it's in the background there it's cool it still get chose if you don't choose it can get chose for you if you don't choose it can still get yeah. chose now nah, you decide Ooh. i did my inner deity to show you all my human side tapped into a frequency that y'all don't seem to utilize got me feeling too alive lurking with my squad to stay away from being scrutinized just long enough so people feel the heavy of my absence said i need a bag and a half just to pay for all the times they tried to say i wasn't man for the test but i'm so nice that they can't even take advantage of that he too smooth to kill it's the coolsville champion whipping up some sauce for your car red-handed onto something new because i'm not just standard saw many frozen place and they got left stranded we on the move scrambling just keep that in the back of mind crafting something permanent that now, I don't, I'm sure a lot of people do that little drop thing, but that's the thing I associate with the roots a lot. I love it. Every time the track drops and there's a little, like, you know, a little line that, you know, Black Thought will, sh- you know, spit a little line and then there's back in. I love that. It's, right. it's like right, such an right, effective right. tool. Steps right. Tell me how you make it to the best life. You decide, you decide, you decide. You decide, you decide. Yeah, I'm seeing in the in the chat, I'm seeing like mixing tips and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm just listening to the track like, you know, when you got hip hop is like lyrics first yeah, for yeah, me yeah personally i like i go to when i'm listening even growing up listening to music and hip-hop it was like the artist first before producer uh, which is interesting because you know i kind of started in that vein as well in terms of like rapping and then got into production yeah but so it's interesting to have somebody who is confident in their lyrics and in their voice you know his delivery all of that is great so good. so you know we you gotta can, know Calvin, you got to let us know, is that you, is that your vocal on the track? Um, or is that someone you're collabing with or, or what? Um, I'm going to assume it's you, um, unless you tell us otherwise, but it's really good. Kudos to you if it's you. Kudos to your vocalist if you're working with someone. Breaking news, Calvin Black says, song will be on Spotify this weekend, folks. So there you go. Calvin Black. Drop the little, drop the DJ horn. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the air horns for Calvin. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, but that's uh that's great. He says yes, that is him on the track. All right, there you go. Dope. Um, man, it sounds good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna back up and play a little more. I just want to hear a little of that vocal now. Now knowing it's you, Calvin. Let me take a listen. Yeah, check it. I swear, if I were more now listen. Than- if anybody wasn't listening to the lyrics beforehand. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're one of those people, I know they're out there, people who don't pay attention to the lyrics. Chris Reed just told you the number one thing to clue in with on songs, <coughs> hip-hop especially, because there's often so much important message in the lyrics. Now I'm going to play it again. I want you to clue into the lyrics. Let's all, like, check this out. <coughs> check it. I swear if I were more of anything, I'd be a better everything. Shaking up the bag, ain't no settling. My dream is having better dreams. Thoughts to occupy with manifesting what I've never seen. Follow my direction, cause my scripts been writing better scenes. Homegirl asking me when we gon' flourish. I smiled and told her, baby, there ain't no way like the current. I could never try and fight it when it's pushing me the furthest. So when I get to where I'm in, I know that I deserve it. I've been yearning. Uh. I love it. I love it. It's really great. You know, it's Chris, good. it um what this reminds me of, I have I, I keep these lists of topics that I can make videos out of or topics that I could do a live stream on. 
Let okay. me bounce this one off you. I have a concept for a live stream, and I can't tell you. You tell me honestly. When you tell me honestly, this is either a, a great idea or the worst idea I've ever had. All right. I was thinking for one live stream episode, I was going to have someone come on and teach me how to rap. Oh, wow. Teach you how to rap. I think that is a golden idea. Absolutely. <laughs> it could be Absolutely. terrible. It could. I mean, listen, I, it, if you if you were to draw a Venn diagram of like swagger and my name, there's no overlap there. I don't know if I can pull it off, but I here's my theory on this one. And when I wrote it down and came up with the idea, I thought one of two things is going to happen. Um, either I'm going to actually learn some cool tips and like Oh my God, look, like I actually made progress and learned. Great. That's a winning live stream. Uh, or I'm going to crash and burn so horribly and it's going to be the joke of the world. And I'm okay with that if it inspires other people to dare and try and, and, and reach. Because um, I think there's people out there, I know some, that, uh, you know, they they love hip hop. They'd love to, to, to rap and write their own bars, but they just are a little, I mean, it's it's got to be intimidating. I don't know. Do you ever, do you ever write? Yeah, I used to, as I said before, I used to do a lot of rapping and a lot of writing. And on my live streams, I've had moments where I've like recorded like raps and or like tried to rap along to it. What's interesting is on live stream, I use this USB mic and so it's always off. So like I'll be like jamming, making beats and I'm rapping to it. And it's like I listen later and it's like I'm so off beat. And I have to tell my stream all the time, like, listen, I promise you I have rhythm. I promise you that <laughs> I promise you I can rap on beat. OK, it's just the delay. OK, OBS delay, you know, right. all that. Tech stuff. But um, this is what I would say about like lyrics and about rap. You know, um, at one point, you know, it's definitely about your swag. It's definitely about your style. But more so, like I said, I come from a time where we, we were listening to the lyrics. That's what we really was listening to. Right. What does this person have to say? When you think of an artist like Killer Mike, for example, oh, yeah. he has Great. something to say, right? Oh, it's 100%. More than, it's more than just, um, oh, you know, I, I think I'm hitting this mic. It's more than just, oh, the beat sound dope. You know, it's like there's something being said in there, you know, goody mob, you know, outcast, there's definitely a message. Yeah. And so if you start with message first, and then you add in some of the flavor and you add in some of the textures that kind of make rap cool, like he was doing the pitch shifts and, you know, the doubling, the beat drops, if you add in all that stuff, you can make somebody that maybe doesn't sound the greatest in rap, but you can make it really sound like an awesome production. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Yeah, there's a um, there's a comment. Uh, Mathix just put up. Rap is just the truth. And something I love about the way that that's written is there's a famous expression about country music, which they say it's three chords and the truth. And hmm. I, I sort of like the idea that like with rap, it's like hey, get the chords out, just the truth. Like you know, we right. don't even need the three chords. We can we can say something. Just give us a beat, and we can we can drop some truth. Um, I love that. That's great. Yeah. The um, oh, Andrew Rothman is saying a slight delay on your vocal might be your signature sound. That's true. Maybe that's uh, <laughs> people are going to be like, Oh, you got to give me that real laid back Chris Reed vibe. I want you to right. <laughs> sound like you're 90 milliseconds late on the beat. <laughs> right. And you know, there's different, even like with that, right? Like with rap and rap lyrics, like I've heard people who are like specific, it's called like a pocket. So when you find the pocket of the beat, it's like you can ride the pocket and, right. you know, you're right there in the groove with it. And then some people go ahead of the pocket and some people go behind the pocket and they have their own style. You know, when you think of, um, uh, man, uh, I'm not even going to try and do any names, but, you know, even just listening to certain kinds of music, certain kinds of hip hop, there is a way that you rap on it. So like you wouldn't rap over you know, you wouldn't rap over a Kanye style track the same way that you would rap over like a, a Pete Rock or, you know, a Jay mm. Dilla. It's just like the different pockets that you kind of, you know. But I've heard artists who have a more like offbeat style to the way that they rap and sure. it works. It works. Yeah, I, I, it makes sense. And and that pocket, I mean, that's um, it's something the term pocket, you know, goes back into the jazz era and all that like you know people that have uh that unique control it's it's not some of it's just their style but some of it's things they actually work on like i feel like like jay-z is the kind of rapper where like his pocket didn't come by accident he like he kind of got that 
you know, the, the, the way that he does what he does is definitely something that he has developed. Um, I got to just take, I got to throw a comment when VST three release Monday rough. Um, I've, I broke that news here on the stream. Um, it's coming out Monday, set your alarm, wake up, install auto tune and all your dreams will come true. Uh, so VST comes Oh, here. Yeah. People are answering in the comments for you. VST three on Monday. That is correct. Um, but, uh, the people are calling that that uh, delay the read effect. I like that. Oh man! <laughs> yeah. Well, but now, Chris. So you are um, uh, just to, for people that that may have seen you on our channel. You're you're making more and more appearances on our channel, and I personally couldn't be more thrilled about that because I'm always. It's something about you, Chris. I'm happy every time I see you in a video in person because we've actually met IRL uh, yeah. and uh, and on a live stream. You, you're just you exude a certain energy, and I I love it. You're just a happy hey. guy. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Thank you, Ryan. I really appreciate that. What um what are some of the stuff that you could maybe point some people to on our channel that you've done uh. I guess, video wise, you've been doing some tutorial stuff, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the very first one I did was, uh, when the BVX vocoder came out, I did a track there and I did a little bit of singing slash rapping yeah. on that one, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and that would probably be the one that I would send people to first and last. Um, I like all of the videos, but, um, I'm just like, I'm, you know, you, you know, your, your worst critic, oh, you know, and it's oh, so, like, I'm, I'm looking at some, I'm like, oh, what is you talking about? Get to the point. Get to the <laughs> so, <laughs> Listen, so. you don't have to tell me. I, I For all the videos I've made, you know, it's funny. I um, just recently, um, I was literally, I was talking to my dad on the phone and he said something. And I realized he hadn't seen some of the stuff I'd done in a, a while. I mean, you know, it's not a thing. I don't, I don't send it out to my family. Like, Hey, check out my latest reason video. It's like not relevant right. to them. But he, he was like, it was like, oh, I want to see, like, send me a link. Send me, send me something to watch. I want to see, like, some of the stuff you've been doing. And, like, suddenly I had that thing that you had where it's like, I'm happy with all, everything I put out. It's fine. I feel like it's ready for public consumption. But it's a whole different thing, like, when your dad is like, eh, send me some of your work. And it's like, all of a sudden it was like 19 videos. I was like, well, that's not good enough. I got to I gotta send this other one. Or, maybe, oh, no, I can't. No, that one's no good. You know, you start really becoming more critical of, of your own of your own work. So, uh, so what, so what was the one that you would point people to again? BVX. The, the first BVX. one was the BVX. Um, I basically like kind of went over the process of creating this song using the BVX, uh, vocoder and that style of like, you know, getting that hip hop sounding vocoder sound. Right. Uh, so I really like that one, but you, you, you said something that really interested me because you say you're talking about like, like your dad or like family members and pretty much like my entire family is familiar with my YouTube videos. I send it to them. Oh, I tell good. them watch it. I say, Hey, just, just watch it. Even if you don't actually watch it. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> just, <laughs> yeah just, I need the numbers. Like, like I need the likes. Subscribe? Yeah, totally. <laughs> But um, my dad, like literally on live streams, like my dad will just walk. He'll just come in the chat and he'll be like, that's my son. It's like, yo, I tell the people, I said, that's my actual dad. Like he's watching and supporting it. Uh, it's just been great. Oh, man. that's great. Hey, listen, there's a we got a comment coming in from DJ Afro. Now, DJ Afro, I, this guy, I don't know if you you probably don't know him by name alone. I, I love this guy. I, I talked to him on a live stream one time and he's got, an, he's like you, he's got this really fun, good energy. He's based yeah. in Morocco. Um, and he makes great sounding music. Some of it, of which, uh, uses Moroccan, traditional Moroccan instruments and they are cool. And so he says, I would love some advice from Chris about one of my beats posted. Afro on the beat is the name. And I am going with that in mind. I'm going in. Oh, yep. Yeah, I got it. Here we go. Um, I'm play it. We're going to play it. Uh, we're going to, I see two of them here, DJ Afro, and maybe we'll play both. I'm not sure. I don't want people getting mad with me playing two of yours and skipping over other people. So we'll see. Let's go with, this one is called Ecuador DJ Afro, uh, and, and then his name, Mehdi Anwar. Um, but here it is. Let's check it out. Oh, that man, man, that Afro.
love that bell sound. I'm getting a rapper face. <laughs> rapper face? Rapper face is like when you listen to a track, and it's like, yeah, I could rap to this for sure. I would tell you to freestyle on this, except you want to talk about latency. The latency going down to uh, LA <laughs> to you and me would be even worse. <laughs> Oh, man. Like, yo, Chris is a half bar off. <laughs> There's definitely a good bounce. Right? Those, the interplay between these really pure bells and these really gritty, lower, low mid-range distorted sounds is really nice. Now, TJ yes, Afro says... definitely... Go ahead, go ahead. He says this is a remix, so... Um, I don't. I'm going to interpret that as suggesting that another one is not a remix. I'm going to open this other song. We're going to check out the other one here, just in case. Okay. He said that one's a remix, and I don't know if that's him being like, "Don't play that one." This is what I'm saying, guys. Pick your one best song. You don't have to upload multiples, but that's all right. I still love you all. Okay, here let's check this one out. This one's called "Uninspired." Uh, DJ Afro, tell us in the comment section. Let us know what um, what we're hearing. Are we hearing? Are they, I mean, I don't know how much of this is. Is maybe it's all reason. Maybe it's some reason. But let us know. Like that bass is. What synth is that? Yeah, this has a good sound to it. Um, I like the first one, just like in terms of listening. This is what I would say because he did use the word advice. He used the word advice. All right. And so I'm gonna give Chris you Reed about to bring it. I'm going to give you the same advice that I give myself, okay? So just take it like that. I'm, it's me. Um, get an artist or somebody or even you splice like Ryan says he has done or arcade or something where you have vocals so that you can build beats to those vocals or at least play the vocals with the beat. Right. And then you can hear how that bass line or the 808 that's playing in this track, you can hear how it sounds super dope but there's no room for anybody to rap over it because it's just so, you know, oh. so much going on. Um, you want to kind of leave room, right? You know, like it's not too much happening. It's just that the baseline is just so. This is this is some of the some of the best advice I heard uh, and I got from Mike and Keys when I was hanging out with Mike and Keys is they hey. said when they were starting out, they started out going to beat battles and they they got good they were winning beat battles and yeah. the but the nature of winning a beat battle is by making a beat that's so packed full of cool sounds and stuff happening and and so what would happen is they got so good at winning beat battles they were like yo why aren't we getting artists like why why is nobody wanting to like feature on our stuff and they came to realize that they had taken up all the space where a vocal yes. would go and they had to like unlearn the instincts of the beat battle and instead create these very deliberate gaps either in the rhythm in the frequency spectrum in the arrangement of what instruments are going on and kind of put a little invitational pocket not not rhythmic pocket but like a little space in the mix that where right. they can kind of invite an artist to go this is where you would go and then exactly. when an artist when an artist would listen to it they get it they go oh i yeah i'm right i see where i fit into this perfectly so um, yeah it makes a lot of sense because in a beat battle they don't you don't want that at no, all you don't no. want it to be like you want it to be like as soon as it starts people are just like oh you know you want a right. reaction right yeah. right is that anything you've ever have you ever gotten into those beat battles i have done some beat battles before so uh earlier in my production career i did a beat battle um i won like the first round second round and then maybe it was like four rounds in total and it was like after that i was like oh no you 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 don't have enough 
uh, to, 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 to compete. But what I would say to that is I was not prepared. I'm mm. not trying to make no excuses. I don't make beat battle beats. Right. But um, the first two beats I played, I had a thumb drive with me, so I played them. But they were good. But the rest of the beats was like, oh, they can't compete because people were actually creating something for that environment. And uh, it was one of those things like, you know, people push you out there and say, you know, give it your best and try. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you, you, you never want to cower to opportunities because if you cower to opportunities, then, you know, you won't have your opportunity to shine. So it's like, mm. even if you don't win, it was good, you know, to get out there and do it. Absolutely. That makes sense. That's yeah. great advice. Um, I, I want to jump up here. There was a, oh, here. Tripophonics says, hello, Ryan. I sent a few of my tracks. I hope you like some of the numbers. Uh, greetings and fingers crossed for further action. Um, Tripophonics, I looked in the folder and if you uh, put it in, tell me what the start of the file name is. Because um, when I'm searching, if I search for Tripophonics and stuff like that, I, I don't, it doesn't come up. It's the same problem I was having with Calvin where searching for Calvin wasn't turning it up in the search results. That may be uh, an issue in, with my search process and maybe it is in there. But like I said, you know, we got si over 600 and now let me see, uh, there's another 153. So we've gotten seven, over 750 <laughs> songs wow. that you guys have sent in for this live stream. And, um, I have played, I don't want to count the, uh, the real number here. Um, not enough <laughs> during this live stream. I could just keep playing them. In fact, you know what? Let's do that. Let's play another one while we're chatting here. Um, yeah. How, how, what do you think? Um, why don't we call? Oh, wait a second. Sorry. I'm in the wrong place. Hang on a second. Uh, there we go. Okay. I'm going to give you two titles. You're going to choose uh, based on the title. Cool. I um, like that game. I, I like when other people are doing it. Cool. All right. Um, You've got the options. One is Avatar Moon, and the other one will go with um, Stardust Android Kisses. Avatar Moon. Avatar Moon. Not into Stardust uh, Kisses. All right. Avatar Moon. Here we go. Um, oh, this oh. is you know, this is a name that I recognize, and I'm trying to remember if I recognize him because he's in the chats often. Um or I dare I say, maybe this is someone I should know, and I, I'm not remembering that I know him act in real life. Uh, J. Chris Griffin. Um, it's a name I see all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. Hi, 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 Chris. Hey there. I don't think we've actually met in real life, but I always worry. Sometimes I'll see these names, and, and then it'll be like, yeah, no, remember we hung out for five hours in Nam uh, two years ago. But like, oh, shit. I don't think that's the case. All right, we got vibes. Slow build. Ooh, I like that. Uh, I don't know what that is. Like a harmonic pluck sound while this song is building Chris someone asked a question I gotta know the answer to this too Andrew says I want to know what camera Chris oh. is using <laughs> picture so crisp how how do I mean look at just look at you and me you you can see the pores on your face I don't know that you want to see the oh, pores man, on my face but but you're, it's you it's he's right you have a really crisp camera um, I am using the Sony a7 III. Uh, it's going through my capture card, which is a Elgato Cam Link. Um, and, but I also will say, you know, if you can look and see, you know, the situation, there's like a ton of like lights and stuff all over here that I've bought. So as much as the camera is important, um, lighting is important as well. Right, right. Yeah, you've got a lot of uh, good blackout curtains to absorb unwanted reflections and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Looks good. I've always thought that too. Thank you for uh, bringing up that comment there because, um, yeah, I've always been like, man, what, he, he gets it so crisp. All right, let me drink, bring this on up again.
someone says J. Chris Griffin made a Rhodes piano rack extension. Maybe that's why I'm knowing the name. I don't know. I feel I feel terrible if I'm Chris. If I if you and I are like best buds, I forgot. Let me know in the comments. Right. <laughs> Okay, so I gotta say this is this is definitely took us on a journey with this track. Right. It's still taking us on the it's journey, still, right? I, I feel like we're done. in Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, you know, the character has just, you know, they went into a darker cavern. Right. Um and they're like exploring, they're investigating. Okay, but now seriously, I wanna say this. I wanna say a lot of people make music and beats and tracks, and it's interesting to see how many different uses that you can use your music with and sync licensing is one of those things so i've been watching and following yeah. this guy anthony clint jr mm -hmm. he's all about sync licensing i suggest you guys follow him check him out because this belongs in like the next i don't know law and order or something or just something on tv some kind of video game yep it yeah. has the elements. Mimi says I could it. kill replicants to this beat. Mimi, I'm exactly. not a, I'm not a gamer, but what so what game are we referencing with replicants? Do you know, Chris? I don't know exactly, no. but no. I, I I got the sense that we we're talking something first person shooter. So first person shooter, yeah, for sure, for sure. If, yeah. Let us know in the I comments, the Mimi, what game we're it. talking about there, replicants. Um but yeah, it's a really I mean it's a really beautiful, really cinematic. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is the like I said. This is like menu screen, title menu screen. I see it right here. Right. The day after, you know, yeah, I see I the title totally, menu screen. Totally. Yeah, that's right. You no, know. oh, it's great. Now, you know, someone says here. Uh, Billy says, uh, "Oh wait, no, that's not the one." Although that's a nice comment too. But um, wait, where'd it go? I just lost it. Oh, here, Benjamin says, "Love it." Now I want to hear Stardust Kisses. Well, Benjamin. <laughs> You're in luck because we've got that sitting over here. Let me go find it again. Stardust Android Kisses. Don't forget Stardust Android Kisses. Um, not to be confused with any other kind of Stardust Kisses. Um, oh, my God. I just got a message from Craig. Um, Craig, who I work with, he's at Reason Studios, and he's mad at me. <laughs> Uh -oh. he, he should be mad at me. Let me I'm going to read his comment live on air. He says, I'm going to read it exactly as he wrote it to me. Holy okay. fuck, Ryan. Replicants. Blade Runner. How do you not know that? <laughs> oh, man. Well, Craig... Uh, first of all, I'm not alone in not knowing that. Chris and I are... We I are, didn't know it. We are buddies in our ignorance. And, yes. um, and secondly, let me uh, tell you, Craig, me and Sci-Fi... Not so much. I've seen Blade Runner. I may have slept through part of it, um, but I, it wasn't forefront of my mind, Replicants. But now, now that you say it, that does sound uh, familiar. Um, okay, let me see here. Uh, yeah, they say 100% game music vibes. Okay, let's, so we're going to switch over here. We're going to look at Stardust Android Kisses. Let's check this one out. Is it weird, or are we in the same key as the last song? It sounds like it. I think we're in the same key. It almost sounds feels like, like they could go together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we, if we had just done a crossfade, it would have just gone perfect. I love that. take a moment to say we haven't had a clunker yet on this whole stream of all these songs that we're playing I, I, guys like kudos reason community you guys are making amazing stuff this one it's great
<laughs> Here's a comment. Butternut says, "Can we please, can we please find a clunker?" I think <laughs> earlier, earlier I was, I was going to text, I was going to chat it, but I didn't want to chat it. I was going to say, "Okay, now play a bad one," because I think. <laughs> I think it was you and Carl, and you was like, "Oh, we haven't played a bad one yet." I was like, "Okay, we now play a bad one." Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I will say um, to people. So I went through and I curated this list. I did not make judgments about a good song or a bad song. I didn't filter that. What I did filter out from this was, like I said at the top of the stream, um, one person did a remix of an Alanis Morissette song, and I was like, "That's just going to get a copyright strike. I can't use that." Another one. Um, used a sample from James Brown same thing like I had to pull that one out so I pulled out stuff like that um, but when I was going through it there was a couple that I pulled out because and this is another one of those learning moments because it was just too loud like <laughs> the you know the mastering loudness wars are largely uh, over because of the standardization YouTube and YouTube and Spotify do loudness normalization but let me tell you, some people have not gotten the memo and they are still mastering their tracks to just pin, like just full rectangle waveform, pin the meters and um, allow me, and, and maybe Chris will back me up on this to tell you, you don't have to do that anymore. Those days are over. Nah, you should definitely keep doing it and also keep doing the has effect. Keep doing that as well. Okay, both of those two things are going to get you Grammys. They're going to get you number one placements. Okay, they're going to definitely get people buying your beats, listening to your stuff on Spotify. Okay, full, just max that thing out <laughs> as loud as you can go. Export it, render it out, drop it back in the program, do it again. Okay, <laughs> run it. All right. Run it. You you don't want your stuff to not sound loud, okay? You don't want us to play it side by side and say, whoa, <sighs> that's not as loud. Okay? Chris, Chris, it might be yes. that I'm entering into the, the fifth hour of this live stream, uh, but that was hella funny. Um, and that sounds like a man who wants to weed out competition from himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. No, 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 no. Yes. You know. Oh, my God. Um keep it going that's uh, some funny advice yeah <laughs> bring it back in once is not enough yes nope. oh boy trevor this is a beautiful track though awesome track i'm always curious too like how long do people spend on like their music yeah like something like this i'm really curious to see like what was the process for this one you know how right. long did he you know yeah, is this is this a labor of of days and weeks and months, or is this uh, you know this is a thing? Actually, this is a, a a thing. I particularly am. I sometimes get a little bit. I don't know what you'd call it. I'm going to say a little annoyed with. There's a certain myth in the hip hop beatmaker community about like the path to success comes from making a ton of beats every day, and there's there. It gets into this boastful sort of thing, like I make a hundred beats a day. A hundred beats? What are you lazy? I make five hundred beats a day, you know. And like, I always have this feeling of like, I want to. You show me the four hundred and seventieth beat of your five hundred beat day. I guarantee you that thing is not, you know, uh, crafted and and cared. You know, five hundred is an extreme example. But even if you said you made thirty beats a day, right? Like. I just don't see maybe it maybe this is a limitation of my own musicality and imagination i just don't see how you could possibly be making developed i 30 developed ideas of with drums and, and automation and nice mixing and hooks and bass lines it's just no way i mean am i wrong would you no I don't think you're wrong at all, but I also know that in terms of like the tool bag, the beat maker producer tool bag has gotten much larger over time. Um, you know, we have the websites, we have the programs, we have the sample libraries. And so um, it might not be to the degree that it's 100 percent original or it might not be to the degree that it's differentiated between other people's works. You know, like right. I'm starting to hear hi-hat loops and percussion loops. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that one. Yeah, that's a percussion loop three, you know, from this sample library. I've heard it, you know, so many times in different people's productions. 
So when you have the availability to like drop a loop in, drop this loop in, and um, it's all royalty free, yeah, you you could be making X amount of beats. Yeah, but then now um, that's like we're talking about like the magnetic poetry kit that people have on their fridge. You know, like is that right. if you're if you're just assembling three beat three loops, pre made loops, and calling that a beat you made, like well, congratulations, you get a participation trophy, but like you didn't really make that beat, you know. <laughs> So in terms of the art, right, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. you want to have that's but that's also a war, just like you have that loudness wars. Now we're starting to get into this, you know, sample library war, the creativity, uh, originality kind of idea. Does not matter if your stuff is complete, original MIDI? That's, you know, that you played yourself right. on your keyboard. You know, um, we're getting into that. But at the end of the day, it's um. I want we should dispel toxic uh, things that have come up. These toxic kind of ideas. Mm. Team no sleep. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. grind until you just fall out and die. It's like, listen, um, do what you do. Do what makes you happy. You know, give it your all. And a hundred percent. Do you know right? And then and get rest and get outside of your dark studio cave. Um, you know, see the light, see the sunlight, talk to a friend, get some help, collaborate, you know, totally. all of those things. Totally, totally. And you know, it's one of the things um I have I who knows if I look back over the videos I've made over the last ten years, maybe I've done one, but if I did, I'm gonna criticize myself too. Um there is a certain style of video, you know, where it's like uh, you know, we're going to put a producer in a room and we're going to give them like, you know, these three sounds and they've got seven minutes to make a beat, you know, <laughs> and it's like, right. cool. Well, that's a nice little like game show bit, but it, we're teaching people the wrong thing. We're, we're in, in hopes of, I, I, maybe I'm wrong on this. My, my belief is that us as content creators, our goal is not to wow people with our beat making skill is to inspire them to make their beats and right. and so i don't want to i don't want to intimidate someone by going like yo i just made this beat in seven minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever you want to say um i would much rather them understand the the reality of the process of how i got there so that they can you know take inspiration from it and follow their own path so yeah you're that's a great calling it toxic um sort of toxic myths or whatever is is absolutely yeah. so um but i agree i agree with you on in that vein that you just said you know there is a situation where it as a content creator you know your 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 job is to make stuff that people want to watch but as a musician and as a producer or beat maker mm -hmm. whatever your title is your job is to make art right and so in the in the fight between those two it's like well i'm kind of losing like i heard you say earlier that when you first started content you know you made more music than you had ever made you yeah just was making a lot and the idea is like you know to not lose your artistry in your content creation yes um and so that might take more time that's this is literally what i'm i'm struggling with this right now ryan mm. Mm. it might take more time it's like i want to make a video every week every day but it might take more time to let the art come through absolutely so, you know what you know so we all we all on the reason community like to joke about my banjo playing and stuff but i will tell you this i i got as big into the acoustic music that i play i play you know um folk and bluegrass americana banjo mandolin you know flat picking guitar all that stuff i literally got as deep into it as i am as an antidote and antidote antidote yes um to uh to what you're talking about because like i you know i, I was getting to a point where it was like what is my artistry? My art, all my, I don't know what my artistry is. My artistry is whatever the next genre I need to make for a super neat beat cheat sheet is like, mm -hmm, I'm not, right. my artistry isn't trip hop. My artistry isn't the liquid drum and bass video I did, but I was just making all these videos that were, you know, me sort of reverse engineering genres and teaching people kind of the, the recipe to make them. And right. I, I had none of me. And the other thing I had was that, because all the music that I was making was, and you'll appreciate this as well, all the music that I'm making is I know it's going to be viewed publicly. It has to mm -hmm. kind of be perfect. Things have to be quantized. Things have to be tuned and, and, and just fixed and all perfect. And so 
I got into, I, I just started going to these acoustic Americana jam nights where 20 people got in a room and you sit in the room and nobody's recording it and nobody's watching it and you're just making music for each other. And when you stop, you go home and it's gone. All we have is the memory of what we made. And it was like this wonderful balance for me to be like, right, this is music making in its purest form where I don't have the inner critic. I don't have the the public viewer judging what I'm doing. I don't have to look in the comment section. I can just make music. And so that has continued to be why I kind of balance those two uh, worlds where I do this very exacting production work and I put it out in content and then and then I get together and I play weird banjo tunes with people and no one gets to hear it and it's perfect. <laughs> so right, uh, it's it me, sounds great. It sounds like you kind of need those moments where you can just get into your craft, the yeah, thing that you love and you enjoy. It's like you know that phrase, "dance like no one's watching." Like it's the it's the make music like no one's watching, which for you us sing is, the best. You sing the best in the shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you sing it, the best in the shower. It's the content creator version of that. Uh, Mimi is chastising me. Ryan, don't quantize. I'm sorry. I you know I I I must admit I am an over quantizer. I quantize way too often. Um, <laughs> but hopefully I'm trying to learn not to, Mimi. I'm trying to learn not to. Um, there was another comment. I'm scrolling up here. Oh, someone. That's right. I'm going to look for it now. Someone mentioned, they were like, play my clunker. And I thought, well, if someone wants to self-identify as a clunker, then we'll find their song and we'll play it. But I can't find it now. Shoot, who was uh. it? Someone called their song a clunker. And I, you know what? I bet you. Oh, here it is. Odd Tech Audio. I'd love you to take a listen to the clunkers I submitted. So Odd Tech Audio, um, if, if you're volunteering to represent the clunker category, I bet your stuff is not really clunkers. I, I, but... Um, let me, uh, I'll take a, a look here in the uh, folder and see if I can find. And again, if the file name doesn't begin with Odd Tech Audio, I'm really at a loss as to how to identify it. So um, hopefully we can just find it. And if not, let me know in the comments the the start of your file name. That is the thing that I'm going to be looking for. Uh, and sure enough, Odd Tech Audio, not the start of the file name. So unless, wait, sorry, let me look at the, the stuff that's come in late. Oh. During the broadcast, um, how are you hanging in there, Chris? You doing good? I'm doing great. I was reading. I, I keep like reading over here on the chat because, of course, I got the live stream up on my computer. Um, it says someone says it sounds like this is just a ploy so that we will play their song. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, I have a clunker. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right um well i didn't find it in their odd tech audio so if you um if you want to see it uh let me know okay hurricane nicole saying play my song hurricane nicole okay we're gonna guys we're gonna learn this process together if your song file does not begin with an h for hurricane nicole i don't know how to identify it so let's see if i can find it go into the we're h talking <gasps> over 700 submissions guys i know but you know what hurricane nicole gotta hand it to her assuming this is i don't know if this oh this is chris escala song called hurricane nicole file name began with hurricane nicole and of course ryan finds it very quickly so here we go uh because you you uh you followed uh, a easily traceable path we are rewarded with your song here it is hurricane nicole <laughs> I wonder if that's a real guitar getting distorted or with distortions like that I can never tell if it's like muted guitar right. or I don't think it is that meow meow that noise doesn't sound like a guitar Ooh. oh Ooh. see now if the song started there 
I have a different opinion about it overall. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. I, let's, let's, okay. This is, that's a good, this is a good structure note you're giving. You're saying you think the song should just kicked right in with the, with that vibe. Let's see here. Yeah. Where is that? I'm going to find it. Or, or, okay. Or even, even the elements. Cause she's playing like this bass. I think it was a she, I'm sorry. If I, I think it's miss. Chris. I think the song's called Hurricane Nicole, but Chris okay. Escola is the uh, artist. Okay. The bass came in very nice. So if it started with the bass versus starting with that organ, I would have a different vibe to it. I got you. I got you. There's some other stuff going on here. I'm gonna I'm gonna cue it off from that point where you're saying if it started okay. from here. Um there's another uh thing happening here where the um what was I gonna say? Oh, the um there's some interesting harmonic choices where the the line went somewhere I wasn't expecting, but I liked it. It worked. It was just mm -hmm. made my ears mm -hmm. kind of like you know, sort of perk up like, wait, oh, what, what just happened there? You know, <laughs> so let me let's listen again. So this is the Chris Reed radio edit. You would start it from about this point. Here it is. Yes. Now listen. Listen to this note choice right here. That cool. Da da da. Love it. I think it's a flat yes. seven. Now, Maverick puts up a comment. We still need drum and bass. My friend Tom Neo uploaded a nice track. Maverick, now we, we're learning. We're all learning how to play the game right here. Does the file name begin with um tom neo and if not let me know what it begins with and i'll find it i'm looking for tom yeah, neo's well. yeah what's that so now so now this is interesting because we haven't gone back to that you know organ solo right it, right now and it kind of blends out of this track so that's why i'm saying that organ kind of distracted me this is um there's a lot of like kind of detuned stuff here like that piano i like yeah. you know what i just realized oh wow wait you know what it, you know what the vibe is that nah, nah, nah. it's it's i uh, maybe chris wasn't influenced by this but it's beck it's that sort of uh, vibe. Listen to when the when the drums drop out here. Right. The organ. That is so that's so Beck to me. Beck circa you know, what, ninety nine or something. Yeah, Francois points out this is not a clunker. No, this is not a clunker. This is a, what's the opposite of a clunker? A singer, a, a, a clanger, I don't know, a, bang, a banger, a banger. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, right now. Right there, oh, that's it right there. Yeah. I just like that vibe. I just think that that right, that right that is there nice. speaks that to That is me. nice, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna go looking for another one here now. Um, if I can find it, I got a couple of locations I gotta check now because um, people are putting in songs late. And of course, now the the stream is just turning into people. Play my song, play my song. We're not gonna be right. able to get to all of them, guys, but we're gonna try to do more. Um, although I will, I will mention uh, to those without uh, too much information that uh, like someone on a long road trip, I might be looking soon for uh, a. A spot to pull over and use the uh, uh i think believe they call it a bio break um <laughs> in its most uh euphemistic term i have to pee uh let's see here uh i'm looking for a song called oh here resonance okay maverick says resonance showcase i'm going to look for resonance and if i don't see resonance then we are SOL on playing that one, but let me try. I really try. Oh, 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 got it. Bingo, bango, bongo. Opening it up here. Maverick, I think you said it's your friends. 
song. It's drum and bass. People have been asking for drum and bass. So let's check this out here. Not a style you or I make, Chris, drum and bass, right? I, I've tried. Have you? I've tried. I, I will guess, but... try anything once. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, uh, that is the right attitude to have in music as it is at a buffet. All right, yes. here we go. <laughs> I'm imagining this is going to just build until it's a full out D and B break, or maybe over there. Patty uh, Freethinker says, "Good night, everybody. It was fun hanging out with you, Patty." Um, if people are starting to go to bed, that's going to be my cue to wrap up pretty soon too. <laughs> <laughs> We had, we had one more guest. Um, I don't know if he's made it. It's a, I've got, I'm seeing a frozen screen over on David's uh, green room. I wonder if uh, I don't want to overlook David because if he's still there, it's the middle of the night. And he, um, Ryan, you can't go. I was under the impression this was a bring in the new year end of. I thought I we was going. <laughs> all the way until <laughs> we're going 15 days 16 days you got it chris there's there's no break for you okay listen we if i were to play all 700 songs we might be here until then <laughs> it's reason radio everybody it's your boy chris reed beats and ryan harlan we are here to bring you guys this is the jams you are looking for okay let me get what, a reason gang in the chat. I'm gonna keep I am gonna keep going here with with these songs. And Chris, I, I will say to you, you you needn't stick around. You, at any point you wanna go, like you are you don't have to stick around for my sake. Um I'm certainly having fun with you, but but you let me know. I'm you rocking need with you, brother. It's you, it's your show. It's your show. You let me know. But here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna switch to a, uh, a Chris only camera for a second, and I might excuse myself for a second. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. Uh, but let's go with Chris. Hold it down. You've got another got you. minute and a half of this song. I got you. Hey. Oh yes, Reason Radio. Make sure you guys send in your submissions. Andrew says, drop a flow. I got no flow for you, Andrew. Not to this. It's good though, this right? This is good. This is great. I'm back with Oh, wait, oh, David, David Henerato. Oh, he is David. David's still in the chat and he's hey, still David's awake. Here. David, uh, if you, it looks like you're out of the green room. If you uh, want to try and rejoin, we'll see if it un unfreezes. Un unfreezes. 
Um, and meanwhile, I'm going to get. Oh, let's hear some. Oh, that's a that's a good one here. DJW Dynamite says, "Let's hear some music from Chris Reed Beats." Is there anything we can? Is there anything oh, on Spotify man. or anything that? Um... Nothing on Spotify. I'm trying to think what's the best way that we could play something from me. You could. Um, what is the best way? Do you have my? Do you do? Do we? Are we text message buddies have or a, are we just uh, Instagram? Is that our Instagram? Instagram is the. Is if you the can, way I don't know if I you got. can do attachments in Instagram, but you could throw something in there. Um. Oh wait, David. David's coming in here. Oh, David, I see movement over there. Okay, listen. Um, let's do this, Chris. Why don't we bring David in as a dual, a dual let's guest here? Let's see if I can do this. David. Hey. First of all, rocking the Kong t-shirt. Second of all, the sun has risen. <laughs> oh my God. What, what time is it over there in Manila? As you see, the sun is shining, so it's 6 30 a.m. in oh, the morning. <laughs> I've been I'm on the four and a half hour mark of this live stream, and David has been uh, patiently hanging out in our green room, I think, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, this entire time while I've been talking to everybody else, and then it froze a while back. Your signal froze, and I thought uh. I thought that you had disconnected, which I wouldn't have blamed you because it was the middle of the night. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad I saw you in the chat again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was just watching and listening to our communities music and yeah uh i've been having fun in the last hour so well, so listen out to people watching and to people still watching and our numbers i will say our numbers are dwindling so the, uh, i'm gonna read our numbers as a sign when it's like all right let's wrap it up guys but i'm i'm so glad we got you on here uh because um i don't know if people realize um and i'm sure they don't or may, maybe not recognize you david but david was yeah. on one of our live streams in was that 2020 yeah, that was 2020, the start of pandemic. Uh, you you guys were organizing live streams at the start, and yeah, I all, all that's why I always like look for the, the 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 users that are with me since the start of the uh, live streams. So shout out to all of my OG live stream fam on the yeah reason. right uh it it's 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 been surreal like uh i started like uh, uh tuning in every 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 uh like like every week like uh every two weeks it was something that we looked forward to during our during the lockdowns and all that kind of right. stuff so yeah and that's why that's why i started doing it was just as a like let's have a way <laughs> for us all to connect but so i yeah what i did for people watching here now is uh, I did a live stream. It was something I planned on doing today, but I, I'm not going to do yeah. it now that we're five hours into the stream. Um, but I opened up this public Zoom call, and I just said, hey, if anybody wants to get on a Zoom call, and we can just hang out and chat. And so I, I submitted the link to the chat, and all of a sudden my Zoom window popped up with a ton of people. And I, I think you were the second person I talked to on that stream. Yeah, and, yeah, that was that was the second person, yeah. And you were, I, you were just so... Well, first of all, you were like... You're like, oh my god, my mind is blown. I can't believe I'm I'm on the stream. <laughs> and um, yeah. but what was really fun was then we talked for a little bit, and you mm -hmm. then shared some music that you had, um, similar yeah, to what I we're did. doing now. And you yeah. had a really great track. I, in fact, am I not mistaken? It was called something like City Lights. Is that the name of the track? Uh, it was City Comes Alive. City Comes that Alive. My, yeah, that was. was my second. That was my second single off last like. Uh, last 2019 and well I, yeah we, i loved it on the stream the audience when we did it loved it the the song started getting passed around the reason studio offices of people wanting to yeah. hear the the city comes alive track it was a really great really neat pop track with a real kind of owl city kind of like polish and and pop uh hookiness to it which is really fun yeah and so that brings us now to where it's it's gone full circle that um David here now is not just a stream viewer or a stream guest. He has joined Team Reason Studios. He's uh, hey. <laughs> David is now. You're working As with the uh, support guys, right? Yep, I am currently working with the support guys along with Carl. So I 
So in light of that, I I have my uh, propeller head slash recent swag right here. I love it. So I love it's it. Everyone's everyone's favorite drum machine, Kong. <laughs> I, anyway, so that, that Kong yeah. shirt too. I gotta say that Kong shirt. I have it too. It's a great shirt. I wish we still made it. Cause, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good uh, shirt. Yeah, I, I I really blew my way with this one. I, I love it since. I've been wearing it since I received it from <laughs> from the team. Anyway, so yeah, I am currently working under Reason. Uh, I'm one of the support guys, so if ever you see my name on your emails, if you're asking for support, you probably saw my name in couple in the last couple of months. I started on September and still going until now. Uh, so far, it's really fun <laughs> with you, especially <laughs> <So> Ryan. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really fun working with you guys and seeing the work that that Reason is doing. And I gotta say, uh, it's a labor of love, guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that is coming from me. So it's always a labor of love for, 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 for like Reason to come up with the the, the updates, the, the 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 features. Stuff that been we wanting for stuff that we've been wanting for so long. Uh, I I I think it's it's a it's a great it's uh, it's just a labor of love. It's true. I think that's yeah. And, and I think you know what I, the three of us actually I can speak for probably all three of us here, which is that we uh, we all in one way or another have now some type of working relationship with with reason Chris you're making content for the channel um, I'm making content for the channel and, and hosting this you know circus show um, and David you're you know we're working with support and stuff but all three yeah. of us started uh, just as reason users and yeah uh, just musicians and we yeah. sort of I've always had this feeling of like I, like, I don't I don't want to say it too loud but somehow I kind of like hacked the system where I get to like work with the company that makes the thing I would be doing if I wasn't working, you know? Yeah. And, and um, exactly. It's, uh, don't it, tell anybody. Don't, don't give the secret away. I know. That's right. It's just no, between the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's, um, I think coming at it from that uh, angle, I, I, I know when I got a more close working relationship with the Reason Studios folks, I really did. It was like, you know, you know, there's that thing people say: never meet your heroes because they always disappoint you. Sometimes that's not true. Sometimes you meet your heroes, and they're like they're who you wanted them to be. And when right. I got to know the Reason Studios guys, it was like, oh, this software that I use, the guys making it are the people that I want them to be. They care yeah. about music the way that I care about music, and they they have the same philosophy when it comes to like the the workflow. I mean, it's such a dry word, but like the process of of production. And so I was always really, I, I felt even better about, it sounds like such propaganda, but you know, I, I felt even better about Reason Studios after I got to know the people behind it uh, on, a, on a more personal level. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I can definitely agree with you, Ryan, if I can, if I can share. Please I mean, do. I feel that way about our interactions, you know, and getting to know you and meeting you, uh, you know, speaking with you on Instagram and just kind of vibing out in live streams. But, you know, also, you know, the event that we went to uh, for BPM Create, create, you know, just in, in terms of like the little behind the scenes I've been able to be a part of um, has just been great, you know? So I know that uh, we all love Reason, you know, those that are watching the channel and those that, you know, use the software, we all love it. And so it definitely is like a dream come true uh, for sure to be a part of any, any aspect of it. I have to uh, pass along a couple of comments here for you, uh, David. You're getting oh. uh, con congratulations yes. uh, flying in on the oh, chats thanks. here. A bunch of – I'm <laughs> just going to throw them all up on screen. Um, but um, <laughs> this one I thought was uh, worth throwing your way as well. Support folks are unsung heroes. Ain't that definitely. the truth? Um, yes, and I, I say that as someone who – you know, when I'm needing support from some other company and I get it, it's like, oh my God, what do you, when you get to the point where you're reaching out to support, it's because you've exhausted every other option because it's so easy these days to find answers via Google and YouTube and forums. And, and so if you haven't found it through those methods, you're just stuck. And by the time you end up talking to support, it's like, they're the, the last hope. And so the fact that, um, you guys do 
you know, get people answers and help resolve issues and stuff. It's true. Unsung heroes. Some heroes don't wear capes. Some heroes wear uh, headphones and Kong t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> <Congratulations>. you. <laughs> Ah, thank um, you, Chris. Yeah. I'm going to throw up uh, just another comment here, just because uh, I'm seeing it in a repeating one. Odd Tech Audio, I do not see You Got To as a song in any of the uh, the the new newly arrived folders or the uh, previously submitted folder that I had everything in. So I would say, if you want me to play your song, Odd Tech Audio, um, let's do what we did with Calvin, because I, you've been asking a bunch, and I want to play your song, and I'm looking for it. I'm trying to. Um, so... Upload, re-upload the song, make the name oddtechaudio.mp3.wave.aif, whatever your song file is, upload it that way, and um, comment to let me know that you did, and I'll, I'll go into the most recent Dropbox folder where the, the late stuff is showing up, and I'll, I'll pull it out of there, and we'll, we'll get it, so... Um, Anyway, all right, Love Fest continues. Experimental Sound says, agree, Reason Crew are awesome. Uh, love developing rack extensions and support of the Reason team. I will say this. If anyone has not checked out Experimental Sound's rack extensions, ha oh, ha. You got to oh, ch- check so it out. I love it. So, they're so cool. Like, for one thing, yeah. um, his stuff, I think it's a, a single one-man operation. Um, it's really useful stuff. So it'll be like uh, I was doing a, a track. I had a... a a commission where I somebody asked me to make a reggae track and I wanted a spring reverb and I was like yeah I could I had soft tube spring reverb it wasn't quite doing it for me and there's some spring reverb presets with RV 7000 and they were fine but I was like no but I like I want like that spring like the spring reverb that I really know that I want and um, I, I looked on the shop and experimental sounds had a spring reverb and I grabbed it and it was perfect perfect he's got some yeah. other stuff that are sort of reggae related as well too i can't yeah remember i think are. he has like i think he has uh the the dub uh dub uh yeah. the, the dub reverb re- there like it's like uh inspired by the uh uh <laughs> I, I forgot or forgot the pioneer of the of dub reggae was but i think that was inspired from that yeah it's a little it, piece w- of hardware uh, that they used back in then yeah yeah um so yeah. yes yeah his his stuff is always really useful but it's also my god just for anybody who loves like the cool look of the reason rack with all these devices that uh. look, you know look like you could touch them. Um, his stuff is some of the best design stuff that I've seen. I've even stolen some of his tricks when I've been designing combinator skins because he does these Definitely. things where like he'll like make a device where like you can see the rack like it's it's got hollow spots. We I can't describe it. Check out his stuff in the uh, in the reason shop because it's some really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh Lee Perry yes Francois getting it. Yes, Lee Perry, Scratch Lee Perry, uh, dub, dub pioneer, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. Hang on a second. Oh, we lost. Do we lose Chris? Yeah, I think we oh, lost. Chris my, there. my camera is frozen. Oh no. Okay. Well, you'll get that back on. That's fine. Um, but uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Oh, here's just some other people saying that uh, experimental sounds rack extensions look gorgeous. Yeah, they really do. Well, listen. Um, David, you, should we? You want to play? Want to play some tracks, and we'll listen to some other people's uh, stuff, and then. Um, sure. Let's see here. Let's look at. Oh wait, I gotta get. Oh boy, hang on, spare with me. I gotta get to the right place. I'm gonna do what I've done for other people. I'm gonna give you two song titles. You're gonna tell me which one uh, interests yeah. you. Song oh boy, option, here we go. Song option one: humans being lyrical. Or song option two, um, only you. Only you. Only I shouldn't sing that too much. I'm gonna strike. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I did see. Oh, where's that? Oh, that didn't work. Okay, bear with me. Hang on. We'll go here. Only you. Okay, let's. Uh, oh wait, did I play this one? I might have played this one. Hang on. Oh. It was already open. Okay, I already played that one. Sorry. Oh, um, man. Okay. Let's, well, I'm going to refresh. Let's just see which one that was. I'm going to play a little. Oh, yeah, this one. Oh, yeah, this one. It begins with the nice piano chords. All right. Or, um, okay, so we're going to. Let's check it out. So, what, what was the other one I gave you? We're going to buy default. Oh, Humans Being Lyrical. Let's go check humans that one out. Be, yeah, Humans Being Lyrical. Okay. Let's check that. Okay. Humans Being Lyrical. Joink. We'll 
little xylophone vibe. about this vocal that reminds me a little bit of, of your style vocals that you did on the, the songs of yours that I've heard. Uh, did you, were you a singer before you were a producer or did you start singing to put vocals on your production? Right. Uh, I started, uh, be, uh, I was seven years old and I really knew how to sing first. So I was singing in front of my relatives. I'm singing in front of other people. So my mom was, my mom was like really proud of me and she always put me in that spot oh, where that's you, cool. like you have to sing you have to sing so that's yeah. cool and then then i had like engagements uh, like in high school where i sing also and then college came i extensively sang and every like college occasion and whatnot until yeah it be- until i became a music producer and it's what it was one of the things that i I cling on to because uh, I considered my voice to be an, uh, also an instrument. Right. So I took advantage of it and, you know, uh, just started writing songs. Nice. But also, was, yeah, I, I really, the songwriting part really came when and I studied in high school. So I sang and I, like, composed my own songs uh, when I was... And I was in high school until college, and then yeah, till now. Gotcha. So I was first and foremost a singer, definitely. Gotcha. I, I'm realizing we got some rapping going here. I'm gonna bring this up with the rap. Yeah. And selling class A drugs for occupation and leading people's lives into destruction. You didn't love the flow, right? As long as the dollars were in your end. Spend enough money and wasting a comment, a comment that popped up in the chat. Chris Reed Beats, thanks for having me on, Ryan. That sounds like his frozen camera became a yeah. uh, a full crash. So, Chris, oh, no. thanks for being on with us, too. I wish we got to say Thank a more you. official goodbye. But, um, but David, last man standing, you're with me here. <laughs> <laughs> How late are we going to go? How long are we going to do this, David? Um, Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you know what? I just got... That's funny. I just got a message. So, let me turn this music that so you've got some of your own stuff um mm-hmm. that we could check out right yeah i could uh, share a very early work that i'm doing for my for new music next year so uh i could i will gladly share that to you so let uh, me here's what we're gonna do um i'm going to we just had. I have to give you a different Zoom link uh, because our meeting. Oh, okay. The meeting I had. I originally wasn't planning to still be live streaming five hours in, so I. Uh, All right. I scheduled the meeting to end at a certain time, and uh, mm-hmm. it ended. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you a Zoom link. This is convenient since we're both on the company Slack. I will just Slack uh-huh. it to you. Um, right. Slack and it to me. Then that is how you can. Oh wait, was this? Yeah, this is how we're okay. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm remembering. I think you and I had this set up differently originally, but uh, click yeah, that yeah. Zoom link. What we're going to do is when you join that Zoom call, you're going to mute mm-hmm. your microphone and your camera on that Zoom call, but mm-hmm. you're going to share your screen on that Zoom call. Okay, well done. Hold cool. Um, Matt Aquila, we're still here too. <laughs> All right. Well, if you guys are here, I'm here. Now, while, <laughs> Thanks, guys. While David is getting set up, I've got some, I got some other breaking news here. Odd Tech Audio um says they dropped in oh they sure enough did it's in the folder now and now i see it odd tech i'm gonna play your track here while we're hanging out this is called you got to by odd tech audio um let me look if i saw correctly in the comments i think odd tech said go easy on me because it's a clunker self-identifying as a clunker here uh which you know what i can already tell you it's probably not a clunker 
that's not true. Yeah, it's, it's probably yeah. good. Uh, let's take a listen to it here. Odd Take Audio. Yeah, see, see, that's not a clunker. I can already tell you after one second, that's not a clunker. That's good. All right. <laughs> It is, I will say, it is six minutes long, so I'm going to jump a little further into the structure to get past the build. Huh? There we go. Right? <laughs> yeah, classic house. Like you yeah. got that house vocal. You got the parallel chords. Yes. You got the 909 claps there. The 909 right, kick. right. Love it. Get some soul chopped you know, soul vocals. You know what I love too? It's like you've got that vocal. You you got to do. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, classic. that is like Love it. classic, but it's reminding me of like, <laughs> like, I'm hearing that for some reason in a way that I've never thought of it before, which is like the reason right. that was the style of early house was that was about mm-hmm. as much sampling memory time as you had. You could probably only uh, get you definitely. got to, you know, you it's like got to. you maxed out your Yamaha, uh, your uh, your Akai S six S one thousand. It's just that uh, one sample. Oh my gosh! Uh, definitely right, we'll play a little more here. While this one plays, I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna play. There's another song I'm gonna play before we jump over to your uh, screen here. Oh wait, where sure. did it go? Oh yeah, here I got it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a very not graceful fade out here on this track. Optic Audio. That's a great. That is that's the yeah. very definition of not a clunker. That's a really nice, just really solid house track that that just you know played by the right dj and the right party that's just that that room will just go off um so this one this is another one that uh was uh being begged to be played in the comments and i want to i want to to some degree um try and get to everybody i possibly can i know i'm gonna fail i was telling people uh on the stream we had 750 plus song submissions so i'm going to fail in my goal to play everybody's song but uh this was asked to be played introspector uh, she, she, she show. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Leon Latochi, Latochi, Latochi. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know if I've said one name correct when I read these out, but uh, let's check this one out. Intro Spectre. Ooh. That is definitely something. It's something, right? Yeah. <laughs> Matt Aguilar says 751. I guess people are still submitting songs. Let me see. Are they still? This silence is welcome. You catch your breath. This moment is seldom as I'm checking my flesh. We got people. People are still submitting songs. Yeah. You're ice spelling danger. Is it a nice little dark I vibe? What it means. Yeah, it's like, like a dark vibe, like, like an industrial, something industrial. There's something about the flow of this the sort of spoken word rap thing here that reminds yeah. me of the band. This is going to be a weird comparison because the band sounds nothing like this. But like the band Cake. Um, 
They have this uh, song. Do you know the one? Um, I don't know the lyrics. But, uh, but, uh, he's going the distance. There's the. Uh, I can't even describe the song. Guys, it's the fifth hour of the stream. I can hardly think. Anyway, uh, that guy's <laughs> Kate, this guy's cadence reminds me of the band Cake in a way. But nice. Listen, Introspector, if that's the artist name, or Shesho, yeah. if that's the artist name, or Leon, if that's the artist name. Um, great great stuff. Thank you for thanks for, for uploading that to us, and um, I'm glad we got to check it out on there. So, uh, mm -hmm. All right, now, David. I'm going to switch my view over, and we're going to take a look at your screen because you have brought uh, you brought your whole reason along with you. So let me I think I'm yeah. going to do this. Is that there we go? Um, there we okay, go. so now I we're think that, at, yeah. yeah, I think this is the first time I'm doing this in, in like in public, like sharing a production. Oh, is that right? Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think the first time, so it's it's going to be great. <laughs> I'll probably I'm probably gonna spl splice it from your recording, Ryan, and upload it. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Anyway, so yeah, uh, this is an early demo uh, of a, of a uh, song that I'm doing. Uh, this started last April, and I joined a uh, a um, uh, what do you call this? A songwriting camp, oh, online cool. songwriting camp. And then we were asked to write the song, and then this one came out on me. So, what, were you I'll were you just... given a prompt or something, or what was the? Yeah, it, it was like it was like uh, it was like if uh, a uh, foundation that uh, organizes a songwriting competition here in the Philippines. If my if my Filipino folks there in the chat knows Phil Pop, then you'll know what I mean. But yeah, there, there was never a prompt. It was like. Uh, we want they they were like we wanted you to make a song that will compete on that songwriting competition and then I made this so cool. I'll probably play a, a few minutes of this track so uh, bear with me this is very demo ish so. Feel you here, even though everything's unclear. I have to wonder, feel like I'm underwater. Even if everything fails, please know your memory will never be in vain. Even if nothing's the same, please know your memory. Oh, oh, no. oh, what is what is that? Anyway, oh, no. uh, uh, file a bucket. Oh, no. <laughs> we need a support guy uh, in here. <laughs> and, and I'll skip to this one because this one is the I'll skip to the bridge one because this is my favorite one. Hold on. Classic, just the gist of the track. Classic David Henerato songs, as I know them. They have <laughs> there is a a, a jo like a joy and uplifting, you know, element to the stuff that you produce. There's just and again, <laughs> I, I'm reminded of Al City in that in that regard. And I know he's uh, uh, maybe an early uh, influence of yours, or uh, maybe not early. Yeah, uh, mid yeah. I remember, 
Yeah, yeah, I remember like I'm we were uh we were talking about it like the first uh the first time that I I heard of the word music production was an article in in uh, uh reasons Uh, website or prepare ahead back then was an interview by Al City by you actually hey, that that's you, right you told, you told me and then and and it was it was like very enlightening for me and it was a great insight to me it's like I want to do what he does so right. I and that's when I picked up reason then and there wow, uh, wow. what a simple what a simple uh way to express what gets us all into mm. music i want to do what he does yeah um i have that moment <laughs> when i um that's literally the thought i had when i was a kid i'm gonna date myself here um i was watching mtv in the 80s and van halen's song jump came on and uh-huh. you know the song is fine and whatever it's all going along but there's a moment in the latter part of that song in the music video for that song where eddie van halen is playing guitar And he's playing this little muted guitar part. But while he's doing it, he's smiling. And I remember as a whatever I was, six-year-old kid or something, I remember seeing that and going, I want to do that. He is having fun, and I want to do what that guy is doing. And that was the kind of the seed of me getting interested in actually making music and, you know, And look where it's taken me to being on a five-hour-long live stream wearing a gold sequence oh, jacket. Yeah. Dreams do come <laughs> true, kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, keep following your dreams. <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, oh boy. <laughs> anyway, um, well, let's let's spin around through this track you've got. It's a great-sounding track. There was one thing I saw or heard mm-hmm. right away that I wanted mm-hmm. to come back to. Um, first of all, some people are giving the shout out in the comments for. Um, Your use of blocks, so uh, you are. Oh yeah, uh, you're a blocks guy. I am a I am number one blocks guy, so it's really <laughs> like very, very uh, like uh, uh, convenient for me. Like for example, if I wanted like a piece of the verse and or that's that's the uh, like a pre-chorus there, I can just put there, and if I have changes, I'll just slap it in there. You know, yeah, it's really convenient. Like. I like if I've always I've always told other reason users you need to use blocks more because this one just uh, speeds speeds up your arranging process and if you want to mute something if, mute the part just right right over the clip there right so it mutes it's the part oh that's there. oh you that convenient. you you draw I see you sort of overlay yeah. nothing to kind of create a little temporary yeah. mute that's a little handy little yeah. block trick for people that like blocks yeah but so so what if I, you. Yeah. What I wanted to check out, I think it was in block one. Um, mm-hmm. There was a, a chord choice that I thought was really interesting. If you back up, go to bar. Let's say start around bar ten, mm-hmm. and This play. One? Yeah, play from bar ten to roughly bar eighteen. And I think I'll hear. Okay. There was a sure. chord choice I really liked. Even though everything's unclear, I have to wonder. Feel like I'm underwater. Yeah. Uh, what? That one. What chord? Yeah. What's I, happening there in bar 16 You're going to a chord. I, I, I wasn't expecting, and I love it. Uh, yeah. I think that was like uh, uh D. Uh. That was C, and yeah. then C. It's a really, yeah. uh, uh, it's a really nice chord. It's just um, it's actually mm. a, a little bit um. Like sort of, uh, I get reminiscence of like kind of Journey, but not in not in a bad way for anyone that uh-huh. uh, doesn't like the. Uh... Yeah, ooh, the, ooh, the, like, ooh, uh, ooh. Uh, uh, and then and then I think that's a seventh. Yeah, uh, I I I, I kind of like this chord structures on like pre, uh, pre pre choruses or whatever. It's really you call nice it because it it just. It just prepares it to be like very uplifting, and then crashes on the chorus. Yeah, that's why I like you. You can you, with just two chords like these, you can do so much. And then and then I layered it with this uh, uh, duet of two of uh, uh, string parts. It's actually from Sean Murray. Sean Murray. 
Maker I of the best sound packs stuff. there are. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh-huh. You should check it out. So it has like friction on there. That uh, it em- emulates like a like a violin and cello. So he named it lon- a lonely violin and lonely nice. cello. And I think that one, I I think this one I played on a MIDI keyboard, so okay. I came up with this and stuck with it. And now, then, now to uh, you know, Mimi scorned me for quantizing. Are you a quantizer or are you a non-quantizer? Uh, I'm actually a little bit of both. Are you? So I I quantize, and sometimes if if it doesn't, if it if I if I quantize it and it doesn't sound right, I literally just don't quantize it. Right. <laughs> so yeah, and then there's this another Sean Murray patch that I really love so called the Round Sequence. Ooh. It's just following the strings. That's got a really that's really nice. Yeah, and then just recently I got Synapse by Antidote. Uh huh. So I was I'm layering this with a saw. Just nice. It's now, just the D chord having like inversions in there. David, can I ask a, a question? Um, as yeah. a as a member of the support team now, do you get the added bonus <laughs> of having access to every rack extension if you need it? Yes. <laughs> Welcome so, to the club. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally, this is the reason why I joined Reason. I'm no, just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I. I mean, yeah, I. I remember when the rack extensions first launched, I was so excited because uh-huh. as a as a content creator, I was getting them automatically added to my account. I was like, this is awesome. And then I got to a point yeah, where yeah. I, I almost felt guilty where like once there was like 200 or 300, I was like, I can't, all right, I can't take it anymore. There's just so many. <laughs> but Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like uh, when I first started, I was like, I needed to test some REs and then... It was yep. too many to 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 be deposited into the account, so I just picked up some stuff that I really wanted to try. I think we. I think but, looking in the comments section, we may have just started a uh, reason job application boom because people are saying, "Oh man, oh I no, a, I gotta get a job." <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think Nicholas is watching right now. I don't know. <laughs> Listen. Anyway, no, yeah. No, the reason I asked, I, I, you're, it's not a, it's not a job perk that is mm-hmm. not of use to you. You literally, you will get emails from people and they're going to say something like, here, my song file is crashing and I don't know why and, and maybe it's using yeah. a, a, you know, you need yeah. to have the rack extension they're yeah. using in their song files. So. Yeah. Yeah, literally, yeah, we have to have like that. But uh, recently, I just, I transferred it to sales. So if you have like sales problem, I you probably came across my name there. Oh, right. So, uh, yeah, but but in but when I started, uh, they made me go to product support first, which is which is really cool. Gotcha, gotcha. You, you, you have the like the files and the logs and stuff like that to check. Uh, Life, it's... Uh, a little, of course, it's a little bit of, of an ins, uh, of an insider to you guys. So. Uh, we are we we do the best we can to identify the problem and coordinate with our with our computer people about the crashes and the you know. issues that you're having. So rest assured, we are always on the go when it comes to dealing with the, your issue. So yeah, cool. Well, so now let's spin around a little bit more of the song and check out uh, what else is going yeah. on here. So yeah, I kind of want to share the drum the drum parts on this one because it this like this this has a lot of layers. So for the first one is like a uh, the oomph, if I if I uh, pronounce that correctly. You did, you did. So it's like <laughs> so it's this one. So that was it's like uh, it's like like really like low pass if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I think that's not here. And then low pass it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I kind of like processed it a little bit, and then I layered this with some drums on classic redrum. So 
So if you nice. notice that there's like a that yeah, that, yeah. that clap, yeah. people I were reacting game, to that when you there. first played when you first played the song. People were reacting to that offbeat. They really liked that offbeat rhythm. Uh, not, not offbeat, yeah, yeah. but that syncopated rhythm. Yeah, like a syncop- I, I, I really love syncopation. As a drummer, like I, I first and foremost a drummer, so I I'm really particular with my with my like drum parts also, and then and then we'll put that that together. Mm. And then you put that with an arp. It, it makes it really like bouncy. Yeah, so there's that. And then the synths. Uh, this one, this one is like a. I think it's a bounced uh, synth from uh, an algorithm, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. Yeah, there's that, and then this uh, saturated click. It's like it's like doing like triplets. Yeah, yeah. That. It's like hey, it's, a, it's a nice. Yeah. These 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 subtle layers, you know, is, is what makes yeah. a lot of your production has this really kind of thickness to it, um, in in mm. a nice way, you know that. Yeah. It's, it's there's a lot going on. It's not just chords and bass and drums and vocal it's it's this candy little ear candy going on yeah it's crazy so like uh i kind of i really want uh there's like in my production search i get really lo- lots of layers there but it was it's intentional because uh i kind of wanted to have a full sound without like hogging hogging the frequency spectrum and then you know yeah. um in number two ear candy ear candy is very important so there's and there's another one here, which is like, I think you'll recognize this one. I do. Wait, <laughs> wait. Now I'm trying to place the. Is that that's not coming from? There's a chip tune rack extension, but I don't uh, think that. No, was it's actually from oh, algorithm. The algorithm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like I think it's like a reason plus pack, if I'm uh-huh. not mistaken. It's like the, the game one. So I I kind of wanted to do put some game sounds in here gotcha. for some reason it just fits so. yeah it fits absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. so and then yeah. there there's this like glitchy there's this glitch kit that i really love using on on some of my productions because i'm all about air candy and then it's just really in the background but it's that the tick 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 nothing yeah, 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 yeah. It's I, 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 I tried, like one time I gave this to Chip Spanner, Paul Ortiz, and oh, he's yeah. like, "What's that? What's the, what's that clicking sound on the? Are, are you like clipping or stuff? No, it's like a percussive click on the left channel." Yeah, so. that's great. I've done that. Um, yeah. the, there was a track I did sometime in the last year, where I got um uh, the sound of an old stopwatch. The you know, yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I layered that in, and it was similar. It's like just in one ear and really kind of quiet, but it was just nice. Like it, it kind of gave the track a little bit of momentum that it it lacked without it. Definitely, so. yeah. And then there's and then the hook which you are hearing right now. This one. Like, so that one uh, comes from this guy right here. So right. It's if. Uh, as you all know, this is arcade by output. Uh, I and I always consider this quote and unquote the splice killer because it has <laughs> loops on it. You can manipulate it any and you, it's, it's it's just like you know like uh, I've kind of had like have been tired of like dragging drag and drop drag and dropping samples uh, on the sequencer and it's like this this like a breath of fresh air because. You have like this set of loops, and yep, yep. this actually just, that that's actually the original sample. And then there's this like on the black keys, there's like modifiers. Like you want to glitch out the sound, play it backwards, play it forwards. Yep. So, yep. uh, and and this one's like in the context of the song was already it was like for me like it was perfect. 
and it was conveying that uh, the same emotion on that. And then uh, another output, uh, an out, another arcade stuff in here. If I'm not, if I can find that. I one, made I somewhere. One, I don't know what the title of the yeah. video is, but somewhere on our reason channel, I made a video about how to do those. Uh, I was back yeah. back when I made it was years ago. It was using the NNXT sampler, and I was chopping uh-huh. up vocals and doing those little sort of melodies via. You take just the vowel sound from a vocal, the ooh ah uh, yeah. oh, and you can pitch uh-huh. it. And yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, I actually watched that video so many times when I need. <laughs> so like, uh, those really handy. And then right. I have this one. It's like it's like uh, a a collection of drum breaks. Oh, okay. But I made it a uh, a uh, 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 double time because I'm using it for like a drum fill. So. So there's that. And then another one. Uh, I think that's the same one. Yeah, yeah, that's the same one. I, I, I love how that sounds because as a drum fill. And then if this one, uh, this one, this is actually my guitar playing that I resampled oh. as a as a like as like an effect. It's like a rising effect or something like oh, that. Oh, it's reverse uh, and stuff or. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's a reverse stop, and then this, this, it actually comes from this, this one. Uh, hold on, actually comes from this guy right here. So this is a chopped up, uh, sample of my guitar playing. It's like I was fiddling around, and then just without tempo, I kind of chopped it this like this this way. Yeah, so mm. I'm just looping that all over, but I muted it here. I don't know why if I <laughs> muted it. I think it's not in the context. Anyway, uh, and then yeah, there's this ARP ARP thing that I j- just recently added. So it's from uh, Synapse, also also from Antidote. Yep. Antidote's a great. That's a great synth. That was one yeah. of the early rack extensions to come out, and they just yeah they just got it right. They just did a, made a nice yeah. you know it's a it's great at what it does. Yeah, it's it's really great. I, I'm finding it like uh a, a great at uh, alternatives to like if you're having like a synth gas or something. But yeah, uh, it, it you can it, this one is like very power also a very powerful synth also. Oh, absolutely, so, yeah, yeah. I'm I, I'm I'm still like uh like trying to explore this one because it is uh, like the it's uh, the go-to for these like big super saw multi-layered uh, anthemic kind of things you know if you if you ever needed to do definitely a, you know big yeah i don't know yeah just like De- big defi- chords yeah d- definitely and then and then yeah i think uh this one uh there's a, a like a glitched out uh part of the Oh, nice! And then I was just playing around with the keyboard, with the with 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 the arc with arcade, and then uh, where's the? Uh, I think I, I I think this one is like my one of my favorite basses right now, because bass in your face. I think this one comes from the community refill that uh-huh. we did. Uh, last time and then it was just it's just really gritty yeah yeah so it's like uh, I put in there like a basic f- phasing and then this is actually like I think there's actually a, a a side chain if I'm not mistaken I or, or forgot now anyway <laughs> uh, and then there, it can, and and then this can just be grittier at the same time. Like, it was a really, really cool. It was really, it was a really cool. It was a really cool uh, bass line there, and then I had like a tambourine from the factory sound back uh-huh. that I saturated. Uh, yeah, saturated there 
on and then yeah i i have a piano but uh, i i kind of i kind of like replaced it with uh acti- uh-huh. addictive keys uh huh yeah I, i i really love this one like i always use it use the modern upright setting there um uh, and then yeah this one uh where i can like oh there you go yeah more of those chip tune layers uh You're like, like this, like this, is like a one note. Just, sure, just sure. that. But it's just, but it's just, but it's, it's good. It just adds anything. I wonder if anyone, anyone else in the chat has ever had the experience yeah. where you're making a beat and you have the click on, and then you turn the click off and realize, oh wait, the click actually is part of the sound. I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> that happens sometimes. Yeah, um, it really happens sometimes. That's why. Uh, like, and then there's this like drum fill there. Guitar Zombie comments still going. You bet we're still going, Guitar Zombie. Yeah. I, I don't know for how much longer, but we're still going. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically that's it on my song. But yeah, this song was conceived last April and then I think uh, uh, the reason I wrote this because I had a friend uh, last... I had a friend who uh, passed away in 2018. Oh, I'm so sorry. And yeah, and as like a closure for his uh, for his death and I wanted to write a song about it and because it was it was really like uh, very shocking to me and then yeah. and I, w- I was thinking when I was writing this song it's like I think this is a great tribute for him uh, that's why uh, the, the, the t- title is actually your memory without the uh, <laughs> without the uh, without the uh, vowels I, I tend to to uh, name my songs right now without vowels for some reason because <laughs> I think it's actually cool. Anyway, so yeah, uh, I created the song because of that. So uh, it's just and and it's a, it's a, like a general song for people who lost their loved ones during the, during the hard times and also sure. during the pandemic. So yeah, uh, it it's uh it, uh it was a relief. Uh, inspiring song to make and at, at the same time uh uh very encouraging it's for me also to create this song when i was uh when i was in the songwriting camp so oh that's great i mean you know i i i do think to some degree uh as artists as musicians how lucky are we that we have this outlet that is really an emotional outlet for us to process when yeah. you know when things are tough you know we deal with loss and betrayal mm. You know, mm. jealousy sadness i mean all the all these heavy emotions and we have a way to process and get it out and i often wonder of like god if i wasn't creative if if what would i do you know like i think of people yeah. i know that that kind of live their lives in excel spreadsheets and doing just regular things and you know reading books and and having interests and you know maybe they're like riding horses i don't know but does i don't know if that has the <laughs> same the same emotional outlet when you really have something heavy you want to process god music is definitely. just just the best definitely um, it's like it's like a great coping mechanism for people like us like uh when we write a song we want it's either like it It's not like a make it or make it make it or break it kind of an attitude, but you know, uh, we there's an outlet for us that we can like, you know, express our grief, express our sadness, express our happiness, and, and at the same time, you know, uh, honor memories, honor loved ones that we had and that we lost or throw out the way. But yeah, yeah, it's music is a, it's. It's just such a powerful thing in in the hands of the right people. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, And yeah. speaking of music in the hands of powerful people, we have uh-huh. another song to play here that I have to play. There we just, go. I have to play it just because of the title alone. Um, Mimi Dancer has been in the chat uh, the for maybe the whole five and a half hours. I don't know, but uh, she put up a, a tune called Mimi's Unquantized Clunker. An incomplete rumination. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love the title alone, and and Mimi's gonna school me now on the 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 benefits of not quantizing because she was the one that came down on me for over quantizing. Here we go, Mimi. This is your moment. <laughs> Vinyl crackle. Oh yeah. I love atmospheres like that. (laughs) 
You're not kidding. It's I used to make Quantas. stuff like this. Oh yeah. Yeah. I used to make stuff like this when I was starting to produce. Oh, I love that. Wow. Now, I vaguely know, I, I, I guess I wouldn't say I know Mimi, but I've interacted with uh, Mimi Dancer on uh, Twitter enough to know that I think she's a drummer by, orig like, originally a drummer as, as her way into music production. And uh, little lines like that, that sort of, I don't know what you call that, toy piano gamelan, that always feels like there's a certain style to the way drummers, like, it's a percussive melody, if that makes sense. I, I do love the like the synth. Uh huh. It was it's like this wobbly character on it. It's like being yeah. warped. Yeah, great. Nice, nice. Good stuff. Well, listen, David, should we play a few more tracks? And then, I mean, yeah. we got, I, I, I was going to say that I'm getting tired, but you have been up all night with this stream. So I, I can't even, I dare not even <laughs> say that I'm tired because uh, um, <laughs> it's, all, it's all for the community. I, I like <laughs> the, the reason community is one of the best communities around, I, if, I, even though like, even though, like, I, I kind of wanted to build also, like, in, like, a mic-minded community here in the Philippines of, like, Reason users. Yeah. And I've actually, like, uh, met some of, uh, some new people and also uh, meeting up also with, like, uh, veterans, actually, this, this who's, like, using Reason for, like, 10 plus 15 years oh, right. now. So, yeah. So, yeah. All well, for the community. <laughs> all for the community. Well, here, let's check out this one. This one's called... Santo Fuego, La Fuerza de la Liberación. Uh, um, you probably arriba. you understand that better than I, right? You speak you speak uh, Spanish, a bit. right? A, a little bit, yeah. A bit. I know there's a Spanish, little bit because right, there's Spanish bit. roots in the Philippine Philippine yeah, language. Yeah, right? yeah, there there is uh, some of which some more words are actually derived from Spanish. Gotcha. So um, it's it's not really that far. <laughs> no. Uh, so this is Miguel Estefano. Uh, let's check it out. Oof, we're going to Vangelis territory now, huh? <laughs> right, yeah, right. Oof. Holy crap, I love that one. This is another track, this is nine minutes long, so I'm going to jump ahead at some point just to make sure we're sampling the whole track, but let's see if there's a drop or something yeah. here. Nope. Okay. I'm going to jump ahead. Oh, wow. Ooh. It's like math rock or something. Yeah, real, like, prog rock. I get, like... Like, yeah. yes, yes vibes. <laughs> I'm going to move forward again. Miguel Estef Estefano. Uh, this is intense. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Seem oh wait, did I just screwed up? Oh, I just um Seams Music, Emerson Lake and Palmer. That is the correct prog reference. Ten points yeah. to Seams Music, Emerson Lake and Palmer. That's exactly Emerson what, Lake uh, and Palmer that way. Shit's about to go down, Billy says. Uh, <laughs> we're having some final boss music. Yeah, it's got that vibe to it as well. Total total final boss music. Um Yeah. Let's see, let me grab a couple other ones here and uh Do we do Oh, I, I keep seeing this name, Vitamin Dust, and I don't think we've opened it yet. So I think we're going uh, oh, to satisfy my own curiosity. We're going to listen to yeah. Vitamin Dust by Tom Schreiner, I believe. Tom Schreiner Schmidt. 
Harold Faltermeyer. Do you know the old uh, Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack? Oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is giving some Beverly Hills Cop vibes right there. It's an interesting, you know, uh, blend of the very acoustic drums with the very, like, Moog bass sound, you know? Mm. Oh, they've got some claps. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump ahead to get through the little development here. There we go. Yeah. Now, guys, while I'm, I'm gonna turn this one down for a second. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna say that I'm gonna at the five and a half hour mark of the stream, I'm gonna play the last one that I'm gonna do. Yeah. Uh, for this stream, so um, I'm gonna start looking for one to play. But if there's someone in the audience that hasn't had their song played yet, um, put it in the comments, and I will, if I find it, uh, I will play it. Um, but. If I don't hear any comments from anyone, I'll just pick one as well. Uh, In fact, you know what? Here's so what I'm going to do. Is. I'm going to play this one while I wait for the, them to comment. This song called Japan Drums. Ooh. I like the title of that. Um, Can you feel the bass? bass. All right, Spl Splanka, I'm going to look for your song bass. here. Bass. Ooh. <laughs> All right. I like it. Ooh. Great fusion of like taiko drums and yeah. house. Can you feel the bass? Huh. Ooh. Funky, funky. While we're listening, piano right there. I'm going to answer a couple of questions while we're listening to this one here. Paul asks, "How do I submit for future live streams?" Paul, I'll make an announcement. When we do these ones, I announce the live stream and I announce uh, that we're going to be um, taking user songs and, and playing them. So just keep keep tuned for a live stream where we say we're going to do that. Also, Paul, um, am I the only one that thinks that Paul looks a whole lot like Tim Pierce? If anybody knows Tim Pierce, check out that uh, profile pic. Paul, you are Tim Pierce's long lost twin. Um, yeah, seems music. This is nice, right? It's got a, it went in a direction I wasn't expecting. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna look for one last song. Let me just say, Splanka, I cannot find new shoes. That song that you've been talking about, I cannot find it in the folder. I don't know why it's not showing up there, but I'm looking in every location I can for new shoes and I can't find it, which means I'm gonna try and do Tripophonics. Let's see if we, you said you just put one in. Let me see if I can find that one and maybe we'll make yours. If I find yours, Tripophonic, it'll be the last one I play. Um, Tripophonics Eternal. Do I find it? Do I find it? Do I find it? Nope. Oh, wait. Tripophonics. I think we played... Yeah, we played one of yours already. Um, so... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, in the interest of... Of getting everybody else in there, I'm going to play... We'll make our last song somebody else's. Um... Folder in ear two productions. Oh, Splanka, is it in a folder? Okay, hang on a second. We're gonna try and we're gonna try and find it, Splanka. Let's see. User song. What's the 
fault or call now? Sorry, I'm looking, uh, into ear productions. I'm not seeing it, Splanka. Hang on, hang on. I spoke too soon. Splanka. Splanka, you're going to be so happy to know. I just found it. Um, let me see which one you're requesting. There's a couple songs in here. Let me see where they are. But let me, uh, let's make this a teachable moment. Um, Splanka, don't put things in folders. Just upload the song. Uh, that's why I couldn't find <laughs> it. Because I was uh, sorting in a different way. So It's, it's 600. 600 got 600 tracks 750 guys. <laughs> plus uh, oh my god okay this one okay Splunk wants me to play this tune we're gonna call this the last one now here's the thing the name of the song is saturday night fever Splunk, i'm telling you now if i hear saturday night fever by the Bee Gees, we are shutting it down because otherwise this whole five and a half hour live stream is gonna get a copyright strike be a and it'll oh, be a no. waste. It'll be the whole thing will be for nothing. So yeah, I'm 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 trusting you here, Splanka, that uh, that you didn't just give me a remix of Saturday Night Fever. Here we go. Let's check it out, guys. We're gonna make this the last song of the evening. Uh, and while it's playing, David, uh, we'll say some goodbyes uh, as well. And uh, and I'm gonna talk to everybody on the way out. But let's check out yeah. Saturday Night Fever. So far, so good. I hear no Bee Gees. Locked in green of your eyes. Wow. Want it, but we just don't say. Need it, but we just can't wait. Preventing the fever tonight. Yeah. Want it, but we just don't say. But you've been alright, you've been alright. Don't want all the bad excuses. Just want what your body's doing. Take off with the time is useless. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm stupid. Don't want the bad excuses. Thank you, Chris. Just want what your body's <laughs> yeah. doing. Take off with the time is useless. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm stupid. Yeah. Well, listen, okay, I'm going to keep playing this song, but um, while yep. this is playing, first of all, Splunker, thank you for uh, for making me find it because it's a beautiful song, beautiful voice, beautiful vibe. Yeah. I love this. Love it. Um, throw in the comments, Splunka, if yeah, where we can find more of your music on Spotify because I'd love to hear more of this stuff. And I just want to say to everybody that's still watching, guys, a part of me almost wants to go another 23 minutes just so I can say we did six hours but most of me does not want to do that. <laughs> most of me is tired. Salute to you all <laughs> for um, staying this stream. I had so much fun with everybody. Um, we, we really, you know, when we set about to do this live stream, we, the idea was let's just have a party and mm. see who shows up. And you know what? A, a lot of friends showed up in the comments. You guys brought your music, the soundtrack. You, the DJ was the reason community. Um, uh -huh. And that's awesome. And it's been so much fun to hang out with everybody, not least of which is you, David. Thank you for, uh. thank you for staying awake <laughs> all night <laughs> long. Oh, my Love God. It. I, 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 like, it's like, it's like I, 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 live, I live in the reverse now when, when everyone is asleep. I'm awake, so. <laughs> well, I hope, I hope for your sake, you're gonna get a little bit of a, a shut eye now after we're off. This yeah. Thing. So draw those shades down and try and get a little sleep. And guys, um, I saw here, David. I'm gonna disconnect with you, and I'm gonna say my final goodbyes to the, yeah. the folks here. But thanks so much for hanging out and showing us your track, and and yeah. Love you guys. Take care. Thank you. All right, guys. I'm going to back up the song we're going to play a little. Well, maybe, you know what, here's what we'll do. I'm going to keep talking, and I'm going to throw on another song while I talk to you. Just on my way out the door here, we're going to say our last, last goodbye. So let's listen to a little more of this one without me talking over it. I'll back it up. dovetail right into another one here this is melanome freestyle by zeldris 808 it's going to play us out as our last song of the night of the 
the night, of the day. I don't know what time it is on your part of the globe, but it's been so much fun hanging with you guys. This was a long one. I didn't think this one was going to go five hours and 40 minutes, but it did. And uh, some of you guys stuck with me. A lot of you guys stuck with me through almost the whole thing. I mean, Maverick. I got to say, Maverick here, you've been around for almost the whole time. Billy, I've been seeing you for hours. Francois, look at you guys. You've been hanging in through this whole whole stream. Let's listen to a little of this track. Beautiful. Oh, and that's it. Oh, so it's a, that's an idea still in progress. Let's play one more then. One more. I just want one more. Let's see what we got. Uh, here, let's try this one. Falling. We're going to play Falling by Alexander Monk. Here we go. I've been hurt and I've been burned. I've given all I could and trusted when I shouldn't. I lost the will to make it work. Until you came and showed me how it's supposed to be. Thank you to you, Mimi, as well. Uh, you're part of the, the long view crew as well. I think you've been around for almost the whole stream, too. Now all I can do is hope that you catch me when I fall long ago. I know, right, guys? I'm still going. The stream is still going. But although it's, it's wrapping up now, I'm going to turn this one down, and I'm going to say my final goodbyes to you guys. Guys, thanks for sticking around for the this end of year live stream. It's a like a holiday party. It's a New Year party. It's a it's a party for the sake of a party. And I had so much fun with everybody today. Huge thanks to my guests. I may even forget. Them. I'm going to try and rattle them off now here. But we had the most guests we've ever had on the live stream. We had Oscar leading us off. We had Gentlemen's Club. We had Olivia Broadfield. We had David Henerato. We had Chris Reed Beats. Uh, we had Carl Carlson. Uh, from our channel. Uh, who am I forgetting? I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, but we had other people too. Ah, <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, it was a blast hanging with all of you guys. Um, let's go on, make a little bit of music. Maybe I'll get a little nap and then I'll make a little music. But um, take care, guys. And um, oh, Calvin, you're a great track. Calvin's track was really great. All right, guys, take care. Have a great, have a great night. I'm going to keep this one playing.